It's a rite of passage. Every January, gearheads from around the world flock to Scottsdale, Arizona to kick off a new year of car gazing at the biggest, fattest car show on the planet, Barrett Jackson. Cars as far as the eye can see, European exotics, and American muscle, supercars, and other stars, chrome, and customs, hot rods, and horsepower. This is the center of the collector car world. It's Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, and it's coming to you live right now on FYI. All roads lead to Arizona in January for the world's greatest collector car auction, where every day leads to Super Saturday. Today is that day at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. I'm Bob Varsha. Yesterday, the bidding took another much anticipated leap as a docket filled with six figure cars was topped by a 1969 Mustang Boss 429 that blew the roof off the arena when it hammered away at $400,000. But today is Super Saturday, and one look around me here in the salon tells you everything you need to know. It's time for the main event, the very best cars and the most amazing prices. Once again today, I'll be working with Mike Joy, Rick DeBrule, Tyler Hoover, and April Rose. And during this past week, each of us picked out one car that we thought epitomizes the spirit of Super Saturday. Take a look. Let's talk about Super Saturday with one of the most spectacular supercars of all time, a 2018 Bugatti Chiron, 16 cylinders, 1,500 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds. And just to keep you safe, they have limited the top speed in this thing to 261 miles an hour. All right, April, what have you got? Not bad, Rick, but this is the queen of my heart. 1956 SL300 Gold Wing, of course, with the iconic, beautiful, stunning Gold Wing doors. Now, some would say this is the original supercar, which was born from racing with its tubular chassis and direct injection inline six. I mean, this is easily one of the most beautiful cars of all time. Bob, just try and top that. Well, thanks, April. And I'll have you know that our colleague Mike Joy calls me the wine and cheese guy. And I say guilty on all counts. This is a Mercedes Benz 540K from 1937. Now, in those days, you could have a car, buy a chassis, send it off to one of hundreds of coach builders, and they would create something original and likely to be stunning for your car. This particular Mercedes is in right-hand drive, which is weird because it was delivered originally in France. Go figure. Under the hood, that 5.4-liter eight-cylinder engine has that K in the title, which means compressor. It's more powerful than the normally aspirated version. But this car is all about style. It's red now. It was originally black over silver. I like this a ton, from the rear wheel spats to the front end louvers. This is something special. Tyler, what have you got? Well, Bob, how about a Lexus supercar? A 2012 LFA, one of 25 with the Nürburgring edition package, and only seven of them were in orange. 562 horsepower V10 that sings all the way to 9,000 RPM. Wow, what do you have, Mike? My high school dream car was a 67 Stingray convertible. Cars have come a long way since then, but look at this beautiful, just completed Jeff Hayes Custom. With its LS3 500 plus horsepower small block on an Art Morrison chassis, this gleaming champagne paint with the uh, ghost stinger stripes and a linen leather interior. All my high school dreams and more in a brand new 67 Stingray. Now that's just a sampling of what's gonna cross the block here on Super Saturday. 
Just some amazing vehicles headed your way today. And it's going to be a wild ride. But before we get to that, we have a very special announcement to bring you. This week, 47 amazing vehicles gathered here in Scottsdale to participate in the Barrett-Jackson Cup, which showcases the talent and craftsmanship of custom car and truck builders from across the country. Judges have narrowed this amazing collection of vehicles down to five finalists, and here they are. A 1968 Ford Mustang, nicknamed Rampant, which was built by East Bay Muscle Cars. A 1960 Buick Invicta, built by Andy Leach at Cal Automotive Creations. A 1967 C10 Chevrolet pickup, built by Z-Rods Customs and Fiber Forged Composites. A 1927 Ford Roadster that was built by the teams at Shadow Rods and Greening Auto Company. And finally, we have a 1959 Chevrolet Impala that was built by Troy Gudgel at BBT Fabrications. So there are your five finalists for the Barrett-Jackson Cup. Let's head up to the block now and Rick DeBrule to find out who our People's Choice and Ultimate Best of Show winners are. All right, now the moment we've all been waiting for. We're going to start with our very first award. You might have noticed up here on the block, we have not just five finalists. We have six cars. That's because we have a People's Choice Award. People were voting all week on which of the 47 finalists they thought impressed them. And the winner, well, it's this one right here. Take a look at it in all its beautiful purple. It's a 1961 Volvo PV544 built by Girl Gang Garage. Give them a big round of applause. Bogey Leitner won this. There were 165 women from around the country who took part in this build. And what makes it significant is underneath this old Volvo is a new S60 chassis, and it's a hybrid. So once again, Bogey Leitner, congratulations to her and the Girl Gang for building this and winning the People's Choice Award. Now for the moment we have all been waiting for, and I know these five finalists have been anxiously awaiting, it's time to reveal our ultimate best of show winner. And the winner for this year, the 2024 Barrett-Jackson Cup ultimate best in show is the Buick Invicta. Congratulations. Let's get our builders up here, get some pictures taken. Right here. Come step on over here. There we go. Walk on up. Let's talk about the importance of this. And Steve, talk about what a great car this is. The car is incredible. The car is incredible. We've seen it uh, as we walked through the first time, and you just couldn't just resist. Absolutely incredible in every way. The wheels, so many thousands of, of components have been handmade. The car is spectacular. It's truly craftsmanship. Uh, that reminds you back in the day, the Dusenbergs, the Packards, the old uh, coach built cars. These are the coach builders of today, and this is the product of incredible technology and even more incredible talent. Absolutely right, amazing. Step in there for the picture. Once again, big round of applause for our winner of the Barrett Jackson Cup Ultimate Best in Show, the Buick Invicta, owned by George Elia Costas and built by Andy Leach of Cal Customs. So once again, it's the best of show for Barrett-Jackson Cup presented by Castrol and supported by McGuire's and TMI. What a day we've had so far. It's going to be even more spectacular. Let's get straight to Super Saturday. Thank you all. And that's exactly what we'll do. Thank you, Rick. Congratulations to the winners of the Barrett-Jackson Cup and the People's Choice Award. When we come back, the action begins on the stage here at Westworld of Scottsdale and Barrett-Jackson. Stand by for Super Saturday. Welcome back to Super Saturday at Barrett Jackson. Under the big top of the main auction hall, you can see the seats are filling up and the cars are rolling. Now on the block, the stars of the show, arguably this week, have been custom pickups. Here's a 72 Ford F100. And I love the fact that under the hood, they've got a Coyote engine. You know, for a long time, it was the GM crate engines that were ruling the world, but now Ford with those Coyotes. Now if you want a Ford product, you can stick a crate engine in there. $170,000 takes that beautiful truck home. 
That ties for our number six sale of the day. Earlier today, we had three $200,000 sales. We'll get to that as time goes by. Right now, here's lot 1293. We're supposed to be seeing, yes, the Mercury Cougar Super Cat from 1969. And a very special one of one car. Carcraft Magazine built this car as a promotion for Coca Cola. They enlisted famed drag racer Dino Don Nicholson to build this version of Dino's. That's the greatest racing name ever, okay, Dino Don? Uh, of his super stock Cougar, and it would do NHRA exhibition runs. This has out of Don's shop, Lakewood traction bars, secret tweaks to the engine, Hearst competition shift for Craig or SS wheels. It's been beautifully lettered in gold leaf. It's been on the cover of a lot of magazines, one of one. And ultimately, remember, this was a Coca-Cola promotion. Coca-Cola, after it had had its successful run on the drag strip, actually gave it away to one lucky person. And it was given away in September of 1969, given to somebody in Ohio. Unfortunately, he uh, wasn't able to keep it, sell it. It was rediscovered in 1999 and restored to its original glory. Well, it's no giveaway today. It's been bid to $100,000 already. A beautiful gold leaf lettering, a bit of this lace tablecloth style stenciling on the C pillar. What a gorgeous car, and there's no other one like it. I tell you what, we've also seen a number of great looking Cougars crossing the block this particular auction here in Scottsdale. I mean, it didn't matter if it was XR7s, convertibles, coupes. These have been done to a really nice level, and it's nice seeing the Cougars out you know, on the auction block in the corporate cousin of the Mustang and doing well. It's nice to see them restored to a high level. Hammer drops at $110,000 on that beautiful drag racing show car. Now let's join Tyler Hoover. Here in the staging lanes, you have every generation of, of Corvette well represented. There's the birth there, 1953, but what I'm sitting in is a beautiful custom 1958 Corvette, just really popping in the sun with this sky blue paint. You can see I'm very comfortable inside because they modify the interiors on these custom Corvettes to have the seats lower so a tall guy like me can fit inside, clear the steering wheel with no problems. And you see everything is classic on the inside but modern gauges put in the stock positions. It's also riding nice and low on a custom chassis. You can see the oversized wheels also that look stock, but under the hood is an LS3 V8. Easily done. You would have found in 1958 with a fuel injected four speed one of these. So a huge improvement. Beautiful custom Corvette. No question about that. And I was wondering how you could sit in it, Tyler. You're about my height. I tried to drive one for a feature here at Barrett Jackson, and I couldn't. It hit me in the steering wheel, hit me in the knees. Incredible. This is lot 1293. We're closing the bidding on a 2023 Chevy Corvette Z06 anniversary coupe. And away it goes at $175,000. Oh, come on, sir. That deserves a smile. Out the door it goes, hammer price plus 10% buyer's premium and applicable taxes and fees. Goes wherever he wants it. Here's 1294, a 1954 Chevy 3100 custom pickup. Well, this is a resto mod. Of course, it's been lowered. The grill bars, the bumpers have been uh, chromed, LED headlights. This has a ride tech, a front suspension, four of mufflers, and a six-speed manual transmission behind the GM Performance LT4 engine. Yeah, and just the point we were making a moment ago where they're putting Ford Gen 2, Gen 3 Coyote engines into the Ford products. Obviously, these GM crate engines that have kind of been ruling the aftermarket world for the last decade or so. It's nice to see that going in the proper motor here. And once again, they got a six-speed transmission. Everything on the outside of this has been done. This is a nice custom. This one wears a roll pan instead of a rear bumper for more of a hot rod look. A little bit of cut out there for the quad exhaust tips. It looks great and it's bringing great money. Current bid closing in on $200,000.
Look at those huge forged alloy wheels. Those look to be 22s in the back, perhaps 20s up front. Gleaming candy apple paint. Hammer. You called it, Rick. The market is white hot for custom pickup trucks. $200,000, and that ties for the third highest sale of the day, but not enough to make our top 10 of the overall auction. Here's April Rose. Hey, Bob, I'm out in the pre-staging lanes, and it is getting hot out here. Check this out, 1960 Coupe de Ville Custom. Now, I don't need to mention it's a custom, probably, because you can see all the details on here have been modified. I absolutely love the long, low, sleek body. One-off billet wheels right there. Stainless all the way down. Very pretty wrap-around windshield. Oh, we're going. Pillar, no pillar right here. Very open look. We're still going going about 19 over 19 feet long to these gorgeous fins on the back. Look at how they gleam in this Arizona sun. And it's almost like it has its own grill in the back. This thing is massive. Now it's got a supercharged Cadillac CTS V6.2 556 horsepower engine. I love how they left it. A true Cadillac. Willwood disc brakes all around. And check it out inside. There's so much room. Fully custom Dakota digital gauges. Full upgraded sound system. And just Stunning red leather with chrome accents and that sweet alligator detailed center console, leather wrapped wheel. I mean, if you weren't cool in high school, you need to buy this and you're instantly the one everyone wants to hang out with. I love this ride, Bob. I do too, April. You'll be leading every 4th of July parade in your hometown, no matter where you live. We go back to the block now for lot 1294.1, a 34 Ford Custom pickup called Sirius Black. And for good reason, everything on this is either black or chrome. 7,000 takes it. Of course, the name is a play on words on one of the Harry Potter novel characters. Right. Here's a look at our air schedule for the day here Super Saturday in Scottsdale. We're on FYI from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Then we'll switch over to the History Channel from 6 p.m. to midnight. And we'll cram in as many of these amazing and beautiful cars as we can. So join us for this entire day. If the weather's not great where you are, come join us. Coming up after the break, 2023 Chevy Corvette Z06. 5.5 V8 engine, 670 horsepower, the works. Stand by. The all-new line of Barrett Jackson merchandise and apparel is now available. From road rallies to the office, there are many stylish options for the car lover. Available year-round or online at shopbarrettjackson.com. We don't want to, you to miss a thing here at Barrett Jackson. So moments ago, check out this 1955 Chevy Bel Air Custom Coupe, fuel injected 383 cubic inch stroker engine, all of the go fast goodies, and it went all the way to $300,000. That's our new high sale of the day and number two of the entire auction. Now, here is a 1966 RCR Ford GT40 Mark II race car recreation, guys. Well, and what's cool about this is this is a recreation, not of a Ken Miles car, uh, you know, a, a Dan Gurney car or a Bruce McLaren car. This is the car that was driven by Mark Donahue in the Le Mans race in 1966. This is an incredible car. It's all over YouTube. Spectacular build. Represents an amazing part of automotive history. Don't miss it. Absolutely incredible build in every way. A painful replica of serial number 1032, one of the eight Ford GTs that raced at Le Mans in 1966 in these original colors. Now, why did Ford call their GT the GT40? Because the car is 40 inches tall to the top of the roof. And that when you park a Galaxy station wagon next to it, it's just going to dwarf this. All right, congratulations. You won for 125000 125,000 takes it, and I can tell all over the country right now, guys are going for a yardstick to see just how much 40 inches would feel like when you climbed in. Of course, it wasn't enough for Dan Gurney. They had to put a bubble in the roof. 
Here's lot 1296.1, a 1970 Porsche 911 wide body custom. Only recently do we see Restomod Porsche 911s. Uh, companies like Singer have done a great job with these, and so now uh, the aftermarket has gotten fully involved. This one has turbo fenders, front and rear, very deep front fascia, added uh, driving lights here, and a big GT2 RS style wing along with a ducktail spoiler from an RSR. When we came on the air, we have the winners of the Barrett Jackson Cup, the ultimate best in show. Well, as we might have mentioned, some of the cars that crossed the block as part of that were actually, these are custom cars, some are actually being sold. So this has the Barrett Jackson Cup sticker right here, meaning that this car competed in the Barrett Jackson Cup last week, and now it's being sold here at Barrett Jackson. So it's kind of an interesting twofer. A car that was in the competition to potentially win now being sold on the auction block. Eight of those competition cars for the Cup, well, they're up here on the auction block this week. Uh, and did we happen to mention this one is LS3 powered? And not a lot of Porsche left under that skin, is there? Well, they're just, you know, kind of going future imagining. Remember, they have ultimately went to water-cooled rear-engine cars for Porsche. They were just thinking, what would it have been like in 1970? A nice round $100,000 to that gentleman up in the luxury lounge. Well done. Now, coming in stage left, is lot 1297. It's a 1977 Mercedes Benz Unimog U 1300 SE custom pickup, formerly owned by Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, it's funny how certain cars connect to you in certain ways. The first time I ever heard about a Unimog, well, it wasn't, you know, on the street or in a car magazine. I was a kid and I bought a Matchbox car that was a Unimog. I remember thinking, this is really cool, this really unique way cab forward design. And, you know, because I was a kid, I used to take them apart and repaint them and have fun with them. But that's where the Unimog first came into my consciousness. Yes, these were heavy industrial vehicles in Europe. Uh, built for use off-road, but on-road capable. They have a 6.4 liter inline turbo six diesel fueled engine with a manual transmission. Unimog specialist Merex Mertek in Gagano, Germany uh, did this restoration and upfit for the governator. And really, this was all about farm machinery, the ability to go places and do things that you couldn't do in a traditional vehicle. And after World War II, they started building these in big form. And then I think in 1951, Mercedes-Benz took over and began to fully own and build these. So where do you drive this? Well, if you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, anywhere you want. I got news for you. I think even if you're not Arnold Schwarzenegger, you can pretty much drive this thing anywhere you want. The styling over time has changed. In the beginning, it was a little more rounded in the front hood, but still pretty cool. 200 grand, and you could drive it anywhere but the drive through Okay, now, so where does our lovely assistant put the uh, sold sticker on this beauty? A lot more than 40 inches from the ground, Bob. Yeah. Uh, they're going to back it out. She probably needs a running start to get up there to the windshield. So. Here's lot 1297.1, a 67 Chevy Nova SS Custom Coupe. Well, the Nova is the upscale version of the Chevy 2 uh, Chevrolet's front engine rear drive compact car, which they introduced to challenge the Ford Falcon. It did get a restyle, and here in 1967, it's probably its most pleasing form. Now, if you were going stoplight drag racing on Saturday nights, not that we ever did that, you'd rather have a Nova than, say, a Chevelle or a full-size Chevrolet because this thing is lighter, but it has a lot of the same engines available 
available, get the power to the ground and get gone. And you could sneak up on people. They weren't expecting a big engine, unless it had the SS badges, but assuming you put a big engine in something that looked pretty plain, boy, you could not only have all the power, the lightness, but you could sneak up on them and they would not know what you were coming up with. And of course, this one has a big 6.2 liter LS V8 engine, four wheel disc brakes. And once again, black work all the way around in terms of that paint on the bumper. So when we say LS, that is an engine family of General Motors who had the small block beginning 1955 and the big block V8 a decade later. And they have all been replaced by the LS family, which you'll find these engines in everything from Silverado pickups to Corvettes in all manners of tune and horsepower, most of them electronic fuel injected. So they're efficient, they're powerful, and that's what today's hot rodders are using. Yeah, this one has been what they call mini tub. Tubbing is where you actually cut away the wheel wells on the backside to put bigger tires into it. And in this case, they've done a mild chop where they've gotten, you know, slightly larger tires on the rear. And another $100,000 sale. And a very cool Chevy Nova SS Custom. Another break coming up, and then more Dream Rides. Stick and stay. Welcome back to the Valley of the Sun, which is certainly sunny today. This is Westworld of Scottsdale, where the temperatures are expected to reach the low 70s on a perfect day for Super Saturday here at the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. There are the cars lining up to head into the building. Inside the building is the world famous Barrett Jackson auction block, and we're looking at a 69 Corvette 427 435 L89. Yeah, second year for the C3, this Mako Shark body style. Roy Siner, who's the expert for Corvettes here at Barrett Jackson, was just up on the block talking about how this is the real deal. 435 horsepower with that L89 engine. This And this is the number. This may well be a world record for this car. Top, top quality. It only brings us the best. Documented by the best, most well-known Corvette expert in the world. You cannot go wrong, folks. Here's an opportunity to buy one of the finest in the world. We were hoping this car was going to bring closer to twice that amount. You can't replace it. You got 70 unmodified car. Look at the Goodyear polyglass tires. Now, these were belted bias ply tires, much better handling than, than the bias ply tires that preceded them. Uh, certainly, the radials are an upgrade over these, but they weren't available back then. And this one has been judged. I mean, it's a, a top flight winner, Bloomington Gold certified. It's won a muscle car and Corvette National Concours Gold. So not only to have Roy Siner signing off on it, it's got the entire Corvette judging community signing off on it. 435 horsepower, four speed car. Now they're closing in on $300,000 solely but surely. You know, we talked yesterday about the fact that for a long time, these Gen 3s, uh, they languished a little bit. Not anymore. $290,000, the hammer price. Now let's go to Tyler. Aloha from the staging lanes. What we have behind me started life as a very special truck. 1970 short bed, regular cab pickup truck. And this one was ordered from the factory in this color, surf green. So the builder decided to customize it and continue on that surfer theme. And you can see it in the wood trim here. It would have been fall wood actually in the Cheyenne package, but they put little tiki motif going all the way across the side. This one's been lifted two and a half inches, has oversized tires. So you can look easily down below and see the, oh, well, we'll go inside first. You can see in the door panel, there's more of that tiki motif and the beautiful leather interior, custom gauges. And since this thing has been lifted, you can see the undercarriage really well on this thing. This is where the details on these custom builds really can just go nuts. That powder coated frame, you can see the four wheel drive components, all shiny as well, just incredible. And under the hood, beautiful as well. It looks like a vintage engine, thanks to being painted in hugger orange and those old script valve covers, but it is a modern LS3. So mahalo to the builder for bringing this thing. It is gorgeous. 
And Mahala back at you, Tyler. We'll look for that. Right now, we're watching lot 1299, a 72 Ford Bronco Custom. Boy, full custom build, right beginning with the grill and the nose carried all the way through. A fuel injected engine, and we're told $300,000 in receipts for this build. And I don't think there's a, an original part left on this thing. Boy, that one went straight to 150,000, and that's where it was hammered away. And off it goes. The new owner has, I believe it's 72 hours to take their vehicle off the property. <laughs> I bet it takes a lot less than that. Here's lot 1299.1, a 69 Camaro Z28. It's said that these are rare in black in 1969, but we've seen several of them this week come across the block at Barrett Jackson. The 302 cubic inch small block, that size chosen because the SCCA limit to race in the Trans Am series was five liters or 305. All the original smog equipment that we took away, uh, took off and threw away on day two with these cars is all present. A replica tar top GM battery. And this one from MS Classic Cars in Seekonk, Mass, restored to a very high standard as new. Well, let's see what it looks like underneath in terms of restoration with our chassis cam. There we have that 302 cubic inch engine made into the four speed transmission. Working our way back, everything looked pristine. We're going to find our way to the 12 inch rear end. Boy, just as nice underneath as it is up above. You know, it wasn't but a couple of years ago that these were 80 to $100,000 cars when fully restored, but we're at double that, Bob. Yes, $170,000 takes it home. And that couple will enjoy it as the gentleman ticks off another item in his catalog. Now, coming up later on, how about this? Absolutely shaved. Minimalist looking, the 857 supercharged horsepower under the hood of this Chevy 3100 Custom. Back at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, once again, we don't want you to miss the big hitters, and here's one a 1942 Dodge Power Wagon Custom with a 6.2 liter supercharged Hellcat engine, custom suspension, a whole lot more, including fabricated rear doors where there weren't any on the original. That's a resto mod, original lines, but modern internals, and it went for $350,000. That's our new top sale of the day. Now on stage, the 71 Ford Bronco Custom. Well, resto mods and customs rule the day here at Barrett-Jackson, and it doesn't matter whether it's a massive power wagon or a, well, let's say sort of a standard Bronco. If it's been customized, if it's got a Coyote engine, if it's got modern running components, that is exactly what the buyers want and are willing to pay for. Of course, this is pretty classic. It's got that Coyote engine, 10-speed automatic transmission, and four-wheel drive. It's had a mild two-and-a-half-inch lift. Uh, note the Battleship Gray is offset by the lava orange leather in the inside. And no full weather equipment, just a little, is it a bikini top or a bimini top? I've kind of heard it both ways, depending on how expensive a boat you buy. I was going to say, depends on which coast you're on. Out, out west, we call it a bikini top. You can call it a bimini top. This is made by Decked Out Custom, which was one of the builders who had a couple of the cars that were competing in the Barrett-Jackson Cup last week and did not win this week, but they had some pretty impressive builds. We're seeing more and more of the second generation Ford Broncos because these first generations hard to find donor cars. And it sells at 151,000. The trend continues for custom SUVs and pickup trucks. Here comes lot 1301.1 in bright red and 67 Chevelle Custom. Now we talked earlier about LS swaps. This is not one. 
Uh, this retains the big block engine that it could have been born with, but this one has been treated to a set of aluminum heads. It's been punched out to 540 cubic inches. It's a blueprint engine, three-speed automatic transmission. That is Fitech fuel injection, making this a much more efficient and more powerful engine than it could have been born with. Look, look at all the custom touches inside the engine compartment. They've shaved the firewall. The fenders are nice and flat. And then, of course, up front, we're not seeing any chrome on this. Look how they've grayed all oh, the grill, the bumper. So it's a beautiful red paint job. And even all of the chrome that would have been around the window surround, every place else has been taken off on this 1967. The glass panel dash is brand new, but it has analog uh, style gauges as original. And this sort of neodyme satin metal finish is on all of what was previously chrome or stainless trim. 1967, the last year for this body style. The next year it would uh, get, well, the front would stay relatively close, but it would have that Coke bottle styling on the back, more of a fastback look that would then lead into 68, 69, and of course, the big car that we see crossing the block this week, all of the 1970 Chevelles. And it hammers away at 125,000, and she cannot believe it. Better believe it. Let's go to April. Uh, these are so cool. They stand out. 1970s Superbird, only year that they made them. Really cool, all with aerodynamics in mind. They only built about 2,000 of them. You got the steel nose cone cutting through the air. There's actually cutouts underneath to feed that matching numbers, 440. And of course, check out the massive wing in the back. It's super tall, which acts for downforce, but also sideways stability, you know, kind of like a plane's rudder. I mean, it's incredibly strong. And and it's tied to the frame. It really could hold over three Mike Joys just sitting on it, no problem. Now inside, it looks stock like a Roadrunner with a bench seat, very comfortable, easy to drive. I mean, this is the true ugly duckling that's now a beautiful swan, Bob. Uh, April, I just turned to Mike Joy when you said that three Mike Joys comment, and his jaw still hasn't returned to its original position. So only a fresh from Mike Bob. later on. Here's a beacon to the McGuire staging lanes. This is where the cars come in order to go into the building under the supervision of the Barrett Jackson staff. And the McGuire's team is there to give them a final fluff and buff before they go in under the hot lights on the Barrett Jackson stage. Right now, Rick is eyeballing a 52 Chevy 3100 custom pickup. Yeah, I'm not even sure where to begin. It's so beautifully done from front to back, but I do love what they've done with the bed. You know, not uncommon to have wood in the bed, but they've given it this silver treatment because when you look at the rest of this truck, it matches. I also love the way they've done the custom hinges down here for this to rotate on. Well, there's nothing that they haven't touched on this to make it just a little bit better, or in this case, an awful lot better than it would have been born with. $55,000. Not sure who was happier there. Great truck, great price. 150, 155 seems to be the, the average for those here at Barrett Jackson this year. Here comes a 55 Chevy Bel Air Custom. Well, the pattern of the two-tone is factory. The colors are not. This one wears teal on its hood, front fenders, and most of the doors, and silver from there on back. You could order that two-tone treatment on a Bel Air. You could not order this LS3 Wagner 427 V8 engine uh, with LSXR fuel injection, nor the Stage 4 automatic transmission. This is an Art Morrison GT Sport chassis. Uh, that means it's going to be Maybe not as robust as the original 55 Chevy chassis, but it's, it's computer designed. It's going to be built to a much higher standard and more precise mounting points than the original factory job, many of which found their way quickly to racetracks and are no longer available for restoration. 
Yeah, when we talk about Art Morrison or Roadster Shop or any of the aftermarket chassis manufacturers, what they do is they make specific chassis for specific cars. So in this case, the Tri-5 Chevys. There's a very specific chassis that they're building for it. And as you mentioned, you can get it done in different styles and to different extents. You know, you can have a bare chassis. You can have complete suspension front and rear. It really boils down to what do you want to build. And you can see all of those on display right outside the auction tent here at Barrett Jackson. This one has been treated to a vintage air conditioning system and a retro tech digital dash. And your point, I don't think this was the way it would have looked coming out of the factory. Who would have thought a teal and silver, but you know, these traditionally would have been white, beige on the backside, but it looks beautiful. You know, it's hard to believe that this shape, which has endured so well, and these Tri-5 Chevys have always been blue-chip collectibles, it's hard to believe this car is nearly 70 years old. And it sure didn't sell for $195,000 when it was brand new. There it is. Now our next car is a 69 Chevelle Copo 427. It's time for a few Haggerty fast packs. How about the fact that 86,307 SS Chevelles were built in total in 1969, but of that total, only 323 were Copo cars, C-O-P-O, -O, Central Office Production Order. Somebody wanted a specific list of goodies. They were willing to pay for them, and they got them. Let's see what it goes for. So how do you get a Copo car? You have to know a Chevy dealer that has a direct pipeline to factory performance, and that's what happened here. We've all heard of Tasca Ford in East Providence, Rhode Island, and all of their high-performance Mustangs. Well, their big competitor in the market was Scuncio Chevrolet in Greenville, Rhode Island, and that's where this Copo 427 Chevelle was born with out of Scuncio's very famous in the Northeast among Chevy high performance folks. Yeah, and just because it's performance, don't confuse it with an SS, right? It's not wearing any SS badges, although it is all about performance. Uh, you look at the VIN number, it's got a 13637 in it, meaning it was born a Malibu two door sport coupe. No shortage of those made, but once again, because you know somebody and you had to, it's like, you know, having the back door and you have to knock twice and ask for Frank, you knew how to order exactly what you were looking for with this central office production order. Gravels Auto Body, Waterbury, Connecticut, did this restoration in the factory correct fathom green paint over parchment interior and a period correct 427 is under the hood made into a muncie four speed hundred and twelve thousand dollars and that's worth a smooch and you didn't even have to know somebody on the inside we'll take a break and return to scottsdale Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. There's a look at the crowd of car fans milling around out there just outside the staging lanes. Absolutely gorgeous day to look at cars and that's inside the prep zone. Now we've been talking all week about Fantasy Bid brought to you by Dodge. The winner at the end of all the 2024 Barrett Jackson auctions will take home a 2024 Dodge Hornet. Here's a look at the standings so far after two cars. Mike M off to a brief lead. You still have time to join, even if you miss a car or two. You'll find all the rules at promo.barrettjacksonfantasybid.com. Take a shot. What do you got to lose? You may win something cool. Here is a 2019 Corvette ZR1 Custom Hennessy HPE 1000. Well, customized in a lot of ways. Most importantly, you see this badge here? 1,000, 1,000 horsepower. And $167,000 sends it to its new home. Now, we are told that Barrett Jackson has just crossed the $100 million sales threshold. Here we are on, what, day five of the auction. Day four on our air at FYI and the History Channel. 
And we've got a long way to go, so we'll see what the final number is. But that's certainly a healthy start. Now, they're still working on that Hennessy. We're at 160. The auctioneer's trying to solve a snag. And okay. That gentleman stayed in at 160, and he gets the car at all 1,000 horsepower. Okay, we'll carry on to lot 1305 and 1953. Corvette 235-150 convertible. Hard to believe how revolutionary this car was when it debuted in this year, 1953. All 300 built were all polo white like this. Harley Earl styled the grill. These are stone guards over the headlights, as found on a lot of European sports cars. And yes, these first two years of Corvettes were all powered by Chevrolet's Blue Flame six-cylinder engine with triple carburetors and a two-speed power glide automatic transmission. Well, what do people do real realize and you know forget to understand is that you know in 1953 150 horsepower out of a six-cylinder engine that was performance that was what would compare with a Jaguar or something coming out of Europe by the way they made 300 of these you could only get two options your two options were either an AM radio or a heater and in reality every single one of those came with them what you could not get on these early Corvettes were, say, roll-up windows and other creature comforts that would come along later. But you saw one of these on the road. It was narrower, lower, sleeker than anything else on the street, a showstopper. Man, $200,000. Probably a world record for uh, dollars per cylinder. That's still just a classic look. Congratulations to the new owner. Now here comes lot 1305.1, a 69 AMX custom coupe called Banachek. And by the way, this is one of our uh, Dodge Fantasy big cars. So if you're still hung up about what you think it'll sell for, hurry. But now you can take a good close look. An original George Barris custom. What did George Barris do? Well, he built the first Batmobile for TV, and he built this on a stock AMX that has been lowered and highly modified for the TV series Banachek. Who's that, George Papard? Yeah. George Papard. This was not the car that George Papard used, for example, the show like some of the other cars we've seen across the block. This was used in a particular episode. I think it was a car that was stolen or something, and, of course, Banachek had to probably had to figure it out. But, boy, I tell you, this is a great build, and, you know, those folks who love of the AMX have to love this. It's been beautifully done. And of course, you know, not just the treatment in the back, but that grill. They've almost, it's almost like it's a stylized what AMC would have done if they could have gotten crazy on it. And, you know, this has everything you want. I mean, it was involved in a TV show. You've got the records of that. And of course, George Barris, when it comes to custom royalty from the 1960s, he's the man. And of course, remember the day the Batmobile sold here on the auction block? Not quite that big a rock star in this but it's pretty cool. Almost looks like a bedliner finish on these wings. A lot of things that George did look great from 10 or 20 feet. For example, on the Sonny and Cher Mustangs, he used ice cube trays on the hood with the grills from, from overhead fluorescent lights. Hey, whatever worked. And to your point, this one looks good right up close. I mean, there aren't many details on here that I would lack. It's got great pinstriping. It's got the great paintwork right through here. Nice touches everywhere. 130,000 takes it. And everyone here at Barrett Jackson recalls George Barris fondly. He brought a number of his creations here, including that Batmobile that Mike mentioned, which really went to the moon. What was that one, like four million? Four and a half. Million? I remember saying, Bob, as it rolled across the stage to the TV theme, kings, rock stars, presidents, Batmobile. Nothing else get that kind of reception. Absolutely. The house was rocking. Here's 1306, a 66 Pontiac GTO custom EV convertible. Oh, yeah, those two letters you said in the middle of that name, EV. This is an electric conversion on a 1966 Pontiac GTO. What they've done is put a 
Tesla 50 kilowatt motor underneath on the transmission mounts. The frame was reinforced, but they're using the original chassis. So let's show it to you on our chassis cam. Don't expect to see anything uh, original under here other than the front suspension and cross member are original there. A lot of wiring instead of exhaust pipes, okay. There's your power unit. Very, very clean underneath. So check out the dashboard. Look at this cool video display with those uh, analog style looking gauges. They've done a nice job of taking an analog look, which of course would have been home to the 1966 Pontiac GTO and updating it. You know, that. I think we're going to see more and more of these. I think we are. 130,000 takes it to wherever that man wants it. Now let's join Tyler once again. It's hard to believe that the remake of Gone in 60 Seconds, starring Nicolas Cage and Angelina Jolie, came out, was released almost 25 years ago. I know I saw it in theaters multiple times and then wore out the VHS tapes, but even all this time later, the Eleanor builds are just as popular. Now, they made about a dozen cars for the film, most of them destroyed in that crazy chase scene, about three functional ones. This one was not one of those cars. It is a tribute edition, an official tribute edition done very well. This design was pinned by Chip Foose and they put the body kit on and you can see in the back glass they even added the nitrous. In the interior you can see the go baby go button as well with the four speed manual transmission and I love this one because it is so screen accurate. Even under the hood even though this wasn't born a GT500 thankfully they didn't destroy any real Shelby's in the film. This car started life as a 67 fastback but it's not a Shelby but it has the 428 Cobra motor what you would have found in a 67 Shelby GT500 and I really like that. Time for another break. Lot 16, uh, 1306.1 is at $135,000. We'll be back to Scottsdale. Barrett Jackson. Here's what the last three cars did going across the block. All six figure cars. And that 67 Corvette, lot 1307, went for a quarter of a million dollars. The numbers just keep climbing. And this one's already at 260 grand. This is a 67 Corvette Custom. All right, so. If you were watching all week, earlier in the week, you saw Corvettes cross the block not selling for $100,000, not selling for $200,000. So what's the difference? Well, let's talk about customs. It really comes down to the build. Who built it? How they built it? What engine components they put on? Did they put on a new chassis? How much custom work? And, of course, the finish, the paint. What color have they done? You know, there are certain colors these days that are popping more than others. And, quite frankly, these silvers, these grays, these are bringing value. Here is the car card, and I counted 20 different aftermarket manufacturers that have provided the parts that went into this build. I mean, the industry that supports just Corvettes, not just collector cars in general, is broad and very successful and growing. That extra bid. Five grand more is all it took for that gentleman to pick up that beautiful Corvette. <laughs> Need a bow. Well deserved. Don't forget Barrett-Jackson.com has all the information you could possibly need about the Barrett Jackson auctions here in Scottsdale and elsewhere. So go to Barrett-Jackson.com 
at the very least, get yourself a t-shirt. There's a new logo, new merchandise of all kinds, all the time. Barrett-Jackson.com. Now, we're on a rocket ride. 140,000, 50, 60, you get the idea. 170,000 on this Corvette. Take it away, guys. Well, watch the hood come up on those lifts and see the, not the engine it was born with, underneath. Beautiful big 20 or 22 inch wheels, frost blue over silver, ivory interior. And again, another Corvette that the aftermarket has provided most all of the parts on this beautiful build. And going back to the point of why one car sells more than another, you know, the certain things. For example, 1958. There's something about the 58 body style with those chrome tusks on the backside people just love. You put an LS engine up front. We talked earlier about where that comes from. But there just seems to be a magic package. Now, the problem is you can put an LS engine in some other kind of car, and it's not going to bring that kind of money. But if it's the right type of car, the right type of paint and finish like we've got right here, the right type of interior, boy, it, it just all adds together into exactly what the market wants right now. Like this one has C7 Corvette suspension. And that's another good point. You know, it, it, they're using modern Corvette components underneath. So it's got that genealogy, that bloodline that follows through from what a 1958 Corvette was born with to what the modern Corvettes are using today. Oh, that's John Stalupi. I watched Steve Davis waving at him from the block, and you saw the bidder assistant asking the auctioneer to wait for another bid, but it wasn't there. And those guys bought this incredible Corvette. Wow. It's quite a minuet. The bidder, the bidder assistant, the auctioneer. When the competition gets hot, it is so much fun to watch. Here's a 67 Chevy 2 Nova Custom. Well, another 67 Nova, highly reimagined. This one's called Nightmare. That's a Motown, all aluminum block and heads, small block engine at 427 cubic inches. Holly fuel injection engine management system. TCI Pro Touring, independent front suspension, and four-link rear Ride Tech Air Ride, E-Stop, E-Brakes, Willwood Disc Brakes, Dakota Digital Dash, and on and on and on. Well, just a moment ago, one of the Barrett Jackson staff members walked by with a very thick binder. It is filled with receipts. It's filled with information about the build. And going back to what brings money, it's all those things. Once again, it's the right combination with the car. And then it's showing how you did what you did, giving it enough break-in miles so somebody can trust it when they're out on the road. And they want pretty fresh. $150,000. We've got another break coming up, but not before we show you a very cool car. Yesterday, a 69 Mustang Boss 429 went for $400,000. You're going to see this 1970 version, 429 V8 and all, when we come back. Welcome back. There's a handy Barrett Jackson sign in one of the showcase pavilions where the cars are firing up and heading for the staging lanes before entering the auction hall. And that's where we are with a 2019 Corvette ZR1 Custom Coupe. Well, you look at this, you go, wait a minute, Rapid Blue, that color was new with the C8 Corvette. This is from the Brian Frank collection. It came from the factory in black, and this is an Avery Dennison wrap in current Corvette Rapid Blue. Yeah, and they're labeling this as a custom for more reasons than one. I mean, obviously, they've managed to change the uh, look from the outside, but also they've totally reworked that engine underneath. And that gentleman, congratulated by the bidder assistant, takes it for $147,000. Beautiful shade of blue. Now here's lot 1310, if you're scoring at home. The 1970 Ford Mach 1 Twister Special. 
Well, the Twister was a special regional build uh, for Western Ford dealers, and it's uh, on the rear quarter panel there. You couldn't get these all across the country, only in the Kansas City uh, dealer service zone. Well, we hear a lot about the GTCS, the California Special from 1968. It has a lot of attention. Now, that was just an appearance package. What was different about the Twister, there were only 96 of these made. And what they did was they started with a Mach 1, and then they added the drag pack onto it. So this wasn't just an appearance package for 1970 for the Twister edition. This was a full-on performance package. They only made 96 of them, and this was the only color you could get it in. Grabber Orange has the 428 cubic inch Cobra Jet V8, a $376 option. No extra charge for the Twister. Emblems, $42.75 out the door at your Kansas City Ford dealer. We know about the California specials, the Twisters, and then there was also one other, which was the High Country Special, which was made out of Colorado, more mountainous. But uh, and they started doing those before the GTCS, the California Specials, came out. I'm not sure if being a Twister Special adds value uh, to a 428 Mach 1, but it certainly does add rarity. Might not sell for more money, but it will sell sooner because of the limited number built. And once again, I mean, it's in great shape. It's one of only 96 built. It does have performance, and it's got that little extra flair with the name. 42.75 out the door back in the day. Well, $250,000 now. Congratulations, sir. Wow. Let's go to April. Hey, Bob, I'm with this 1950 Chevy 3100 Custom. And when I say custom, there is a lot going on. We got this front bumper from a 68 Camaro. Now, this is a stock grille. The headlights have been Frenched in, and these are LEDs. Very beautiful custom color. I can't pronounce it. I'm sure Bob or Mike, you're going to be able to do that for me. They stretched out these running boards to make them wider. Very cool knockoff wheels with those yellow line tires all the way back. I love this fuel filler right there. I mean, this is just such a neat truck. Now it's got a GM 6.2 LS3 with Magnuson Supercharger, four speed automatic, nine inch rear end with 373 gears and sits on a TCI chassis. Now take a peek inside. The leather has been beautifully done. Very nice matching wheel, matching gauges, and of course the ever important cup holders right in the center. I mean, this is one fun truck to take in the Arizona desert. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it gets dirty because it is that exact color, easy to keep clean. I like it, it's very practical, Bob. What, April, you can't pronounce Streamline Cafe Ole? How do you like your coffee? With milk? Thanks, April. This is lot 1310.1, 1969 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom. Yeah, it's been customized with all the usual stuff. Better engine, it's got a big lift. I love the uh, beadlock tires. But one of the subtle things they've done with this is in the previous year, 1968, they had a 50th anniversary edition. So in this one, what they've done is kind of pretended it's a 50th anniversary edition. Look how they put that up on the dashboard right there. And check out that interior. How is that fabric? They perfectly match this color, the gold. $170,000 right there in that same window with all of these amazing custom SUVs we've seen this week. And there are more to come, I am sure. Now here comes, well, another one. Lot 1311 is a 71 Bronco Sport Custom. There are 62 Broncos in this year's Barrett Jackson Scottsdale sale. That's twice as many as there are Chevy Blazers. Now, the, in the sales race in the showroom, things were different, but of course the prices were nowhere near what we're seeing here. 32 valve Ford camera V8. Wow. I mean, just everything is so modern here except the shape. It's the one you remember from 1971 and these first gen Broncos. 
And when you were talking about the number of Blazers, that doesn't count the number of Jimmys, no doubt, that goes along with that. And you think about it, it's interesting. Back when this was a new vehicle, the only way you could get a Bronco or anything like it in the Ford world was from Ford. There was no Lincoln Mercury equivalent of it. Whereas in the Chevrolet world, you could either get a Chevy Blazer or a GMC Jimmy. So this fresh build has a Coyote 5 liter V8 and what is described as the family roll cage, meaning main hoop, rear hoop, front hoop, down bars, uh, but no crossbars, no diagonals because you need to have room for the family in the back seat. Okay. It's got a Dana 20 transfer case, nine inch rear end in the back. And of course that uh, Coyote 5 liter engine up front. A very fresh build. I know people that have ordered these. They've waited over a year to have them built and paid right around what someone will drive this one home for here at Bear Jackson. Yeah, there's no shortage of parts. We've talked about that to build these, but find someone to build it and build it the way you want it and get in line to get it done. That's what takes time. That's why these are bringing good money here. Specifically, $165,000. Very cool car. Got another break coming up, but plenty more still to come in our 10 hours of live coverage on FYI and the History Channel. Stay with us. We'll be back to Scottsdale. The party is fully underway at about 1.35 local time, that's mountain time, here in Scottsdale, Arizona, home of the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. The Big Brown Building is the main auction hall, housing thousands of bidders and interested fans. For a very reasonable general admission ticket, you can come and do everything except sit down on the bidder floor there and bid on cars. It's a great car guy thing to do. Here is a 61. Corvette Custom Convertible. Well, this one's been highly resto modded. LS3 V8, all different suspension, 4L65E uh, automatic, electronic engine management. Now, this was kind of a sub-body style of the C1, and the difference from the preceding year is around here in the back. It's these big fender humps with the peak and the cam tail rear with the recessed tail lights, two on each side, that would be seen in the Stingray that would come along for 1963. So make the 61 and 62 C1 Corvettes just kind of a nice preview, kind of a half preview of what was to come. Some people just call it the ducktail out back. You know, we talk about the fact that rarity adds to value, but for some reason when it comes to Corvette, that's not the case. Here at Barrett-Jackson this week, remember, we've got a record number of cars, more than 2,000, everyone crossing the block at Mill Reserve. Of those 2,000 cars, more than 180 are Corvettes. And what year do you want? 67, there's 14 1958s. This one's got the LS3 6.2 liter engine. It's got an automatic transmission, an L92 aluminum pistons, Ford steel I-beam rods. I mean, they've gone through this from top to bottom. And, you know, we talk about the fact that it's really, it's just the way you want it because it's done to perfection. And it hammers away of $162,000 as we go to Tyler. I'm with lot 1320.1, a 2007 Ferrari F430 Spider, and with a blueprint engine cam, let's take a look under the hood, or in the back of this thing, Ferraris, the 430, 4.3 liters, 500 horsepower of mid-engine greatness, and you can see it's mounted really deep in the engine bay. The red intakes go all the way down to the V8 mounted as low as possible, and this was the first Ferrari built for incredible reliability. No more belt services on these, and this one 
beautiful condition. You can see that Rosa Corsa paint, a design continuation of the Ferrari 360 refined really well. And this one showing only 2,000 miles, a bit over 2,000 miles. Now it has been modified a little bit. You see the beautiful Daytona seats in the interior. In between that, a lovely gated shifter. Now they did make it from the factory with a gated shifter. Some cars, it's extremely rare. So it's getting more and more popular to do gated manual conversions to get rid of the paddle shifters. And you have an incredible driving experience right here. Yeah, that's really sweet. Thank you, Tyler. And here's a car we previewed earlier, the 2023 Corvette Z06 Coupe. So why are these nearly brand new cars here at Barrett Jackson? Because you can't get one. If you did, you'd have to order it and wait for it. 670 horsepower, carbon fiber aero package, Z07, even higher performance package. This one gets to ludicrous speed. Insanity Plus. Yeah, it does it with that flat, plan, flat plane crank engine. You know, traditionally we always have the offsets, which meant it couldn't rev quite as high. With this thing, you can rev all the way up to 8,500. And it's that ability to have a different sound, too, from the engine. 178,000 dollars. Sinister looking thing. Corvette has really hit a home run with this new generation of events. Here's lot 1314. 1970 Chevy K10 custom pickup. We talk about the C10s and the K10s ruling the world this week, and they have. There's just something about that 1967 to 1972 body style that has struck a chord. Just before we went on the air, there was a 1963 Chevy that crossed the block, and it's just a little rougher body style. But this one, it's so sleek, so smooth, and it's a perfect palette to do anything you want with. For example, this one where they put in this 525 horsepower, 6.2 liter engine, and of course they've jacked it up underneath, big four wheel drive, because it is a K. Let me jump in there. Uh, I need to remind people, Rick, that this is one of the fantasy bid cars, so you're running out of time. Get your bid in. Love these GM two tones of the 1970s. A little faux wood trim uh, going on here. That is factory. And just a very restful looking mint green and bright summit white. Yeah, they've nicknamed this truck High Tide because it's getting through the water, but I can't imagine anybody would ever actually take it out into the water if they were going to do that. You could ford plenty of streams, but boy, this build is just too beautiful to do it with right now. Maybe someday. Coilovers at the front, remote reservoir Fox shocks all the way around, though it retains its leaf spring rear suspension. Okay, now I know you people who are playing the fantasy big game are screaming at your TV saying, Bob, the bids were cut off yesterday. I can't bid on the car now. Well, that's right. I didn't know. I'm not allowed to play the game, so uh, I don't know the rules. All right, check out that seat inside. You know, they've kept a bench seat, but they've gone to a much more modern, more contoured bench seat. So another example of how they've taken every step. And remember I called it high tide? Well, there's the name right there. And you can see that same tiki look is in the applique on the back of the seat right there. We're not done, are we? 177,000. Seventy-eight thousand takes it. Was that your fantasy bid? Congratulations, sir. Now here comes lot thirteen, fourteen point one, a seventy-one K five Blazer Custom. This is also a Hogan-built machine, similar to the one that just crossed the block. The uh, C10 is a two-wheel drive half-done pickup, K10 a four-wheel drive. So the Blazer got the K5 designation in four-wheel drive. Now, this 
is an LS but with earlier Chevy small block valve covers and the way you tell that they faked this is look at the exhaust header pipes the primary pipes if this was a small block the two center pipes would be right together but on an LS they're equally spaced you can't miss the Whipple supercharger sitting on top of that LS what I really love about this one is it's had 1,200 miles since it was built. So it's fully worked in. Everything you'd exactly love to see. All right, what we've got to see is the headliner. I mean, this is Rolls-Royce starlight stuff uh, right here. Aren't LEDs great? We saw a Rolls-Royce Silver Wraith roll across the block yesterday, had that exact interior treatment. Boy, we can get up and look inside. Also, look at this. We'll call it another family roll cage, a full roll cage. It goes from front to back. Big sound back here. They've done a great job of protecting everybody in this thing. The leather seats with cloth inserts. Don't believe those are factory, though I have seen similar. And the contrast stitching in silver. Center console. What a nice, luxurious, brand new $300,000 blazer. Yeah, the only question is where do we go? I mean, the sky's the limit, or in this case, the twinkling skies are the limit. The Triple Century, $300,000. Wow. So much for that window I was talking about. SUVs and trucks. Okay. Here's one that April reviewed for us earlier. Lot 1315 is a 1960 Caddy Coupe de Ville custom hardtop. Long and low and definitely not slow because this one has been upgraded. Here's Steve Davis. You look down the sides of this thing straight. That's a lot of real estate to make straight with black paint. It's beautiful red interior. Shane, let's sell it. Let's do it, Steve. It's a 1960. It has a modern supercharged Cadillac V series. A V8 in it. Sick chops of Cave Creek, Arizona have built this. Now, the body shape and the greenhouse looks very factory, but I'm seeing what looks to be, oh, a four to six inch chop in the roof. Low and long and sleek. Is it possible to call a Cadillac from this era subtle? Maybe a little bit, but only because, remember this is the 1960, it follows the 1959 with those iconic 1959 tail lights that would have been right here. But the length on this thing, this is like 225 inches long. Think about this, a modern Escalade, just a standard Escalade is like 212 inches long. This is nearly a foot longer with just two doors and seating for four people. Of course, you got trunk space, for you know everything you could possibly bring home from Costco. A modern padded dash, a full length center console, seating for four, shaved of door handles and all exterior ornamentation, except the stainless steel denoting of the fins and the lower body side. Huge hoops front and rear. This is just gorgeous. And all done in black paint and as we've talked about black shows every flaw if there's a problem down the side of this thing you're going to see it with that black paint and as I look down the sides well, I don't see any problems at all it's a beautiful beautiful build that roof line looks like a Chevy bubble top Remember, we were still in the jet and space age concept. You know, that's what all these tail lights look like. The one from 1959 really looked like an exhaust flame, but uh, now they were a little more subtle. Shane Ratliff brings down the hammer at $175, $1,000. Don't make that mistake. Congratulations, sir. That is quite a piece. Okay. Our stage we gave you a brief last year preview earlier on of this 56 Chevy 3100 custom pickup called Redefined Red. Here's Steve Davis. Best in the auction. Don't miss it. All right. 
just what a beautiful, simple shape this is. The front of this truck evokes the 1955 Chevrolet, the Tri-5, that stood uh, Detroit on its ear. And here is uh, the big swap underneath an LSA engine, Holley Electronic Fuel Injection Whipple Supercharger, a combined 850 horsepower. Now, like all pickups of its era, this has a rectangular bed with external fenders and steps. Earlier this weekend, we had the Cameo a version of this with the fiberglass add-on fenders for style, but the function of the bed was still the same. Now, this bed doesn't function like new uh, because it's been raised. The bed floor has been raised to accommodate that brand new rear suspension. And last year, if you had been at the Barrett-Jackson auction, you would have seen this as one of the five finalists for the Barrett-Jackson Cup. So this was just built a year ago and shown and almost made the winner as the Barrett-Jackson Cup ultimate best in show. Look at the curvature of the bed sign here and this little belt line bump out kind of a rear spoiler looking treatment here kind of hides in plain sight. Just a, another great tribute to the customizer. And look at the faux wood that they've created here. And when Steve refers to the big window, this is what he's talking about, the big window that goes across the back. For a long time, they didn't think they needed big windows, but think how complicated this is to have this curved glass at the back of there. And then, of course, we've got the curved glass at the front as well. I mean, just a few years earlier, they were doing split windows in pickup trucks. Well, the reason for that big window had nothing to do with style. The uh, small rear window, just big enough for the rear view mirror, uh, for the driver to see through the rear view mirror, created a huge blind spot in the right rear. 175,000 and John Stilupi, the salute, picks it up. Another break coming up. That gives you an idea of how frantic the action is going to continue to be this Super Saturday at Barrett Jackson. Stand by for more from Scottsdale. Welcome back. There's a look down on the massive half mile long tent complex. And the seven tents in the background all of which are stuffed with some of the world's most beautiful, historic, classic cars here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. This is lot 1316.1, closing the bidding on a 66 Chevy 2 Nova SS Custom. This is the third 66 and 7 Nova SS we've had. They just kept getting more intricate in the build, more subtle in the presentation, and more beautiful. This one's been shaved of all of its badging. Beautiful white over red. I would have guessed in 1966 that a Nova would sell for $300,000. There's a lot of head shaking going on up here on the block, but the craftsmanship is what sold that car. Right, you can't deny it. 300 large. Well, we promised some pretty excited bidding and some very determined bidders as we welcome a 67 Corvette Custom Coupe. Wearing its big block hood with the Stinger. Now, normally, Chevrolet would not have put a ghost Stinger. There would be a contrast between the color of the Stinger and the color of the body, but it would represent the color of the interior most often, and in this case, it is red. Here's another LS swap masquerading as the big block 427 that this could have been born with. Well, what's interesting about this one, it also has a brand new chassis underneath. It's basically what they've done is taken a C4 style Corvette chassis, dumped, built it on a jig and put it underneath. So whereas a lot of people are simply taking an aftermarket company and putting it on, this one purpose built for this car, made by a customizer out of British Columbia Springfield Motorsports in Peachland. So let's show you that C4 chassis from the early 1990s on this 1967 uh, Corvette as it rolls by. And that much more modern rear suspension than this would have been born with. Beautiful. 
And they took that engine, the 454 cubic inch engine, and they've punched it out to 496 cubic inches, which is another example of somebody who's saying, I'm not just going to take a crank motor and drop it in. I'm going to take a motor and do work on it. And that work results in a $180,000 price tag at the hammer. Congratulations to the new owner. Now here's a familiar sight at every Barrett Jackson auction. It's a 67 Ford Mustang Eleanor Tribute Edition. Well, everybody knows the movie and everybody loves the car, and a lot of people want to buy one, so. Authorized tribute cars uh, have been produced over the years, and this is one of them. Uh, licensed with the paperwork from Toby Haldeke's widow. He was the fellow who created the original Gone in 60 Seconds. It is pepper gray, it is black inside, and has all of the correct movie touches. There were a total of 12 that were built for that 2000 movie, the remake of Gone in 60 Seconds. Only three of them were actually functioning cars. They were basically 1967s that were dolled up. A movie poster, signed photographs of the stars, and most importantly, that certificate of authenticity that this is a licensed Eleanor replica. DuPont, pepper gray, the color, and boy, it just goes back to the fact that we've seen so many grays, whether it's a metal flake, DuPont, pepper gray like this, or even destroyer gray that we've seen in some of the other cars that are coming across, battleship grays. This is absolutely the color that's bringing big money here at Barrett Jackson these days. Cast wine glass wheels, the uh, side pipes fared into the rockers. So much metallic in that pepper gray paint, and somewhere a 66 T Bird is missing its taillights. And $130,000 sends it to its new home. Not sure exactly who got it, but good luck to them. Gone in 60 seconds or thereabouts. Well, Super Saturday is just getting started here at Scottsdale, and already the prices are pressuring upwards. And that's just a little taste of what's still to come. So stick around. The heavy metal is yet to arrive. We're here at Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auctions from Westworld in Scottsdale. I'm Bob Barsha with Mike Joy, Rick DeBrule, Tyler Hoover, and April Rose. Right now on the auction block, we have a 1968 Chevy C10 custom pickup. Yeah, I gotta love the nickname on this one. It's called Apocalypse, uh, built by Backyard Specialties in Santa Ana, California. And of course, like so many of them, it's got a brand new chassis underneath, in this case, a Roadster Shop spec chassis and a brand new 454 cubic inch engine under the hood that right now is pumping out 627 horsepower and it's made it to a four-speed transmission. You've got coilover suspension. You know, one of the things to point out in this being a 1968 spec truck versus a 1967 is the rear window. 1967 would have had a smaller rear window. Now, realizing you could do anything you want in the custom world, but in 1968, they decided, you know what? A little too small. We're going to go with bigger windows in these uh, C10 pickup trucks. Everything blacked out on this, not a trace of chrome or stainless trim anywhere. Even the wood in the bed is blacked out. And 150,000 takes it. Team effort. Have fun with it, folks. Now let's join April Rose. Hey, Bob, I'm in the pre-staging lanes right now with this beautiful 1966 Corvette. Now, someone hit all the options on this, but also a very rare big tank option. You can see right through the back window there. Usually it's all carpeted up, but you can see it in all its glory. Now, this is one of only 66 built with a 36 and a half gallon fuel tank, which loads right under the back window. Now, it was also optioned with the Kelsey Hayes 
knock off wheels and the side pipe exhaust so you can really hear that 427 big block V8, which was the first year it was offered. Beautiful restoration back to its original factory Milano red saddle tan interior. I mean, drive this for the week and race it on the weekend, Bob. Next April, the big tank Corvette, pure fuel stops. Speaking of Corvettes, now on the block is a 58 custom convertible. Well, just said hi to John Bradley up here on the on the block, who with Patrick Pogrant and his wife Jill just had a great family restoration business here in Phoenix and turned out incredible six-figure customs. Look at the clear acrylic on the hood masquerading for the washboard fake louvers. The candy apple red paint is a mile deep. So is the gold in the coves. That ivory leather interior. This must be the most beautiful 58 I've seen. Patrick Pogram passed away, John. However, now building cars in Glendale, not far from the original shop that Patrick was doing. And this is a perfect example. And once again, the question is, what is the most desirable? You know, there's 14 1958 Corvettes of one form or another crossing the block this week. This one rides on a GT Sport chassis by Morrison. Chrome four-leaf suspension. Strange nine-inch pause attraction rear end. The Hammer Falls. $160,000. Thank you very much, sir. Barrett Jackson, thank you very much. And out the door it goes. And rolling up a 79 Chevy K5 Blazer custom pickup truck known as Lolita, just like the book by Nabokov. Well, this one's been given a rally sport headlight treatment that I've never seen on this generation pickup. Uh, these Headlight doors move to expose the headlamps, and there's very little to see here under the hood. Everything kind of nicely hidden in plain sight, and a matte version of the gloss finish outside under hood. And this is another vehicle crossing the block this week here at Barrett Jackson that was selected to participate in the Barrett Jackson Cup. So it was one of the cars that was judged. And remember, just because you want to be in the Barrett Jackson Cup doesn't mean you get chosen. They only selected 47. I bet this looks just as pretty underneath as it does on top. As it rolls across our chassis cam, all of that matte finish. Uh, that matte ivory and silver is replicated underneath. Big three inch exhaust tubes. Full frame. <laughs> they have even painted the rear end housing to match this uh, deep dark cherry. Well, you want to look at it from the upside, uh, Rick, instead of at the bottom. There you go. I was going to say, you don't need a chassis cam to check out the suspension on this thing because all you have to do is lift this bed right here. Fully painted, fully finished. You can see all the rear suspension that's been set up for this thing. Uh, you can inspect it very easily. You don't have to crawl underneath it all. so many details that go from the front to the back on this for example inside the cab the wood finishing that they've got is actually designed to match the bed one hundred seventy thousand dollars and there was much joy coming up a 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS previously owned by IndyCar race winner Paul Tracy, who is here. Three point later, twin turbo, the works. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Our 1974 Ford Bronco custom SUV just sold for a quarter of a million dollars. Not that long ago, these vehicles, meaning earlier in the day, these vehicles were going for about 170. This is Super Saturday. Everything goes up. And here's a Ferrari that Tyler Hoover showed us earlier. It's a 430 Spider from 2007. Well, it's pretty cool, 430, but it also has just 2,274 miles. 
but I love looking at the front of this particular Ferrari. When Frank Stevenson was doing the design, he took what were a couple of small inlets on the front and expanded them out. Why did he do that? Because he said he wanted to go back and play to the, an homage to the 1961 Ferrari 156 that Phil Hill drove to the World Championship in 1961, the first American to win a championship. They call that the shark nose car. Interestingly, none of those cars exist today. They were all torn apart for parts by Ferrari to build other things. But I like how they've taken that design of the 1961 Ferrari and built it into 2007. Now the intakes on the rear quarter panels recall the Ferrari 250 and 275 prototypes that raced at Le Mans. So there's a lot of uh, homage going on here. What is not a tribute is the glass panel over the Ferrari 4 cam V8 and the challenge grill. And it has a new owner at $200,000 bid. Sold sticker goes on and we are going to Tyler. Here's a cool piece of Shelby history right here. 1968 GT500 KR for King of the Road. And the KRs had a whole host of upgrades, including the 428 engine. And you can see all this rubber around the air cleaner right here. And that was to make the hood a functional ram air. I'll close it now. And you can see air running through there and directly into the engine. Now this one's finished in lime gold. A lot of people repaint away from this color. I personally love it. You can see the 428 Cobra Jet badge and the KR stripes going down the side. Those Shelby wheels and the interior beautifully restored as well. Roll bar added with a three point harness just to add a little bit of a racing touch to this thing. And when you go to the back has those beautiful 68 taillights. Now the body on this thing looks absolutely flawless and the paint. There's a reason for that and it may ding this one a little bit. It did have its entire body replaced due to rust or damage. Um, some, at some point this car was driven and used hard and so they chose to put a new body on it. But it is a real deal Shelby KR. And that name carries value. No question about it. We see it year after year here at Barrett Jackson. Right now coming down the ramp a 71 Chevy Blazer custom SUV. Oh, beautifully done. This thing is so slammed. I didn't think it was going to make it off the block without high centering. All right, why is Craig Jackson hanging around this car? Well, very often when Craig wants to bid on a car, what he'll do is he'll leave his perch where the auctioneers are and come down front and start bidding. Well, right now, I think he's just kind of hanging out and taking a look at it. But, you know, with these customs, you have your choice. You can slam them to the ground or you can jack them up. Whichever way you'd prefer to go, that is bringing money. And this one is an interesting build because of the black and white. We'll call it the panda look. You know, black, they've taken all the chrome trim out here. They've made the window so it's flush, more of a modern connection to the window as opposed to having the chrome strips that would have surrounded it. $182,000. Just Craig, if he was bidding, didn't want it that much. But though a couple did, and they got it. Congratulations. Now we'll move on to lot 1321.1 of 55 Chevy Nomad Custom Wagon. Yeah, beautifully done. In fact, this took two years to build. It was done by Denny's Bowtie Restoration. Uh, originally, this body was built in Van Nuys. They had the Fisher Body Plant over in Van Nuys, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. And once upon a time, we used to talk about it. You did not want to customize something that was valuable. You know, you, this Nomad was a valuable body. Now, customizing doesn't hurt the value. In fact, it's gaining. Look at the price. We're right now bid at $250,000. That color, by the way, gray stone metallic. They've got four coats of that. And then they've got five coats of House of Color clear seal. Boy, it's just beautifully done. When you talk to a customizer, people who work on cars, you know, they'll talk about all the various parts that it takes to go into it, the engine, the chassis, all the reworking has to happen. But they always say, when you really get down to it, probably half of your time is going to go into the body. It's getting the body right, getting the paint right. There's a massive amount of time that it takes to pull it off. And you can see they've done a beautiful job at this point. 
it's interesting. This thing shot to $250,000, and that's where it stayed. To an internet bidder. That's what that gentleman pumping his fist is doing, watching the internet builds. That's a way that you could compare it, Jackson. A break coming up, and then we're back to Scottsdale. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Where the hits keep coming on the auction block. Right now we're going to Mike Joy. Well, Craig Jackson, we have worked and waited all week. No, we've worked and waited a year for today. And the numbers, even early on, are just jaw-dropping. They are. We didn't want to take any time last night to recap Friday. That was incredible. Friday yesterday felt like a Saturday. Today, the way we've come out of the gate is absolutely amazing. We had the cup, our first thing. When we go on History Channel, you're going to see the prices just climb. Stay tuned. We're going to make history today. Steve, how do you convince the owners of these high six and seven figure cars to bring them here to sell at no reserve? And that, that's the magic, Mike. Every car sells. We don't know who's going to own it. We don't know how much it's going to bring. And they also ask the question, how did they bring them at no reserve? And why do you have so many of this and so many of that? There's no one on the planet not very long ago that would think we'd be selling $300,000 pickups on Friday. Broncos, Blazers, the SUVs, it's like a grocery. You're stocking the shelves. You know what's popular. You've got to have a certain thing for certain people. You know these people want more, those people want less, so you have more on the shelf. It's, it's an art, it's a science, but it all collides with Barrett Jackson. And no reserve is the magic. Every car sells, and people know it, and they want to bid. Yeah, the bid stops here, and earlier today we crossed through $100 million in sales that for this week. Yeah, it's been incredible. The uh, bidders, we passed last night 6,158 bidders. So right now we're probably at 6,300 6, registered bidders. Unheard of. Last year was a record at 5,700. So there's a lot of demand out there. Great cars. The supercar salon today is going to be absolutely incredible. The Don Williams collection coming up. Fabulous cars from my mentor and our former partner. Stay tuned, don't go away. It's going to get better and better all day. Thank you both. All right. And thank you, Mike. 400,000. Your ears do not deceive you. This is the 1970 Boss 429 Mustang that we showed you for a break earlier. Now we're at 420 and still climbing. Yeah, we saw one of these sell yesterday for $400,000. This one's Grabber Blue. Boy, it got everybody's attention. Top sale of the day and the auction. You know, Steve Davis, whom we just heard from, puts the catalog together. And the joke used to be Steve would start with a blank sheet of paper and a number two pencil. And when the pencil got down to the nub, he knew he was getting to the end. So things have changed since then. It's got to be a two or three nub auction, given the size of the docket. So I saw Steve today. I said, OK, Steve, is this a two or three pencil docket? He, looked, he showed me a, a, a picture on his phone of seven number two pencil nubs. That's how big and complex putting this docket together has been. Now, here's a car April showed us earlier, a 1970 Plymouth Superbird. That's a tradition here. We have to honk the horn at least once, you know. Well, it's a Roadrunner Superbird, technically. The Superbird was the outgrowth of the Plymouth Roadrunner. Richard Petty defected to Ford in 1969 because Dodge was building the similar car, the Daytona, and Plymouth said, Richard, you're winning all the races. We're not going to build you a special car. So Richard went to Ford. In August of that year, the head of Plymouth came to Level Cross, North Carolina by himself. No assistance, no entourage. Richard, what will it take to get you back? He said, give me a nose and a wing. And they did. This is the result. Richard Petty and Pete Hamilton won three of the four super speedway races in 1970. With a car much like this, it was Petty Blue, not B5 Blue. This is just gorgeous. And it's one of three 
Superbirds that are crossing the block here at Vera Jackson this week. And while it looks almost identical to a Dodge Charger Daytona, it's not. The wing angle on the front, the nose angle on the front is different. The wing angle on the back is different. Plymouth decided they were going to do it their own way. And as a result, well, they had it just slightly different. But they did do something that they weren't able to do with the Dodge version. They were able to win Daytona. $260,000, another online bidder picks a winner. Wow. If you don't you know, believe what you're seeing, go to barrett-jackson.com and check out the prices on these cars. I mean, that it's just going to be red hot all day. We can't say it enough. Barrett-jackson.com. Check it out. You know, Bob, Pete Hamilton was the Roger Maris of NASCAR racing. He had one spectacular season racing as a teammate to Petty. As Rick said, he won the Daytona 500. He won both races at Talladega. Uh, but then he ended up with a great career as a short track driver and chassis builder. But it was that one shining season that made his mark. This is a 1950 Chevy 3100 custom pickup. Well, let's go back to what flavor do you want? I mean, we've seen so many of the uh, C10s, the 1967 through the 72 pickups rolling across the block, but there's also plenty of the earlier range. This is the beginning of the post-World War era. You know, after 1949, they started coming up with that new style because up until that point, they had all been pre-war styles that were just continuing on. This one's got a uh, LS3 engine under the hood, four-speed automatic transmission, Curry nine-inch rear end. Let's bring the camera around to the windshield. I'd like to show you something very unique I have not seen before. When these trucks were new, curved glass was hard to form and expensive to do in the automotive industry. So this car would have had two flat panels of windshield glass. Now it has a curved glass to fit in the original frame and a one-piece windshield. Just one of those beautiful details that hides in plain sight. And whereas we'll see many of the C10s, the K10s that'll get jacked up, generally with this generation of pickup truck when it's customized, it tends to be lower. $145,000, lots of smiles up there in the luxury lounge. And why not? Cafe Olay is the color. Now, <laughs> no, we can't get it in the building. No, we're not going to fire it up. This is a 1952 Beechcraft Model 18 airplane. It's sitting over at the Scottsdale Airport. That's where these pictures came from. And this is a very special movie prop, you might say. Well, yeah, if you've recently seen the movie Ford versus Ferrari, where, remember where Matt Damon is playing Carroll Shelby at a certain point as they're coming up to the debut of the 1965 Mustang. They're at an airport. And Carol Shelby being played by Matt Damon said, well, let me take the wheel. This is the airplane that he flies everybody in and scares the living daylights out of people. And this is only one of the many movie roles it's had over the years. It's officially a Beechcraft Model 18. Sometimes they call it the twin beach, you know, twin engine, low wing. It's got that tail wheel in the back. And of course, it was made right there where our good friend, Tyler Hoover hails from in Wichita, Kansas. You know, they built this thing over a very long period of time. I think they started them in the late 30s, built them almost into 1970, which at the time was a record. I think they built it for like 30, 32 years. So for one particular type of plane, it had a long run. And they made 9,000 of them. Are there movies that's appeared in? Amelia Earhart, The Final Flight, Terminal Velocity with Charlie Sheen, Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey, episodes of House, Spy Kids, of course, Ford versus Ferrari, and All the Pretty Horses. It's got the latest electronics, but a 
very period look. Talk about the ultimate resto mine. I believe that's the consigner in the plaid shirt down there. And it looks like the internet is busy. Well, they had more than 30 different versions of this plane that you could buy. $230,000 takes it, and in certain aviation circles, that is going to be considered a bargain. So, now here's another car with a Hollywood provenance. Lot 1326 is a 1999 Ferrari 360 Modena, once owned by Paul Walker of Fast and Furious fame. This includes the license plate and copy of the title in Walker's name. It has just been tuned up. Fresh oil change. The low coolant light is on. This one has the six-speed gated manual shifter, and that's the one you want. The F1 paddle shifter transmission was available, but you want to save the manuals. Beautiful car this is. Has the challenge grill in the back for extra engine cooling air exit. Just a beautiful car. And as opposed to the car that it succeeded, the F-355, you can do the belt change and the major service on this without having to drop the whole engine assembly. Of course, Modena, the name of the town where Ferrari hails from up in northern Italy. And if you ever get a chance to go there, right across the street, they have the uh, the test track, Fiorello, which is where they would test all their Ferraris and all their Ferrari race cars for a long time. And I mentioned a little bit earlier about how they took the front vents and widened them out to make it look like the shark nose. And this is what they started with in previous versions. Another advance over the 355 that preceded this is that car was suitable pretty much for drivers six feet and under. This cabin accommodates a much taller driver. I mentioned Fiorano, you know, one of the great things. Every now and then in the work of this business, you could do something cool. I got to do laps at Fiorano once. $130,000. Takes that Ferrari 360 away. And now here comes the first of a long selection of cars from the Frank Teague's collection. Some super muscle cars. This, a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda. Here's another one right here. He bought the, a run of the cars coming up here. He bought the best cars at Barrett Jackson. And we had a half a dozen or so of teams' cars here yesterday, and they were all looked better than new, as does this one. Uh, Plymouth Cuda from 1970 with the $1,000 option Hemi and a four-speed transmission restored to as new. First year for the E-Body. You know, Kuda was a little bit late, and uh, Chrysler was a little bit late in coming into the serious pony car world. I mean, yeah, they'd had the Barracuda for a number of years before this, but they didn't really launch into an all-out assault on performance until 1970. And unfortunately, 1970 was essentially the beginning of the end for that performance era, the high watermark for all the manufacturers. But they came to the table late, but they came in a big way, and everybody got the attention here. And by the way, when I talk about Barracuda and Cuda, you can buy a Barracuda or you can buy a Cuda. You see the back nameplate. This is exactly what it actually was officially called by Plymouth, the Cuda. And earlier in the week, we were talking about the corporate cousins, how this is very similar to a Challenger. Underneath, it shares an awful lot of parts. Body-wise, not so much. It shares the windshield, some of the side glass, but not much more beyond that. Although interior-wise, if you got the Rally Dash, whether it was a 1970 Plymouth Cuda or a 1970 Dodge Challenger, that Rally Dash was essentially the same. Correct Goodyear polyglass tires in F60 15s. 60 was the aspect ratio of the sidewall to the tread width, and they used a letter designation before adopting today's metric nomenclature. 
sold for $180,000 to that discriminating collector and his family. More to come from the Frank Teeks collection. But right now, we're going to go to break with a look out at the McGuire's staging lanes. As you can see, the party going on beyond. More dream rides lining up for their turn on the Barrett-Jackson block. Stay with us. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Under the big top, the dramatic TV lighting. There is a car Tyler showed us earlier, 68 Shelby GT 500 KR for King of the Road. Currently at 150,000 bid, and that's where the hammer drops. Congratulations to the new owner. And there are nothing but new owners here because this Barrett Jackson is the largest privately consigned no reserve auction in history. No reserve means no minimum bid that must be met before the consigner will release the car. They pay a little extra when they consign for that privilege, but there are no reserve bids here. When the hammer drops, the high bid gets the car. Deal done. Here's lot 1328.1, a 1970 old 442 W30 known as Demolition Man. Now we're seeing some uh, movie stars rolling across the block, or at least being sold here. Earlier we saw that airplane from Ford versus Ferrari. This is an old 442, a W30, a very important car in its own right, but this was used in the movie Demolition Man. Now you might remember the scene where Sylvester Stallone and Sandra Bullock, they come up, they blast through the floor of a futuristic Oldsmobile dealership, and then they go out and have a big old chase. This is the car that was actually used during the filming of that movie. So this was the one, and I always joke, you know, it's funny when you look at that, because they blast through the floor of a futuristic Oldsmobile dealership. Well, they got one thing really wrong. There were no futuristic Olds dealership because Oldsmobile has gone away. I'll never forget the scene in the Blues Brothers where they're crashing through the shopping mall. And I think John Belushi says to Dan Aykroyd, hey, look, the new Oldsmobiles are here. Yeah, that's the problem with trying to predict the future. It just never quite goes the way you expect. I go back to this is a pretty cool Oldsmobile in its own right. You know, a W30, it's a 442, 1970, high watermark, and it's got that movie provenance. And once again, that's a really great scene. If you haven't seen that movie, when Sandra Bullock and Wesley Snipe just crash through the floor going up, it's awesome. W30 is to Oldsmobile, much as Z28 is to Chevrolet. It was an option code, otherwise kind of undescribed, maybe to slide it past the GM executive brass, and it was the top of the line for the 442 performance package. $122,000 for that beautiful red 442 W30. Now here's April Rose once again. Hey, Bob, in the staging lanes with John Diagostino's 1958 Packard, but more importantly, Adam Ferrara from Top Gear. You've seen him all over your television set. Longtime friend of Barrett Jackson. Adam, I could totally see you sporting this ride. I like your vision. This, this is just beautiful. First of all, the paint job, Lavender Pearl, which is my dancing name. <laughs> they French the lights. It's got a 289 in it. There's a five-inch chop on it. Look at the interior, it's beautiful. They got suicide doors, and the interior is just gorgeous. A mother of pearl on the steering wheel. Look at the floor mats. That's absolutely beautiful, yeah. This almost looks like a bowling ball here. Everything has been customized just perfect. I love these two-tone seats. And Adam, what do you think about this lamb's wool interior carpet down here? That's an extra touch. That's lamb's wool? Do you know how many bald lambs are out there right now? You have to bid on this car. It's beautiful. You know what the name of the car is? What? Rita. Rita Hayworth. This is the Rita Hayworth. That's beautiful. Yes, I should do the hair flip. <laughs> I like it better on you. This is an absolutely epic ride. Now we're in the pre-staging lanes. Of course, you never know who you're going to run into out here, Adam. Great seeing you. Where else can we see you? Follow me on social media. April can't follow me because of the leg. 
Right, I did tear my ACL, but it's great because we have all these cars out here so I can go for a ride anytime yes. I need. Bob? That's April playing hurt. A now, snowboarder. Kneecapped her, Bob. Yeah, yeah, I know. Her first time skiing. What are you going to do? 1970 Chevelle SSLS6. Take it away. 454 M22 Rock Crusher Muncie transmission. 331 positive traction axle. Cranberry over medium red vinyl. Another Frank Teagues, all original restored muscle car. Yeah, LS6. This is the top of the food chain in 1970. This cranberry red, the color everybody loves. What it doesn't say on the car card is whether this is the original engine that this car would have been born with. So you have to assume it's not. That's probably the only thing that held the value back. $130,000 takes it. More smiles down there. Expect a party to break out because we got a party going here on the block. Welcome back under the main tent housing the showcase pavilion. All these fabulous cars, many of them with sold stickers on them now. There will be more and more as the day goes on. They go back into the pavilion from which their new owners can collect them, ship them home, drive them home, do whatever they want. It's their car. Now on the block, lot 1330 is a 1970 Mustang Boss 429. In its original Grabber Green, only 43 of the Boss 9s left the factory in Grabber Green. Scoop, spoilers, slats, and that dry deck semi-hemi 429 engine built for NASCAR homologation. Yeah, take it off the Ford assembly line, taken over to Carcraft where they did all the final work on this. $260,000 for that beauty. Another from the Frank Teeks collection. And there are more and more as we go along here. More than two dozen cars from that collection were consigned here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Now here comes something rather special. Lot 1330.1 is a 1969 Camaro Yanko COPO Copo. So that means it was specially ordered by Don Yanko, a longtime Corvette racer, then Corvair modifier, the Yanko Stinger, and then he turned his attention to Camaros and Chevelles that would sell in higher volume. This has all the authentication of its original build. Uh, Yanko's mechanic rescued the paperwork from the trash, and it continues with this car to this day. Highly mock documented, highly modified by a very respected Chevrolet racer and dealer. Yeah, and the thing to remember is that Don Yanko was a racer first, you know? He loved to race. That's how he got into building the specials, the Yanko Stinger, which was a Corvair, some of the other cars he got into. Then it became, okay, how can we race and have fun and make more money at the dealership? And that's where the central office production orders came about. Unfortunately, he died in a plane crash in 1987, not able to continue on with the legacy, but the Yanko name, when you see it on any vehicle, if it's there and it's original, it brings value. So the reason this car had to be copoed was your local Chevrolet dealer could not order a Camaro with a 427 cubic inch, 425 horse engine, and that's what this was. It also included the Yanko sports car conversion with a 140 mile an hour speedometer, a larger front sway bar, and 15 by seven rally wheels. Well, we're in good territory now. $300,000 the current bid. That'll be third highest of the day and fourth of the auction, and it sells at 300 large. Did you know that Dale Earnhardt's dream was to become the Don Yanko of this century for Chevrolet? And in late 2000, launched a series of Intimidator Camaros that would begin the culmination of that dream. So many of those what ifs had Dale Earnhardt Sr. 
survived that crash back in 2001. He once told me at the NASCAR banquet that he wanted to go race the 24 hours of Le Mans. Well, that's a story for another day. Here is a 71 Hemi Cuda from the Teague's collection. Well, the 71 Cudas are way rarer than the 70s. I think only 107 coupes like this one were built and seven convertibles. That was it. And adding to the value is down the side. Yeah, that Hemi engine is really important, but this billboard right here, this was really difficult to put on at the factory. After a while, they said, we're just not going to do it anymore. So if you've got an original billboard car, that adds to the value as well. Highly option car, super track back, light group, rally gauge cluster, uh, that white interior console, torque flight automatic transmission. And the color, don't call it plum crazy, Dodge did that, call it inviolate. Look at this number, $445,000 for 50. You're looking at the new top seller. Who'll be the last man standing or woman? This is ideal. Competing bidders. One of 107. How few are left and how few in this condition? Half a million dollars bid. And who was that bidder at the upper right? That was one Craig Jackson, who is now out of the competition. I thought we were at the end at $500,000. We're not done. No, there's still a couple of bidders who really want it. Tells you everything you need to know. Five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for that fabulous seventy-one Hemi Cuda from the Frank Teagues collection. Wow, inviolate. Love it. Now, coming up later on, how about a 2019 Porsche 911 Speedster? We've seen this car before this weekend. Five hundred two horsepower, zero to sixty in three point seven seconds. Very cool profile. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson. This is what the property looks like when the skies are partly cloudy, but today they have been crystal clear. The kind of blue that you'll only find in the American Southwest. It's been a spectacular week here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Today is the final day of our broadcast, though the auction goes through another day tomorrow. Last three cars across the block, and look at those numbers. The Hemi Cuda 525. Plymouth Superbird, one of our fantasy bid cars, 257,000, and a Mustang Boss 429, up in the $300,000 zone. And we're almost there now with this Shelby GT500. We're at 285, and the bidding is still open. The entire Frank Teague's collection of beautifully preserved and restored muscle cars have just brought tons of bidders to the auction block, and they keep raising their hand. 285 thousand dollars for that Shelby GT 500 beautiful shade of green way it goes up comes lot 1332.2 
69, Camaro, ZL1. Well, when you look at what brings value to a car, you look at multiple factors. You know, you look at the looks of the car. You look at the performance of the car, the desirability. And then you look at the rarity. And I got news for you. This 1969 Camaro ZL1 has all of that. It's got the performance. It's got the looks. And it's one of only 69 ZL1s produced back in 1969. So this car is accompanied by quite a lot of provenance. Uh, we have the original invoice, the uh, manufacturer's statement, the shipping order, and at Fred Gibbs Chevrolet, there in the Harp, Illinois, they were one of the primary dealers of these very limited cars. There's a letter from Fred Gibbs about this car and this VIN number verifying the car and its options as it originally came. Now this provenance, well, this is worth $270,000 because you want to see this to support the value of this car today and in the future. Yeah, we always say hang on to the paperwork or if it's not in the car, put it in the trunk as the case may be. In this case, the paperwork is so critical. And this one is a special one, the ZL1, that aluminum head engine. You know, this is a unique vehicle made during a unique time. Plenty of Z28s that came out of the Chevrolet world, but once again, only 69 ZL1s. Closing in on $400,000 now. Near the peak of the muscle car era, an extremely rare special order machine in exceptional restored condition. That rings the bell. $450,000 makes it the number two sale of the day at the auction. Another winner from the Frank Teague's connection. Here's Tyler. Well, the parade of winged warriors continues here in the staging lanes, and this 1970 Superbird is very special. Of course, they all have this big wing, and I'm not sure. April said uh, three Mike Joyce could sit on top. Maybe I'd love to see Mike try, but of course, they are reinforced all the way to the frame. What makes this one exceptional is other than the respray of the Alpine White, it is all original. So this is the original vinyl black top, and you go inside, and it's showing a little bit of wear, but it is the original interior. And all of, of all the Hemi Superbirds selling today, this is the only one with a Ford Speed manual. The rest of them are all automatics, which I think gives this one an extra little kick. And under the hood, of course, is that legendary 426 Hemi, one of 135. And this one is numbers matching, which is a very big deal. These 426 Hemis, they were raced and they weren't known for being too durable. So most of them were uh, not original. When did this become pick on Mike Joy? Weekend? Well, anyway, we've got another break coming up, but plenty more coming down the pike from the Frank Teague's collection and more. Stay with us here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Back in the showcase pavilion at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Cars are lined up. As you see, many have sold stickers on them. We go farther and farther into our Super Saturday coverage. We are now halfway through the Fantasy Bid Show brought to you by, God, by Dodge. Six of the 12 cars have now been tallied. Winner at this point, or leader, I should say. You haven't won anything yet, Johnny, but you're the leader of 1560 over Jaron. Kate, hanging in there for the distaff side. Congratulations to all on your perspicacity. Six more vehicles to go before we declare a winner here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Here's what the last three cars across the block did, including a 69 Camaro ZL1 that made $450,000. Right now, we've got a 65 Shelby Cobra 427 CSX 3096. Well, this is a continuation car, not one of the original run from 1965 to 67. 
Carroll Shelby one day opened his desk and say, hey, I've got a whole bunch of serial number plates here. Let's build some cars to put them on. And uh, the continuation car was born. This is uh, pretty faithful to the original 427 CSX. Well, and while it might not be as original and valuable as the first run of the Cobras, look at the price. We're closing in on $400,000. We see no shortage of replicas rolling across the block. But short of the $200,000 one we saw earlier this week that set that speed record, 232 miles an hour, this kind of money for this kind of car is only because it's built by Shelby. And while it says it's a 427, it's actually got a 468 cubic inch stroker engine, but once again, built by Carroll Shelby. $370,000 sends it to its new home. And rolling in behind is lot 1335, a 1964 Corvette 327, 365, big tank coupe. It's Roy Siner. This car is one of those 30 years. This is cars a 327, 365 horse air, which was the rarest engine option in 65. This car, there are less than a handful of these cars built. This car is an unrestored original car. It was in Corvette Sensuous American in 1984. 26 page article. Gets no better. Ah, yes. So why are these tankers or big tank Corvettes so rare? For endurance racing in the era before fuel cells came into use, you had to use a factory gas tank. Now it'd be okay if it was a factory optional gas tank. So in 64, Chevrolet built 38 Corvettes with the big tanks. Most of them were ordered to go racing. Others were ordered by people at their local Chevy dealer just because they wanted to do long tour distance touring without stopping so often. But these cars are rare. There is competition history with many of them, so they're highly prized. Yeah, and once again, it was just an option you could get from your dealership. Now, in the earlier years of Corvette, the big tank was a 24-gallon tank. When it went into the early 60s, they bumped that up to the 36-gallon tank. Because the idea being, for most people, once again, it was all about racing. How far could you go between pit stops? The big tank was option N03 on your order form. Second year for this Corvette body. The split window was gone, but when you talk about rarity, it's got exactly an intriguing collection of options. You know, you heard Roy Siner talking about the engine and how few of these 327 cubic inch, 365 horsepowers were built. Well, this one may have been headed for the racetrack. It has sintered metallic brake linings, drum brakes, remember, on the 64. $195,000 takes it away in that beautiful color. Now it's not the only one because here comes the one that April Rose showed us earlier. Lot 1336 is a 66, 427, 390 big tank. Well, this one perhaps needs the big tank for the road because it's powered by a 427, 390 horse engine and four speed. Now this is a 1966, two years later, and 66 tankers uh, were built. Milano Maroon over Saddle Tan is this one. And it was just a couple years later that they would eliminate this as an option. You weren't even able to order the big tank from the factory. and. And they simply decided they didn't need to. If uh, you were racing it, you didn't need to order it. This car doesn't have original drivetrain, restored by the best to be the best. Original wheels, factory side exhaust car, you can't beat it. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, even to the point, if you look in the very back here underneath the glass, you can see that they've got the original instructions, the stickers for you know how to jack up the car, and it says how uh, it's uh, equipped with a limited slip, slip differential, some warnings about how to change the tire. So it's got those original stickers attached to this as well. This car is a winner of the Zora Arcus Duntoff Mark of Excellence Award from the National Corvette Restorers Society. 
back to the point I was making why they dropped this as an option. They just discovered if racers were going to go racing, they didn't need a factory option to make a bigger tank. They were just going to put in their own. And besides, they needed fuel cells at a certain point in time to make it even safer. So there was no need for a factory big tank. And you realize how dangerous a factory big tank was. You know, back in those days, fires were not uncommon on a racetrack when there was an accident. 195 thousand dollars but that wasn't the last of the tankers because coming in behind is lot 1337 a 67 corvette this one a 327 350 and here's roy there is not another 67 big tank car in existence the second car is documented to have been destroyed one of two to start with you're looking at one of one today, and it's perfectly restored, has every award that you can get, 350 horse, air conditioned, great car. So with air conditioning, this one likely was not headed for the racetrack, but maybe for long distance touring. We don't know its full history, but we do know how it was born and with what options, because this car includes the original Corvette order, confirming all of the options matching to this vehicle identification number, including the N03 36 and a half gallon tank, one of two ever built, the only one to survive. And once again, desirability, rarity, all those things that you want in a car. It's a 1967, the last year. And boy, look at the number we're getting on this one. This, is, this car is also a recipient of the Zora Arcus Duntoff Award of Excellence for the National Corvette Restorers Society. Yeah, and they also point out it's got the original Corvette order copy that confirms the factory options, most specifically that big tank. You won't just be the only one in your block. You'll be the only one in the world with one of these 67 tankers. We're closing in on the number one sale of the day at this number. I think that bidder will go there if he has to. He looks committed. Didn't have to. $500,000 takes it. We have a break coming up, but coming up will be another very special Corvette. 327, 360, Z06, split window coupe, four-speed manual, positive traction, all sorts of goodies. Stay with us. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. There, center stage on the auction block is a 69 Ford Bronco custom SUV, and we're at 200,000 and counting. Boy, it doesn't take long to get there on Saturday, does it? You know, earlier in the week, the slowly but surely they would rock up there. Now we got Craig talking about this car. Right here, you get a wonderful Bronco, very custom four door, hand built. Five, ten. Yeah, these days, not only can you buy a recreation body from a first generation Bronco, but you can buy a brand new four door, a car that was not built back during the first generation, a custom body that you could put on these. So it really goes back to now, okay, not only do you have the custom aspect, but you've lengthened it. You can have more fun with it. By the way, the nickname for this one is. Anaconda, full rotisserie restored, fully handcrafted, all metal body. And once again, you can buy the parts or you can rework the parts. Although, to be honest with you, even if you're buying some of these parts, there's some work that has to go into it. It's got a Roush sticker on the back, so it's got a Roush motor underneath. And it will soon have a sold sticker with $220,000 written on it. Congratulations, sir. Now here comes another of our fantasy bid cars. This will be the seventh, I believe. Lot 13. Oh, excuse me. This is 1338. This is John D'Agostino's 58 Packard Custom Sportster known as Rita. We saw this outside with April. 
What a beautiful lead sled. I could see this on the cover of Carcraft in about 1959 or 60 or somewhere in that era. Suicide doors, the hood comes up, all that gleaming chrome under hood and all around. What a beautiful timepiece this is. Yeah, take a look at the manifold in the engine block. It's painted essentially the same color as the exterior. What a nice little fun thing they did, that Packard air cleaner right there. Boy, and I love the fact that they haven't just stuck a massive crate engine in there. Where it was on show. You know, the work, the metal work, the creativity, the hours that went into this, this is an iconic car right here under the money. 57 Chevy dashboard. The uh, trunk is fully finished in kind of a, in lamb's wool and diamond stitch tufted. Oh my gosh. In fact, every panel on this car has been stretched or modified. And then this gleaming amethyst or purplish pearl paint with ghost pinstripes and a speedster style windshield. This all shaved of handles and ornamentation. This is unbelievable. Lavender pearl is the name of the color. And I love the subtleties they've got. This little chrome section right here, a little bit of pinstriping in the back, some very small things that make this add up to be even more. And you know, you gotta think, you know, this is a Packard from the waning days of Packard. It was on its last breath when, you know, 1958 rolled around. To imagine that it would have looked this spectacular this many decades later is pretty amazing. Maybe if Packard had built this, they'd still be in business. But I love this fact that this is really an old school build and in many ways it's designed to look like it would have done when it was in 1960 or in the late 50s when they were doing that, you know, nip and tuck, tuck diamond tucked interior, that uh, nail head grill, all kinds of fun touches. I saw a 57 Chevrolet Dash repurposed and what kind of looks like a 57 Chevy rear bumper, but so much to, to look at and enjoy here. Uh, that bitter assistant worked so hard, but they didn't get it. $155,000 takes it to its new owner, and we're going to hear from April. I found a car Led Zeppelin would actually love. Now, the name is Cashmere, which is the color, which is also borrowed from Bentley. It's a 1957 Continental Mark II. Now, pretty much the only thing that's stock is this grill. Everything else has been reworked. The bumpers have been tucked, headlights recessed in. Really, really look at that color in the Arizona sun. It is just gleaming. Custom side mirrors. And check out these door handles recessed in. I mean, how long does something like this take? The attention to detail is spectacular. You got one off billet wheels here. And of course, the faux tire in the back and the exhaust comes right out of the bumper. Now, this one's power comes from a Ford 5.0 Coyote with EFI paired with a four-speed automatic transmission. And now the frame, it's been updated by being boxed in to make it stronger. I want you to take a look inside because it is so, so neat. Really beautiful two-tone leather with a turned metal dash. And check out that custom wheel. Just so many decisions go in to a custom build like this. I mean, it boggles my mind how you finally come up with this beautiful product, this beautiful car like this. And man, I would love to drive this across the block right now, Bob. Yeah, you'd look good in that, April. I look forward to it. And right now on stage is lot 1338.1, a 58 Corvette custom convertible, and we're at $400,000. And that's where it sells. A lot of celebrating up there in the skyboxes. Okay, now we're going to begin a very special collection of cars here at Barrett Jackson, the Don Williams Collection, beginning with a 1940 LaSalle 52 Special Convertible. Well, General Motors introduced the LaSalle as kind of a less expensive version of Cadillac. And the brand was around for a few years, had a very distinctive look with that vertical grill. And I don't think I've ever seen one restored to this level.
There's a Pennsylvania inspection sticker here from July 10th of 1940. And uh, in this era of LaSalle, they were looking more and more Cadillac. At the beginning, they tried to differentiate themselves between Cadillac and LaSalle. And as you mentioned, Mike, the fact that LaSalle was the entry-level Cadillac. But at this point in time, they were thinking the attitude, you know what, if we're going to charge more, we've got to look a little better. That's exactly what they were doing. And they are going to be witness to the last few cars of Don's collection. This is going to be an honor. You can't imagine the quality of these cars coming up, but this car came from the Don Williams collection. It's way under the money. We should be looking at twice what we're bidding on it right now. Please pay attention, folks. Two ninety-five. Craig Jackson has just presented bidder pass number one to Don Williams' wife, Janet. Uh, Don wore that proudly here at every Barrett-Jackson auction. And it was hard for him to escape attention because every time he'd walk by, people would do a head swivel. Nobody else has ever had bitter pass number one. And now it stays in the Williams family. That LaSalle sells for $92,000 to a man whose shirt pretty much matches it, I think. Now here come the real heavy hitters, beginning with a 1940 Cadillac Series 75 town car. So this is uh, the start of the collection of Don Williams. Uh, I did a lot of pieces on these cars. Don was, uh, uh, we're going to do a little piece later as the 540K rolls up, but he had impeccable taste. He bought the best, as he said a lot of times when I'd come up here, he goes, I'm buying the restoration because he goes, I know what it takes restoring these cars. When you look at the cars Don has, they're perfect. They come out of the Don Williams collection that sat at the Black Hawk Museum. Buy with confidence. He had great taste, best cars. It's going to have a new owner. All right, hey, not, 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 and you can hear Craig's voice break because Don Williams was such a mentor to Craig Jackson and such an important part of this auction and this auction company. And once again, Don Williams knew his stuff, knew his cars. When it comes out of his collection, it's like having a guarantee that it is right. You know, back in 1940, you could get a base Cadillac. It would cost you about 2100 bucks or so. You want one of these things, these Series 75 town cars? It was over $5,000, more than double what you were going to pay for a Cadillac if you were just getting the entry-level model, which was still a pretty nice car. And that was pretty close to CEO salary money in those days. This car is just incredibly gorgeous. This soft blue color, the paint is flawless. The dual side mounts, uh, the, that is not wood on the dash, that is steel, but it is done as a faux wood burl. Incredible. Once again, pre-war styling, they uh, moved these things to be a little bit closer. Last year for this big V grill, they were starting to go into a much flatter look in 1941. Then was going to continue into the post-war years for just a little bit. But last year for this really sharp-looking grill up front. Only 53 of these were built, and this one was built for Harris Lasky, and his initials, HL, are on the uh, rear side doors here. So this is a car that he did not drive, but was driven in. We've talked a little bit about how the uh, Cadillac crest has changed over time. The current version of the Cadillac crest doesn't show any of them or lets the birds that we see here. Now it's just bars of color and it's wider. And the hammer falls at $147,000 for that Cadillac Series 75 town car. 
Now here comes a 1920 Packard Twin Six transformable town car. Well, Henry Joy, a distant relative, was kind of busy in 1920. He was the president of the Packard Motor Car Company, and he was also the head of the Lincoln Highway Association, charged with Carl Fisher and his partners with building America's first cross-country highway, the Lincoln Highway, that began at Times Square in New York and ended in Lincoln Park above the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. All the U.S. automakers were involved in the creation of Lincoln Highway except one, Henry Ford. Ford believed that building highways should be infrastructure, it should be government work and not funded by automobile and tire companies. Well, the Lincoln Highway was first, and pretty soon the U.S. highway system was born. Well, also, this Packard has a really interesting history. It was originally owned by a gentleman by the name of Atwater Kent. Atwater Kent made a fortune building radios. At one point, he was the largest radio producer in the world. He also did something really significant. He was the inventor of the coil that you use in automobiles to start them. So this was a car that, you know, a man who was one of the richest people in America, one of the biggest industrialists, building some modern technology of the day, chose to drive around in. And why do we call the luggage compartment in back of our cars today a trunk? Because these steamer trunks mounted on racks are what they had back in the day. So we still use the term trunk. $100,000 takes that Packard town car. Now here comes lot 1339.2. Also a Packard, a 1933 Standard 8 Coupe Roadster. Look at this beautiful radiator shell with what is described as the coffin top. That is a signature Packard item, as is the goddess of speed, disparagingly called the donut chaser by non-Packard fans. I can't imagine a more luxurious car in the 1930s than what we see right here. And look at the lighting. I mean, you've got these big, massive headlights that are mounted off to the side, as they would be for quite some time. Then we've got driving lights down below. And if you come over here, you've got a spotlight that the driver can point to wherever he wants to go. It's just beautifully detailed on just about every level up front. And once again, this is from the Don Williams collection, a man who knew his cars, knew his Packards, knew his pre-war classics, and knew how to buy them right. Now this car has leaf springs in the front end, something we'd never see today. One on each side, running longitudinally, and lever shocks. 320 horsepower, I think it's only got, a, pardon me, 320 cubic inches, I think it only has about 120 horsepower. And if you come over here, you'll see a little door and this door right here is for a storage compartment. You can call it golf bag uh, case if you want, but in reality, you can stick whatever you want into there because the problem here was you had no trunk. Well, sure you do. You have it out here hanging off the rear bumper on this folding rack. The trunk has evolved from the leather-covered trunk that we saw earlier, but still, this one with its handles can be lifted up and removed and taken into the hotel by the porters. So today, our cars have a trunk, unless you have a Porsche Boxster or similar, where you also have a frunk or a trunk in the front. Yep, Porsche people call them frunks. Well, and now with electric cars, you have even more frunkage. About a decade earlier, Packer, Packard had moved to the concept of planned obsolescence that we've known for so many years from GM. The idea being, that let's come up with something different every year. And by 1933, it was a lot different than the 1923 that had come just a decade before. Less than 4,000 miles on this beautiful restoration of a 120 horsepower 1933 Packard 8. And it sells at $275,000. That's the last of the Don Williams cars we'll see for right now. More to come later. Right now, we're going to Tyler.
I'm with lot 1371.1, a 1937 Mercedes 540K Roadster, also from the Don Williams collection coming soon. And with the Blueprint Engine Cam, let's take a look under the hood at this legendary engine. The 540K is beautiful and absolutely massive. 5.4 liters straight eight, and the K means compressor in German or supercharged, and that's this right here. So the air intake comes down to the supercharger, feeds it right into the carburetor here, and that goes into the intake, and the exhaust is actually on top, dual exhaust here coming down the side. So this, this is actually really hot coming out. Total horsepower 180, doesn't sound like that much, but the torque was over 300. So in 1937, this was capable of over 100 miles an hour, which is crazy. That'd be like 250 miles per hour today. And you can see it's this one-off gorgeous body. Oh my goodness. Yeah, mostly in black when they were new, but I really like it here in red. 540K special touring car. Another break coming up. We'll be back for more from Scottsdale. We are back inside the tented areas of the Barrett-Jackson auction in Scottsdale. The entire auction inventory is under tent. And meanwhile, on stage, we just saw a 1972 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom built for Captain Wild Bill of the TV show The Deadliest Catch sell for $300,000 to that masked man. Now rolling up a 63 Corvette Custom Split Window Coupe. Yeah, Split Windows, you know, you can debate about whether it's the best mid-year Corvette, but since it was only built for a single year where they have that split window down the back, it is essentially the rarest of the coupe bodies. You know, when you go all the way to the back and you see that stinger line that goes all the way down, this is the one that Bill Mitchell loves so much and Dora Arcus Duntoff did not like. And boy, there was a big battle that first year as to whether they were gonna continue that. But because of the rarity for the longest time, we never saw people customizing these. Well, those days are gone. Taking a split window, putting in something special, it is becoming the norm. Yes, absolutely. They're regularly selling for well over what a stock 63 split window, especially one without fuel injection, as you can see here, $410,000. And this one now, much more powerful engine, supercharged LT4, it looks like, under the hood, and custom chassis, beautiful. Yeah, and solid money. I mean, we're up over $400,000. You know, once there was a time when you didn't customize anything and make more money. Now it happens all the time. $435,000 takes it. That's a tough crowd up there on the block. They know what they want, they're going for it. Okay, coming up next, the 2012 Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG Coupe. Well, I was taking a look at this one yesterday, I called it the second coming of the Gullwing, and there's actually one Mercedes Gullwing in between, but it never made production after the original 50s 300 SL. But these are amazing machines. You see that 6.2 liter V8 under the hood that they label as a 6.3 for the classic touch, 563 horsepower. And it's set very far back behind the front wheels. But like the original Gullwing on these, also the doors do go up. Let me show you here. Yeah, it's interesting to think that uh, when Mercedes initially designed those Gullwing doors, it really wasn't because they wanted to set kind of some kind of style trend, which they ultimately did. It was because they wanted to keep things lighter, and it was easier and lighter to pin them at the top than it was to have the big latching mechanisms off to the side. Plus, for, remember, the original Gullwing was a race car. It's quicker and easier to get in that way. But now, well, we think of Gullwings as one of the ultimate styling touches. And I love the fact that they also went back to the original three. 300 style grill as well. Oh yes, absolutely, but amazing technology underneath. Dual clutch mounted in the back, so performance unreal. $210,000 sends it to that gentleman, or wherever he designates. He's now the most popular guy on his road. 
And that sale goes to Barrett-Jackson.com in the inventory column. Check it out. All your questions about Barrett Jackson activities all over the collector car world are at Barrett-Jackson.com. Here's a 65 Chevy Corvette Custom. Yeah, in this case, underneath that hood is an LS9 engine. You know, we see LS3s, everything in terms of the LS packages, and it just gets get bigger and bigger and better and better. Look at the plenum, the way it's all designed, the supercharger up front, pumping out massive amounts of horsepower. It's on, built on an SR111 tube chassis, not a box chassis. And of course, those side pipes custom on the side. You know, this may look very much like an original 1965 Corvette. But boy, I guarantee you, there isn't very much that's left of that original car. Interesting touch that they painted the side pipes, or at least the covers for them, to match the car. And on that custom chassis, they bolted a lot of C6 Corvette components on it as well. Cool 66 big block hood as well. $245,000 to the man in the colorful shirt. Now coming up is a 67 Chevy Corvette Custom Convertible completed by Jeff Hayes Customs. 540 horsepower LS3 engine, automatic transmission, and more. Wait till you see it. Welcome back. The view from the Muscle Lounge down onto the bitter floor and up ahead to the stage. Crowded with people now because there is a very special car on the block. It's a 1966 Superformance GT40 Mark II Ken Miles Special Edition. And Aaron Shelby is up on the block talking about it right now. Quick, no, just people must understand that that car is P. Uh, 21, oh shit, I've gone, gone blank, the big 2115, which is the number that the original car raced with 1015. So this is really something special. So that was a gentleman from Superformance. Superformance being a South African company that builds replicas of these. And this one is done to look just like the car that Ken Miles and Lloyd Ruby won the Daytona 24 hours with to start that great year. And you'll notice this red portion right here and these red things right here. This is not about design. This is all about figuring out which car is going by you at the time. Because at the same time that this car was racing, Dan Gurney had his on the track, and they, those had blue, so they could tell the difference between them. And it sells for $270,000. Of course, Ken Miles and Lloyd Ruby should have won the Le Mans 24 Hours that same year, which would have been historic. Now we're moving on to a 1958 Corvette Custom Convertible. Another fantasy bid vehicle. What did you think this car would sell for? Yeah, it's a beautiful custom with a modern LT1 engine under the hood, 460 horsepower, and sky blue riding on a custom chassis. Of course, in 1958, fuel ejection was available as an option. Since it has a fuel injected V8, they added it on the fender as well to give it that perfect vintage touch. You can see a power ram closing the hood right now, so you can open and close it at the click of a button. Blue interior as well. Looking stock, but gives you more room to be able to sit down. If you're taller, trying to fit in a stock 58 Corvette, you probably hit the steering wheel and stick out looking like Big Bird. With these modern resto mods and customs, much easier to get in and out of and be comfortable. According to the consigner, they've only put 150 miles on it since it was built. That's an important 150 miles. You gotta make sure everything works right, doesn't uh, leak, doesn't fall apart. $500,000, wow. That is very cool indeed. Congratulations to the new owner. 
That ties for second of the day and second of the auction. And both of those $500,000 cars are Corvettes. Here's a car we previewed earlier for you. 2019 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. And up on the block, Paul Tracy, IndyCar legend, Beautiful who is car. on the provenance. If anybody knows Porsche, you know Porsche, they are the best handling car on the road. There you have it from the man that knows, 225. That's a, that's a stout number for an incredible car. Let's get her gone. Well, in fact, Paul Tracy uh, lives here in the Valley of the Sun in North Scottsdale. He's been here for quite a while, and, you know, he didn't race very many Porsches in his lifetime, but uh, he spent most of his time in Indy cars and just most recently in that SRX series, having a lot of fun breaking things. Uh, this one, a 2019 911 GT2 RS. And this is, may still be the fastest production Porsche ever. There's no GT2 RS in the current generation. Set the rep record on the Nürburgring. New MSRP with the Wysak package would have been around $350,000, which we're approaching right now. Yeah, the question is, what car can you buy and then make money on? You know, we're at $350,000 right now, still moving. Well, this is hard to get. Of course, you had to be someone special in the Porsche books to be able to order one and buy one. No back seat on these, a full roll bar. This is a race car for the street. PDK transmission. How to drive the car around the race. Good, I'll bring my GT my, Tour RS out my, too. My, uh, my time is a little bit less valuable than yours, but. We'll, we'll see where we can get this thing to. Let's go. Let's do it. Well, that's not bad. Not only do you get a Porsche, but you get a lesson in how to drive it from an IndyCar champion. Boy, what a great opportunity to buy a special car and spend some time with a very famous race car driver in the Indy world. Well, I know Craig likes to whip a lot of his cars around Apex. It pecks the track around here. It's probably where they've rubbed elbows before. Perfect car to go out and race on the track. $375,000 takes it. It's a neat bit of provenance from the ownership chain, I must say. That gentleman's going to learn a whole lot if he goes out there with Paul Tracy as his instructor. Here's a car Tyler showed us earlier, 1970 Plymouth Hemi, Hemi Superbird. Yeah, so I was drilling over this thing earlier, and other than the repaint, it is a very much a survivor with that numbers matching 426 Hemi, one of 135, and the original vinyl top, original interior, the homologation special winged warrior. Yeah, let's work our way around to the back. I mean, you got that big nose up front. That's all about, you know, seeing is how aerodynamic you can get the big wing. And then when you look in the trunk, look at these special supports that are underneath the wing designed to give it more structure and more strength. And, you know, there was a talk that this was designed to meet certain specs so the trunk could open. It was just blind dumb luck. They just happen to have the right height. Yes, the, it's the Roadrunner Superbird, uh, as it says on the wing end plates. An outgrowth of the Roadrunner made to lure Richard Petty back to Plymouth, which it did. And these cars were very successful on the super speedways, much more so than they were in the showrooms. In some places, these were a tough sell. So that's a wrap at our four hours of live coverage here on FYI. But if you're craving more from Super Saturday, there's still six hours to come on the History Channel. Stunning supercars, killer customs, breathtaking classics, you name it, we'll have it. So be sure to stay with us. For now, for Mike Joy, Rick DeBruel, Tyler Hoover, and April Rose, I'm Bob Barsha. Thanks for coming along for the ride, and we'll see you over on the History Channel. It's a rite of passage. Every January, gearheads from around the world flock to Scottsdale, Arizona to kick off a new year of car gazing. 
at the biggest, baddest car show on the planet, Barrett Jackson. Cars as far as the eye can see, European exotics, and American muscle, supercars, and other stars, chrome, and customs, hot rods, and horsepower. This is the center of the collector car world. It's Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, and it's coming to you live right now on the History Channel. It's the one day that car lovers everywhere do not want to miss. The Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction from Scottsdale, Arizona on Saturday, Super Saturday, with all the very finest cars roll across the block and find new homes. I'm Bob Varsha, joining Mike Joy, Rick DeBrule, Tyler Hoover, and April Rose. Right now on the block, we're at $390,000 bid on a 72 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom SUV. Have you ever seen one for $400,000? Well, you have now. Gloss black, flat black side, supercharged 6.2 liter V8. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is wild. And the beat goes on. That's just an example right off the bat of what we're going to see over our next six hours here on the History Channel. So thanks for joining us. Settle in, grab a beverage, live your car dreams. Here's lot 1353, a 1963 Corvette Custom Split Window Coupe. Now remember this name, Jeff Hayes Customs, because later today we'll have a 67 Stingray Roadster that is a brand new build that is going to break the bank. This is one of his cars, 63 split window Stingray Coupe, restored and modified to an incredible standard. Yeah, there are Corvette restorations, and then there's Jeff Hayes cars, and it's all in a whole new generation. This particular one, interesting enough, was built for and bought by the owner of the Bomba Sock Company. My wife, huge fan of their socks, wears them all the time, so, you know, who knows what may be laying in the trunk of this thing. But once again, a 63 split window, that LS3 V8 engine, 6.2 liter, not a massive lump of weight in the front, but everything about this is better and better and better the new look at the interior those big bucket seats and that red leather boy this is this is a piece of art this isn't just a, a piece of machinery Willwood disc brakes all the way around the 63 came with drum brakes originally supercharged engine gorgeous inside 18-inch wheels up front, 20-inch wheels in the back, $360,000 the current bid. Greg Jackson is coming up to take a look at it. You heard the auctioneer, $365,000. Fist bump, fist bump. This bump now. No, you won't get it. Here's April. Hey, Bob, right now I am in the pre staging lanes. Just loving life. This is where everyone loves to hang out and check out these beautiful cars, like this 1938 Packard 12 Torpedo Cabriolet. I mean, look at this hood ornament. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful, so stunning? Of course, this massive grill with the pod headlights, beautiful sculpted fenders here, the spare tire with the mirror on top. And take a look in this driver's area. I mean, what, you gotta be maybe 100 pounds to fit in there. Not a lot of room for the driver. Beautiful burled wood dash. But you know what, it's all about the passengers in these now. Take a look inside. This is just spectacular. Look at these doors inside pockets with the burled wood and just 
Oh my gosh, that furniture, it looks like furniture. It's not even to be for a car, that would be in a mansion. Absolutely stunning. It's got a clock up here. And of course, if you're pissed off at the driver, you just roll the window up and there's no more interaction. This protects you from the weather. The driver, not so much. And keep on coming back. There's more absolutely beautiful trunk there for all of your things. Now the power comes from a 473 12 cylinder motor with three speed automatic transmission. Now back in the day of course the elite they would take their cars to coach builders to have them built to their taste and this back section actually comes from 1930 Renault which is why it looks so different. I mean even over 80 years ago people wanted everything custom. Bob. No question April a car was not just a mode of transportation. Back in the early years, it was a status symbol and a whole lot more. Now we are at $345,000 bid on a 2018 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Yes, not just a GT2, but an RS. Not just an RS, but a YSAC package with all of this exposed carbon fiber. This is a race car with turn signals. Although the consigner says it was never raced, which is comforting. $347,000. Enjoy it, sir. Now, yesterday, if you were following our coverage on FYI or on the History Channel, you saw Mike Joy preview this car, a 55 Porsche 356 Speedster. So how did the Speedster come to be? U.S. Porsche importer Max Hoffman told Porsche, your 356 Cabriolet is too expensive. It costs as much as a new Cadillac. I want you to take everything out of it that doesn't make it go fast and build it so we can sell it for $3,000, a grand less than the regular Cabriolet. So they took out things like the roll up and down windows. Uh, they shortened the windshield, Speedster hump, pull the body a little bit, and suddenly, the engineers realized they were saving weight as well as money. So Hoffman got his wish. The Speedster sold for under three grand, and a lot of them went straight to the racetrack. This one's 55 horsepower, 1500, now has a 1600 cc engine with 80 horsepower on board. And uh, seems to me that 15 years later, wouldn't they do that same thing with the Roadrunner, the same basic concept? Hey, what if we maybe we can strip it down and meet an actual market that exists? Second year for this, and they had a solid four years running. They make a massive number of it, but enough that they knew that they had what they needed. You got to remember, at this point in the mid 1950s, Porsche is really still trying to establish itself as a solid car company as well as a racing company. The 550 Spider did a great job racing, but this put racing cars, an approachable, obtainable racing car in the people's hands. And it sells at $240,000. Now remember that year, 1955, and the Speedster, because rolling in behind it is another Speedster from 2019. Well, Porsche revived the Speedster concept a couple of times. Not so much to go to the racetrack, and certainly not to sell at a lower price. This has the front fascia of a GT3, and it has the normally aspirated four-liter six-cylinder that revs to 9,000 RPM, also from the GT3. Here are the Speedster humps. Beautifully optioned car, a lot of carbon fiber, and I want to show you the most valuable part on this car. It's right here. It's this serial number plate, and note that this is one of only 1,948 built. If you can acquire a Porsche that is one of, designated on the serial number plate, you will make bank. And that's where we are right now. Absolutely. I mean, the engine back there is going to rev to 9,000 RPM. It's going to push out 502 horsepower, all that performance coming out of the back. Of course, you got to remember, figure out how to hang on to it. You can get a little tail heavy at times, but boy, with that uh, lower center of gravity because of the weight they've lost up on the top, this is a great car for performance. Upper right of your screen, the entire phone bank is occupied. Looks like the woman in the distance there has her hand in the air. She must have the lead bid right now. 
three colleagues next to her. I'm sure the internet boys and girls are working hard. And you see two bidders on the floor involved. This could go on for a while. And we are at $475,000, $500,000. Loaded with carbon fiber accents, the lightweight bucket seats with contrasting stitching. Wow. Sold for $500,000, tied for third of the day and the auction. We've got a break coming up, but those kinds of moments are going to go on and on and on into the evening to midnight Eastern time here on the History Channel. So stay with us for every minute of Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Back in Scottsdale, where moments ago, a new high. This 1957 Continental Mark II Custom, called Cashmere, came across the block, and the bidding started and went up and up and up till it settled at $650,000, a new high for the auction. I'm going to guess that's also probably a new world record for a Continental from that era. No doubt. Here's lot 1361, a 61 Corvette custom convertible. Boy, gleaming in silver with white contrasting coves and a red interior. 1961, first year for the cam tail on the uh, Corvettes, named for Wunderbald Cam, the noted aerodynamic, German aerodynamicist. Red leather interior, this is very much a full resto mod. And though the dash binnacle there for the instruments is the same as 1963, or rather 62, everything else here has been changed. The metal flake and the paint is miles deep. Gorgeous build. Now the binnacles may look the same, but the gauges under them are completely new on pretty much every level. By the way, you know, we always just called this the ducktail back here. Well, wouldn't it rise up like a duck's tail? LT4, 6.2 liter engine under the hood, 650 horsepower. At $250,000 to take it home. Plus your buyer's premium of 10% and all applicable taxes and fees, depending on where you're going to register. Hey, Bob, what Cam theorized with this tail was instead of the tail of the car coming all the way to a point, they could chop it back, bologna slice it, if you will, at an angle and still get the same kind of aerodynamic efficiency. Look at the Cobra Daytona Coupe, for example, and certain racing Ferraris, as, long as, the, as well as the 61 to 67 Corvette. It's exactly where Peter Brock got the inspiration for the Cam tail on the Daytona Coupe. Moving on, this is lot 1363. We showed it to you earlier. It's a 63 Corvette, 327, 360, Z06 split window coupe. Today, we see a lot of Z06 optioned high performance Corvettes. This is where that option code came from, 1963. You got the 360 horsepower Rochester fuel injected engine, the four speed manual transmission, positive traction rear end, heavy duty shocks, dual circuit brake master cylinder, vacuum power booster, and a heavy duty front sway bar. That was the Z06 package, and less than 200 units were made in 1963. Well, ultimately, it was near the end of the line because they discovered they could get more horsepower out of a carburetor with less headache. A lot of the mechanics out there did not want to work on the fuel injection systems. People would buy them and had a hard time getting repaired. Carburetors, well, everybody understood that. So even though it was a great way to get horse, or get the horsepower, in years later, of course, they would go to nothing but fuel injection. At this point in time, it was more headache, so they just swapped back and eventually moved back to carburetors. Originally sold in Gainesville, Florida, this car refinished in its original color of Sebring Silver. So 
$300,000 takes that beautiful Corvette away. Plenty more to come, including this beauty. Tyler Hoover talked about it earlier in the day. It's a 1937 Mercedes-Benz 540K Special Roadster, K meaning supercharged and just beautiful. Welcome back. This is a very special Shelby GT350 from 1965. Delivered new in Albany, New York. Owned by Hugh Westlake, who raced it at Lebanon Valley Dragway. Sold to Austin Craig, co-founder of the Shelby Club. Then to Dale Phelan and Longmeadow Mass, a vintage racer and craftsman truck team owner. It's had several owners since. Fully documented history and provenance of the car they call the Triple Nickel because its serial number is 555. And what's interesting about this car is they didn't race it, but they used it as a pit car during races. Fancy stuff, and $475,000 takes it to its new home. And that slots right into number six of the auction in terms of high sales. Now here's a 1956 Ford F600 custom pickup. Last year, the Barrett Jackson Cup. This, this thing is absolutely, absolutely spectacular. Thousands of hours went into the build. Pay attention to this thing because the more you look, the better it is. Absolutely flawless. Ever think you'd see one of these done with a modern road racing style splitter? I never did. But everything here is in this body color battleship gray. This one's been dropped to within two inches of the pavement and stretched. It's a crew cab. How about that? We had no shortage of F1s, F100s, F150s that we see here at the auction, but this is an F600. And what I love are the suicide doors that they've got here. See how they can see how they open. We have to open the front one first, then we can get into the back. Just enough leg room so that the people in the back seat can uh, properly be inside. And I love the wood inserts in the door with the leather down below. And then go take a look at the bed and what they've done. It's not just your standard, you know, let's throw some slats in the back. They've curved that piece, set it in, and moved the body around it. Our buddy Steve Mignante is recuperating. Hope he's back with us soon. He loves the art of the exhaust pipe, and I've never seen them done like this, sticking out uh, from the fenders below the taillights on an F-Series pickup. Wow, what a build. And going back, you know, Steve Davis, when he was up on the auction block talking about things, talking about all the details, and look how this has just been slightly concave there. Normally it'd be at an angle, and, you know, they'd be flat across there. This has been properly smooth all the way across. 500,000 takes it. It's got to be, and I'm checking, the highest price we've seen for a custom truck at the auction. Wild. And you'll find all the information about what sold for how much at barrett-jackson.com. And check out the rest of this year's auction schedule. We'd love to see you. Come up and say hi at Palm Beach back here in the fall in Scottsdale or wherever. you got to see Barrett Jackson in person. BarrettJackson.com with a dash is the way to do it. Now, here's a 1967 Corvette custom convertible. Well, I got two words for you. Jeff Hayes. This is just incredible. Champagne with the ghost stinger stripes, the Corvette cross flags, linen leather interior, big turbine wheels, it's a 67 Stingray. That's the one you want. And nobody does them to this standard these days in a Corvette Restaurant. Yeah, custom chassis underneath. You look at that dash. That dash alone, the great work, the uh, turned metal, the bezels, everything about this is great. And look at the number. Told you. Could it be? Is this the one? 
All right, Jeff Hayes, in your wildest dreams, did you see this happening today at Barrett Jackson? What do you think? Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely mind blowing. Well, so is your work. Well, I appreciate that. It's wonderful. We're creeping up on it. And there it is, one million dollars. Awesome car. Here's our number Holy 13. Holy moly. Well, a couple hours, I said, when this car rolled to the stage, the roof would come off the place, and boy, did it. Two determined bidders who each refused to lose. Boy, that is every consigner's dream. That is staggering, but not entirely unexpected. One M on this old sticker. Here's Tyler. Well, from out here in the staging lanes, I felt the breath go out of the room as that went to a million dollars. But here's something really special right here. Only 284 Hemi Cudas built in 1970 with a four-speed manual transmission. So you can see that Hemi engine under there with the shaker hood. All black as well, black vinyl top, black interior of a very rare car, but even more special, this car was previously owned by Nicolas Cage. So we've seen a few Eleanor tributes go across the block, one of his most famous movies, Gone in 60 Seconds. We'll see what one of his actual cars that he actually owned sells for. All right, thank you very much, Tyler. Here's lot 1368, after everyone takes a deep breath, a 58 Corvette custom convertible. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't have a big bank book balance when you come to the Barra Jackson auction on Saturday afternoon, don't even bother to raise your hand. Look at the number on this 58. $535,000. Another LS swap, a full resto mod, but with the shape of a 58 and all modern conveniences underneath. Smooches are a popular reward here tonight. Why not? Okay, here comes another hit. A 1970 Chevelle SS LS6 convertible. And here's Jerry McNish. Original engine transmission Rear axle, Rick Nelson of Muscle Car and Concepts restored this car. He never missed any detail on it. It's the nicest one in the country. And at this point in time, between Rick and myself, we don't know of any other LS6 convertible with the complete original drivetrain. Don't miss out on this. It's the best of the best. So it's been interesting what we've seen come across the block. Some spectacular resto mods, beautiful custom vehicles. Now we're into originality. A 1970 Chevelle SS LS6. The top of the heat. The big engine that came across in this 1970 Chevelle. And as you heard Jerry McNish say, this one may be the only convertible with its original engine. And look at some of the detailing, the original part number of the radiator hose, the original type clamps. Everything about this is restored to be exactly the way it left the factory and rolled into the showroom 50-some years ago. Yeah, and Jerry McNish not only has a report that accompanies this, they also have a thumb drive with more than 5,600 photographs documenting the entire restoration of this, this 1970 Chevelle. 1970 was the pinnacle of the first muscle car era. It was not the end. Detroit kept building and selling high performance all the way right up until the big gas crisis of 1973 when suddenly everybody wanted fuel sippers. But the top of the mountain was right here, 1970. Well, the top of the mountain for that era. Little did we know we'd come back and blow past the horsepower numbers that we thought were big, those 450 numbers that we'd see in these engines. And now we've got even more that comes out of Detroit. Sold at $450,000, and with that, it's time to sell a great car for a worthy cause. Bring your childhood back to life at adult scale with the 2023 Matchbox Jeep Gladiator by Realtruck. 
Built by world-renowned builder Deutsch Off-Road, this rig features numerous suspension and adventure mods by Real Truck, designed so you can live your toy car dreams in the real world. Proceeds go to Building Homes for Heroes, an amazing organization who honors combat wounded veterans with a mortgage-free home, then connects these heroes to a community and support system to help them thrive. Round out your Matchbox collection with the ultimate toy car supersized by Real Truck for a great cause. Folks, again, we've, we've experienced some amazing moments this afternoon, all through the week. But one of the most spectacular things you will ever see are our men and women in uniform on this stage doing what we do. We couldn't do it without what they do. Give them a big round of applause. God bless them. Let's start, let's start with that. I am honored to introduce United States Army Sergeant Benjamin Decker, Building Homes for Heroes home recipient. Let's hear about it and tell them why this is so special and this incredible vehicle is just representative of what you guys are all about. It is, and we're very appreciative of this. As you heard, my name is Sergeant Decker, and I served 13 years in the Army before I was medically retired in 2010. Building Homes for Heroes awarded me and my family a mortgage-free home in nearby Casa Grande, Arizona in 2015. My children have been growing up there. It's been a night and day experience from the military life of moving every two years to staying in one residence for 10 years. Uh, they've, they've made it so that I can recover, rehabilitate, and just do, become a better person than what I was. So I want to thank Building Homes for Heroes and also Real Truck and ask you all to reach out and do the best you can to help another veteran like me. All right, Joseph, let's get it. Yeah, thank you, Craig. Well, gar great car for a great cause. Love the Matchbox names across the side. I mean, for those of us who grew up a little bit earlier when there weren't Hot Wheels, Matchbox were the cars that we went to. You know, we played with them, we enjoyed them, we took them apart. And to have that name on here is kind of a touch of fun and to look at the great causes going to at the same time. And boy, we're already up to $125,000 and I gotta think we, we're gonna keep moving. It, it matches a matchbox. It's an incredible build. Charity is an incredible charity. Let's get some more money. 60. We see it over and over again here at Barrett Jackson. They'll bring a great car, they have a great cause, and it's not the same one. Over and over again, we'll see different types of organizations that are recipients of this, although quite often it is veterans-related, military-related, because it's such a great cause to help the men and women in uniform. Now we're at $200,000. $250,000 after a little bobble there for a worthy cause. Now, we've got another break coming up and another very special car, a 2018 Bugatti Chiron, absolutely setting the standard for the limit in speed. The Chiron is amazing. We'll tell you all about it. Under the Stars and Stripes, the world famous Barrett Jackson auction stage now features another car from the Don Williams collection and one of our fantasy big cars. What do you think this one 
will go for. It's absolutely spectacular. Hand painted lattice work along the sides. It's a 54 Rolls Royce Silver Wraith. And the coachwork is by Freestone and Webb of London. Uh, there's the beautiful spirit of ecstasy atop the hand hammered stainless steel grill. And all of this wicker looking lattice work is hand painted all the way down the side. A bespoke custom built to taste at goodness knows what cost. It's got the uh, inline six engine F head. Remember F head with the valves off to the side? It also has a curved windshield, which hardly any car had in the early 50s. They, I mean, they were rare. This might have been adapted and cut down from a different model, but boy, the cost involved in building this, I cannot imagine. They only built a little over 1,700 of them. They built them between, I think, 48 and 58. Um, but boy, you know, it goes back to you look at what this car was created to do. It wasn't created to drive. It was created to be driven in. Yeah, this is what we call a dual cowl a body. There is a cowl in front of the windshield between the hood and the windshield. And here is the second cowl between the driver's compartment and the owner's compartment with its own windshield and wind wings. Beautiful leather with contrasting piping. So British, so beautiful. You get in the car, you'll open the door, and then this will flip up. You'll get in, flip that down, and boy, you realize with the windshield this close to you, you can look out and, you know, your hair won't get as ruffled. It sells for $205,000. Coming out of the Don Williams collection, you know it is well maintained. Unfortunately, in April, he was my brother's best friend. He's my mentor, Tom Barrett's protege. He built the Black Hawk Museum with Ken Baring, and uh, he had most of the world's great cars go through his hands. Why we wanted to do this at his eulogy at the Black Hawk Museum, Sandra Button and myself were honored to give his eulogy. But afterwards, Sandra said, let's raise money for something Don really cares about. And that is, we've helped McPherson College for so many years with scholarships to train young kids to restore cars. McPherson lately has had a lot of endowments. We have a lot of McPherson kids here. But there's a new school that it, Rancho Chico that is going to start a program they raised money at Pebble Beach. We want to raise some money here and some awareness for their enrollment, for their process of restoring cars and teaching mechanics for underprivileged kids. There's a QR code that's up here. This is to the legacy. Cars like this can't be restored back to this if we do not have young people that learn the art of car restoration. So what we did is I donated $50,000 because I said Don has done 50 Pebble Beaches, 185 cars on the lawn. He has been at Barrett Jackson for 50 years buying and selling cars. Anybody else that wants to join me that knew Don that want our hobby to continue, Please raise your hand. The bidder represent, representatives will take it. You can do it through the QR code, but I just want to acknowledge Don and raise some more money. So, Joseph? All right, here we go. Well, and one of the things that Craig, the points that Craig is making is that today, when they replace body parts, they don't hammer them out anymore. They don't smooth them out. They simply take off a fender, put on a new one. So as a result, the people who have the skills to do that are getting rarer. Mercedes here that we're talking about is a one-off car. It is a 540K with a Mayfair chassis on it, and it is an absolute piece of art. This was his pride and joy, and this is the second-to-last car from Don's uh, collection coming up. Disappearing top. It doesn't get any prettier. All right, how to get it? 540K, the K4 compressor. Supercharged. Just what a beautiful car. It looks like it's going 150 miles an hour sitting still. 
Well, and the motor itself was good for about 115 horsepower, but with that supercharger, that compressor kicking in, it was good up to 180 horsepower. In terms of speed, probably just a touch over 100 miles an hour. But boy, you did it in such style. And they were using the same stuff they were using on the race card. We're over a million. Well, the dash on this is Burlwood and Mother of Pearl. My goodness. Standard shift right-hand drive car. Let's have a look at this dashboard. Have you ever seen anything like this? Well, the reality is all these cars were custom built from the word go. Worth it. It's not just that it's a special car. It came from the best collection, one of the best collectors out there who knew what to look for and what to buy. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Craig has told you what a remarkable individual Mr. Williams was. Also, what a remarkable Mercedes Benz is in front of you. A true one off body by the Mayfair Carriage Company. Ladies and gentlemen, don't miss the opportunity. I mean, a lot of the parts that they were using to build this with, they were also putting into the race cars of those days, those pre war Mercedes that were running the world and doing so much in terms of their their speed on track so this has the guts in the race car in a beautiful body And you, and can, you donate can donate right, right with those, those QR, QR codes. codes. Thank, you, Thank you, all you all very much. Oh, my goodness. What a moment. And time for us to have a look at the Haggerty Top 5 sales of the auction. $525,000 for the Plymouth Hemi Cuda. Five thirty-five for the 58 Chevy Corvette, six hundred fifty thousand for the 57 Lincoln Continental Mark II, then one million dollars for a beautiful custom Chevy Corvette, as you just saw, two point two million dollars for an exceedingly rare 37 Mercedes 540K Special Tourer. Back to the block we go. A Bugatti Type 57 Stelvio in black and gleaming navy blue associated with Alec Ullman, the man who invented the Sebring 12-hour Grand Prix of Endurance in Florida, which uh, is coming up in March. And the name Stelvio comes from the Stelvio Pass in the Alps in Europe. And boy, you see that Bugatti name, and anytime we see that, the number climbs up. And in fact, later today, we're going to see the modern iteration of this Bugatti Gorilla in the Chiron that is going to come up on the block, which is now a supercar. The headlights fared into the fenders, the Bugatti radiator shell. And look at the sweep here that begins the A pillar. And this knob, you can fold down the windshield to enjoy alfresco driving. A lot of leather and wood, another right-hand drive car. Standard shift. And this is designed to be a four-seater. You'll notice there is a back seat back here, but you'll also notice it's not very big. Can you slide the seats forward? Absolutely, but not a massive amount of room in the back. But if you need to, you can haul four people. And the license plate number? 57. Back to your point, Mike, about the fact that these headlights are curved into the body, worked into the bodywork. You got to remember, for 1936, this was unusual. They were just starting to get into that kind of concept of being more aerodynamic. And one of the bidders on the auction block is Craig Jackson. Oh, and he is the winning bidder. And takes it. And that is Craig Jackson. Janet, 
Don Williams' widow. She seems pleased with that. She's been honored with a perpetual number one bitter pass here at Barrett Jackson, which is a great gesture by the organization. Fantastic car and the Summit Racing Soul sticker goes on. The car will roll away for $490,000 into Craig Jackson's personal collection. So, how about something large and in black? This is a 1938 Packard 12 Torpedo Cabriolet. Well, we could be forgiven for calling this a limousine. This is another dual cowl car in that the driver sits behind the cowl behind the engine and the owners sit in a fully enclosed cabriolet compartment. There is a second windshield that right now is retracted down into the bodywork and this door opens to the owner's compartment. A very nice uh, brocade finish to the upholstery here. Can you imagine riding in anything more luxurious than this? You know, when Packard first came out with their 12-cylinder engine, they actually called it the Twin Six, as if that was going to sound more impressive than 12. Eventually, they figured out, you know what? I think people can do the math. They're calling it 12. It sounds more impressive than 8 and 10, so they started calling it a 12-cylinder. We're at $400,000. The trunk here, not leather covered, but it appears to be stainless steel. Beautiful. It's interesting, when you look in the driver's compartment, it actually doesn't look hugely comfortable. You don't have a lot of leg room in there. You need to be a relatively short driver because the comfort was all in the back. With a great provenance. The Packard coffin top grill and these crystal hood ornaments. That, that's a whole nother facet of the collector car hobby right there. That gentleman has picked up two of the Don Williams collection cars as Janet Williams looks on. I suspect she and her family and friends there know who that is. Got to be an emotional moment. Now coming up, a 2017 Ferrari F12 TDF, which stands for Tour de France, a famous 1950s and 60s endurance race around France. Welcome back as the sun begins to sink low over the Valley of the Sun, northeastern Phoenix, Arizona, that's where you'll find Scottsdale, where the Phoenix Open will be played about a mile and a half from here at TPC Scottsdale next weekend, but this weekend is all about Barrett Jackson. Here's a 2006 Ford GT, as you see what the last three cars across the block did. Plymouth Superbird 385, a Kindig, one of a kind, build. 550, and just like that, $500,000 for this Shelby, excuse me, Ford GT from 2006. Okay, I get it. We're in half million dollar range and up. This is lot 1377, a 67 Shelby GT 500 CR recreation. You can't imagine what it would cost to tool this thing, mold it, put this thing together. One of the finest you'll ever see, one of 25, as we said. It's got the big five-liter supercharged Coyote under the hood, a beautiful carbon fiber GT500 CR. Let's roll, Joseph. All right. Well, one of the things they've done with this in making it a carbon fiber replica is they've managed to shave 600 pounds off of what, have been, what would have been the weight from an original 1967 Shelby GT500. So they've got even more performance, modern running gear on a lighter car. Boy, beautifully done. The original shock towers are long gone. This has an A-arm suspension, and that leaves plenty of room 
uh, for that huge engine upgrade. Roll bar inside. Shelby touches like the brake scoops and uh, the scoop in the C pillar along with the spoiler and Shelby tail lights, but everything in carbon fiber that doesn't have to be in metal. And it's really subtle. I mean, you have to walk up and look really close before you realize every body panel has that carbon fiber weave to it. Nicely done. From a distance, you're just thinking, oh, you know, it's a pepper gray one. But no, that's carbon fiber color. $400,000 bid. they've also done is they've also wrapped the body in a special protective film to protect that carbon fiber. Sold at four hundred seventy thousand dollars. Thank you, everybody. I want to thank you for going to Sammy's party he had last night, where he rocked. Thank him for performing. The Red Rocker himself is here to talk about his La Ferrari. It was yeah. supposed to be the car before this car coming up. So now the timing is it's going to. So well, in October. Yeah, yeah we, we got, got a, We had a battery issue, issue at the last minute, and, and Craig and I were stressing out really bad, and then we said, this is a blessing in disguise, because if I would have sold that car to someone, and they would have two days later called me up and said, guess what? Uh, that would have been horrible. So uh, we're going to get it all fixed up and be like new, and we're going to do it in October. And my favorite part about that, Craig, is that I get to come back in October and do this again! Woo! So Sammy just played crazy. last night. It was absolutely spectacular. He's going to come back in October, the day before his birthday, October 12th. So you never know what's going to break out next October. <laughs> yeah, birthdays are fun. I, I, I don't need a birthday to have a good time, though, Craig. So, so here's a, a very interesting aspect about the car that I don't even think you know. On the steering wheel, it says SH1013 because they, uh, Ferrari put that uh, little etched um, uh, engravement on the, my steering wheel as my birthday present in October when I got the car. Well, it's going on the blocks October 12th, the day before my birthday, so it's kind of like it's another somebody else's like birthday. Like it's good karma. Thanks, Any levers Sammy, in the house? <laughs> Thanks, Sammy, for playing last night at, over in the Ecodoma. Thank you. Super exciting. Thank you, Sammy. God bless people. This is wonderful, man. This is like heaven right here. It is. Thank you, Sammy. Hey, y'all make some noise for Sammy Hagar. Here's lot number 1378. It's a 2018 Bugatti. It features the full exposed carbon fiber option. It's powered by an 8 liter Okay, with that, a very special car with a very special name. Lot 1378 is a 2018 Bugatti Chiron. What's the Chiron? Louis Chiron. The oldest man to enter a Formula One race at age 58, a winner of the Monaco Grand Prix and the Monte Carlo Rally. Oh, this 1. is name for him. 1.5, 1.6. You can't call a bit fast enough. Well, for a moment, for a moment there, they were equal to the horsepower, which is 1500. Now we're over that. It's a 16-cylinder motor, 1,500 horsepower, and the number's still going. Zero to 60 in 2.3. Eight liters, 16 cylinders, four turbochargers. Why? Because too much is never enough. Well, remember the Bugatti Veyron? You know, that was really cool. That was really potent. That was spectacular. How do you follow it up? Well, this was the successor to the Veyron. for the front color and 200,000 for the back color. They don't make these anymore. This is an opportunity right here. Gorgeous colors, great build on this car. Only problem is the price right now, Joseph. Emma's got two million seven. 
And it's interesting to look at that Bugatti we had crossing the block just a little while ago. It was a nice touring car. A little pleasant little thing for driving through the Alps. Now it is all about massive performance. In fact, they had to limit the top speed of these, the, well, the Veyron and the Chiron, because the tires couldn't take it. They would melt the tires at 250 plus miles per hour. French racing blue on the brake calipers and the diamond stitched leather interior and the carbon fiber is not black not gray but a deep deep blue Joseph Mass is trying to figure out all these got three bidders actively involved they need to make sure who has which bid my goodness 2.7 million dollars. Actually, probably not far off its MSRP. A fabulous car. Louis Chiron, the man Charles Leclerc from Ferrari is chasing to become the second native of Monaco to win the Monaco Grand Prix. Block right now, a 2012 Lexus LFA Nurburgring edition. This is a modern supercar coming out of Japan. That Lexus name, boy, the, if the F, normally the F is their performance range, but this just takes it to a new level. These achieved a certain amount of notoriety when a noted NASCAR driver took his loner for a drive up Perth Road in Mooresville, North Carolina, north of Lake Norman. Uh, it's a nice 45 mile an hour road and he got stopped doing a three digit speed and got a ticket that was several di a digit more than that. Oh well, uh, and, and the legend begins, you know, here in America. But what a fantastic car. And like many of these hypercars, you couldn't buy one. You really had to have quite a Lexus connection just to be able to get on the list at the dealer for the order bank. Well, the concept of these types of cars are what they call halo cars, you know, bring attention to the mark. According to Lexus, they lost money on every single one of these they sold. Sure, but look what it did for the brand. I bet Lexus wish they had a piece of the after sale action because here we are past a million and a half. Well, one of only 69 that come with this Nurburgring package. By the way, this one only has 2,100 miles on the odometer. Hard to believe this car is 12 years old. That 4.8 V10 was developed in conjunction with Yamaha. After all, the motorcycle manufacturer has all kinds of experience with high horsepower, high revving engines. Okay, so there's less than 70 of the Nurburgring package. Of those, only seven were U.S. spec. So in the United States, this is a rare creature. in value and that's the only place they have to go right now. The only thing this car lacks is a racing pedigree. Lexus did not choose to track these cars. Sold at $1.5 million. That looks like Bruce Canepa, I believe, the famed restorer from California. Here's a car coming up, a 1988 Lamborghini Countach, 5,000 QV. One of approximately 610 produced, red over black leather, exotic.
welcome back to Barrett Jackson, where moments ago it officially became million o'clock here on the Barrett Jackson block as a 2005 Porsche Carrera GT sold for 1.7 million. So all of our top five cars are a million dollars and up. And of course, we are not yet done here on Super Saturday. Here is a 2022 McLaren 765 LT Spider. Well, the LT stands for long tail. The bodywork on this is all either gloss exposed carbon fiber or volcano yellow with a high amount of metallic in this color. $800,000 takes it. By the way, if you're a regular Barrett, uh, Barrett Jackson viewer going back a couple decades, you should know that that Porsche Carrera GT was sold to Ron Pratt, a native of this area, a very successful businessman, and a very constant customer here at Barrett Jackson. He actually sold his whole collection here, and now he's building a new one, it appears. Here's lot 1386, a 2017 Ferrari F12 TDF. We showed it to you earlier, Tour de France, guys. So I sometimes think what Enzo Ferrari would think about plug-in hybrids being built by his factory. But I think ultimately, if he knew what they were bringing in terms of price and profit, he'd be like, I'm all in. Because, you know, this modern generation of not supercars, but hypercars. You know, traditionally, we talk about supercars. Well, those are like, you know, the normally aspirated, turbocharged, those kinds of things but once they start to get into electrification plug-in hybrids electric well that becomes the hypercar world so the original tour de france was a 250 gt 1958 uh, 59 a long wheelbase very capable road car with a good bit of track history this retains the v12 but again it is so much more than that 770 horsepower from the normally aspirated 6.3 liter V12, zero to 60 in under three seconds, top speed over 200 miles per hour. And if you have never driven a car that will do zero to 60 in three seconds or less, I gotta tell you, it'll literally make your head spin if you're not ready for it. You sometimes wonder how race car drivers could pull it off. And to be able to go 200 miles an hour, well, you've gotta do it in the right place. And part of the thing is, you know, these are expensive cars, but see those tires right there? You've gotta have tires that are capable of handling the speed that these can produce. So you can't just go out and, you know, run over to Costco and pick up another set of tires. The vents here in the fenders, a nod to the 250 Tour de France and 250 GTO. This car had a lot of sporting pretensions, but I don't ever recall them racing these. I think, Mike, it's more of a commemorative sort of edition. The Tour de France from the 50s and 60s in the first heyday of GT racing, grand touring, meaning you could drive the car on the street or race it. The Tour de France, much like the Tour de France cycling race, with stops along the way. They would have a hill climb or a time trial or a, or a circuit track or whatever, go round and round. Ferrari dominated. 1.225 million. There's that number again. Beautiful hybrid car. And behind it rolls up the car we showed you just a couple of moments ago. Tyler Hoover's been hoovering around it most of the weekend. It's a 1988 Lamborghini Countach 5000 QV. And didn't every boy of a certain age have a poster of this on their bedroom wall? Just the angular design of this was just so revolutionary, so different than anything that was coming out of Detroit or England or Modena or Japan or anywhere. Just a complete traffic stopper, no matter where it is. Yeah, Marcello Gandini was the person responsible for this design. And when you look at this and you look at the evolution of Lamborghinis that come from this point on, you realize the significance of this car because so many of their cars, doesn't matter whether it's a Hurricane, a Huracan, a Gallardo, a Diablo, they're essentially all built with this same standard. You know, this angular look, it may be a little more rounded depending upon which generation, but the basic concept was laid out with the Countach. The V-shaped rear wing was an option, and this one's been treated to 
European bumpers in replacing the U.S. units. Big bumperettes at the back just above the exhaust to meet impact regulations. A little earlier this weekend, we had a Lamborghini tractor go across the block here at Barrett Jackson. Because you remember that when Lamborghini started, that's exactly what he was building, tractors. He wasn't building supercars. It wasn't until later he decided to butt heads with Enzo Ferrari. That Euro front bumper offers very little impact protection, but look at how low it is. It'd be a shin biter. I don't think it'd be much, uh, much in the uh, stoplight back and forth. That's okay. You see one of these in your rearview mirror, you're just going to move out of the way, like now. Yeah, there are those who will argue that, you know, this is quite a ways into the Countach line, that it's got all kinds of, you know, stuff that's been added to it over time. Not as pure as the original, but still a Countach. $565,000 sends it to its new home. And here's a car that is coming up in just a short while. It's a 2019 Ford GT. The original ones, three and a half liter EcoBoost V6, a couple of turbochargers, seven speed gearbox, and more. Welcome back to Scottsdale, where a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Superbird in lemon twist yellow just crossed the block at $400,000. We move on to a 62 customized Chevrolet Corvette. Well, all day we've been marveling, all week, in fact, we've been marveling at the prices that these Corvette Customs have been bringing. And then a little bit earlier today, we saw that Jeff Hayes Custom Corvette sell for a million dollars. I guess we're just going to imagine that the price can only go up and up when it's all said and done. This one right here, well, it's been finished just the last year, 650 horsepower coming out of that supercharged LT4 V8 engine underneath a six-speed manual transmission. And of course, it's got an Art Morrison GT chassis that it's running on. Just under 250 test miles since its completion. Let's take a look at the chassis cam, see what it looks like from underneath. Talked about the fact that it has a very modern running gear, that 6.2 liter engine. Suspension, all, everything massively. To look at the, the, the way the uh, transmission's been moved back. All the running gear, that drive shaft, everything underneath looks just as good as it does from up above with that quad exhaust. Well, this one nearly stalled at $300,000, and now Joseph Mask is asking for $400,000. Well, this Corvette's been backdated a little bit. In 1962, you wouldn't have had two-tone. You wouldn't have had this much chrome. But I don't think it matters. Still a beautiful build on that custom chassis, as we saw in the chassis cam. Supercharged LT4, the hardtop installed on this one. Beautiful build. Well, and like we've talked about, even with some restorers who are just simply restoring, I hate to say simply restoring, but restoring a car, some of them are doing it better than new, and the same thing with the customizers. $400,000 to a bidder up in the Muscle Lounge. Is there any car from the 1950s that draws more interest than a Gullwing Mercedes 300 SL? There it is in the staging lanes headed for the auction block, currently occupied by a Yanko Supercar 427 Camaro from 1967, one of 54 built. Yeah, we've talked about Don Yanko and what a great driver he was. I think he won four SCCA national championships. He raced at Le Mans, he raced at Daytona. And then he decided to say, you know what, let's take what I like, the performance, and make some money off it. Went to his family's dealership in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. Initially, they started as a shop where you could buy parts, then they could install them, or you could buy them separately. And eventually, it became the Yanko Specials. $550,000. Lot number 
Well, here's a car we previewed earlier, one that's dear to my heart, a 2019 Ford GT. They had 13,000 applications to buy these. They only made 1,300 cars over the five-year build window. And it's interesting to look at the evolution of the modern Ford GT. The first Ford GT modern edition, it came out in 2005, 2006, was designed to look as close as possible to the GT40s that won Le Mans back in the late 60s. This was designed to be a race car for the street, and they didn't have any of the constraints of what it was supposed to look like. They simply could have as much fun, as much style, as much aerodynamic work they could, and boy, I think they achieved their goal. This is a race car for the street. And talking about a, talk about an engine, EcoBoost V6 may not sound that impressive, what you would find in a lot of pedestrian cars, but this one, 650 horsepower is what it's been tuned to. Zero to 60 around three seconds in between those beautiful flying buttress C pillars. Well, I promise you, these are a thrill to drive, easy to drive and handle, and they go right now. Well, it's got these beautiful carbon fiber wheels, and one of the magic numbers associated with this one right here, only 35 miles on the odometer. You see, this one was optioned without a stripe, and it's not a heritage, it's not a carbon series. Big money for an early GT. Well, I think it's the low, low mileage. I mean, they're don't, there's more than a few with low mileage. There's some that haven't been driven at all, but still, that's probably where the money is in this particular car. And the fact that, for whatever reason, today is bringing crazy money here at Barrett-Jackson. The rare option on this one are the carbon fiber wheels as the hammer drops at $1,250,000. Coming up, Donald Trump's 1997 Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster. Bill Goldberg's on the stage talking about his Dodges. And now he's like 100, so I mean, we've been here for a long time. It's a family atmosphere. We want to thank everybody for being here. And let's get loud! Two cars, one bid. We've got the parachute. Everything that comes with the new 170, I will send the new owner the carbon fiber Rear seat delete, the, the uh, roll bar, the parachute, the handles in the trunk. I got the banner from the last call, uh, 170 reveal in Vegas, and I stole it. But it is what it is. I love you guys. Let's have some fun. Let's go, Joseph. So this is kind of unique. The bid is to own both cars. Bill Goldberg's 2023 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon 170 with nine miles and his 2018 Dodge Demon serial number 1083 with 10 miles. One bid, two cars. Yeah, as you point out, the matching VIN numbers is really interesting. They've got matching between the two of them. Here you see the original sticker showing the original price for this one right here was $125,000. Uh, we got the VIN number on the dash. Tyler, what's the number? 89,000 on the back one. Here you get to buy two cars for the price of three. North of San Diego, Bill Goldberg has an incredible car collection. Here he is again. SRT Goldberg version racing suit thrown in with it. And my, uh, Mr. Gilles and Mr. Trussell and myself will sign both vehicles if you'd like. Well, how about his and hers Demon 170s to just drag race to work every day? Combined uh, over 2,000 horsepower together, zero to 60, just under two seconds. Boy, they went out with a bang on these uh, Hellcats Demons 170s. Well, as our good friend Steve Mignante, who is uh, home recuperating, you always loves to say when you talk about horsepower, the good old days are right now. I mean, the amount of horsepower we see out of coming out of these, you know, internal combustion engines is off the charts. And the amount of horsepower we're seeing coming out of the electric engines 
is off the charts. Power, well, it's back. $410,000, Ralph Scheel from Chrysler Corporation and Bill Goldberg with this twofer. How about that? Stars and cars, never know what you're gonna see next at Barrett Jackson. Welcome back to the Valley of the Sun, Barrett Jackson, Scottsdale, where two cars have topped $2 million. Hammer Bryce and another five over a million dollars. And I lost count of the half million plus rides that have rolled across the auction block. This is a 2014 Mercedes-Benz AMG G63 Brabus 6x6 B63 S700. Alphabet soup, but wow, what a truck. Yeah, let's go backwards on the end of that, Mike. 700 is how much they tuned the twin turbo V8 to, to 700 horsepower. And boy, did they need to because this thing's been lengthened. First, it's been lifted with the portal axles, an additional axle added to the back. All six wheels get that 700 horsepower. Ridiculous build. Yeah, you want to be the biggest one on your block. This is absolutely going to do it because once again, you got those up there. Look at these two massive sets of axles back here. You know, if we really want to get carried away, I guess we could have made them dualies in there. But look at the suspension. And once again, this is not just six wheels. This is six wheel drive. Look at the transfer case going back to the differential back there. Now these are not officially imported. This, this truck is here under the NHTSA show and display rule and it has 10,000 actual miles. And you can see with the length and they kept the cab mostly the same. You just have a truck bed now and to help with bumper regulations because it's so high they added this to the bottom so a sports car doesn't slide underneath and it's also been widened massively. You can see these huge fender players on the side so it's not cracking windshields as it spits tire, uh, rocks out of the tires. And to point out on the car card, while you know they talk about the fact this is under show and display import rules, it doesn't say it can't be driven off road, on road or anything like that. So it sounds like the showing and displaying would involve taking it on roads. Well, I believe it was brought in under show and display, but then it was made emissions legal, which can be done. It is very expensive to do, though. Sometimes we talk about how certain cars are, you know, a, a great deal per pound. Well, this one's moving past that in terms of overall weight. It's huge. It's big. Overall price, it's right up there as well. As Craig was saying, I think knew these were around a million dollars, and they didn't stop with the axles. Look at the interior. White carbon fiber, special stitching in the seats. Wow. $800,000 ties for eight, a three-way tie for eighth highest sale of the day. Paint to sample acid green is the color of our next car. You the can't miss color of this Porsche 918 Spider. Well, here's Porsche's entry into the hypercar holy trinity, along with the LaFerrari and the McLaren P1. We have a hypercar right here. 600 horsepower V8 in the back. Hybrid battery helping move things along to unbelievable performance. And the looks, well, unbelievable as well. Yeah, the combination of the gas engine, which pumps out about 599 horsepower, together with a couple of electric engines, you end up at over 880 horsepower on this with a 
hybrid engine, and as you mentioned, the word hypercar. You know, supercars, well, we reserve those for internal combustion engines. Once you start getting into the electric world, it truly becomes a hypercar. Well, it's easy to remember how many 918 Spiders were made because it's 918. And in the hypercar world, that's the highest production compared to McLaren P1, 375. The LaFerrari was around 500. Still very low production, but in comparison to the other hypercars, more common. I remember being in an IMSA race over a decade ago, and at that point they were experimenting. They had a 911 with an electric assist engine on it and this massive uh, unit that sat beside the driver and they were working on the technology that was going to go in there. So I love to point out that interestingly enough the technology for this hypercar was developed on the racetrack. Hard to believe that this is going on 10 years old. The styling was aged so well. I mean, it looks like a brand new car. And of the three hypercars, I do believe this one has the best track record when it comes to reliability. Porsche has always been on the top when it comes to reliability ratings. And boy, that's a top price. $1,625,000. Makes that the number four sale of the day. Also, it has gone to the Mercedes Classic Center, authenticating the engine, the transaxle, the steering box. I drove the car. It drives beautifully. This is the original silver color on it. They did add the rudge wheels and the fitted luggage. Has summer and winter seats for it, full leather, the cloth inserts. We've sold a lot of gold wings. I've owned three of them. This is the nicest one I've ever seen. Turnkey, it did a, the first day on the Colorado Grand to help sort it out. The consigner took it back, tweaked the suspension. You stab the brakes, it stops dead straight, it shifts, it runs beautifully. Let's get a new order. Originally delivered in Italy, made its way to the United States. Number 225 of 311 hand built 300 SL Gull Wing Coupes. All right, take a look at the chassis cam as it rolls over because we can see how beautiful it is up top, and I have a feeling it's going to look just as nice down below. Boy, not what we've been seeing so far today, you know, with those Art Morrison chassis. This is a very complex setup, a very complex build. The drive shaft going all the way to the back. Boy, nothing simple about this. And look at the bid right now. Well, we did catch a glimpse because it's mounted somewhat sideways on that direct fuel injection on the three liter six cylinder. Horsepower around 240, top speed about 160 miles an hour, which in 1950s, 56, that was really something. The intriguing thing about this car is this was developed from a race car. In other words, a lot of times when car manufacturers build something, they build it and then they go racing with it. In this case, Mercedes went racing with the 300 SL and then they did Develop the street version afterwards. So this is a development of a true race car. And that's the practical reason for the Gullwing doors. It's a race car with a tubular chassis. That door frame is very high and very wide, and they needed to figure out a way for the drivers to get in. The Gullwing made sense, and it looked fantastic. You're right. It was dictated. The bottom of the door height was dictated by the chassis, and the steering wheel swings not away but it tilts forward at the top for ingress and egress and the reality is this car is automotive royalty when you do your top 10 list of the greatest cars of all time not only does this deserve a place this easily stands a chance of being the number one car you look at the trends the direct fuel injection the gull wing doors you look at those headlights Take a look at what came out in the Corvettes years later, in, you know, throughout the 50s, and essentially everybody was copying this look. Whoa, whoa top sale, 
2.8 million bid were 3 million bid. Well, just a top-notch restoration in the finest color. They added the Rouge knockoff wheels. It is perfect. $3.1 million for a gorgeous 1956 300 SL Gullwing set by Craig Jackson to be the finest he'd ever seen. And the we now have a Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster which was bought new and ordered by Donald Trump. The only 1997 Diablo in blue Le Mans. Here it is, Donald Trump's Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster. And these VT Roasters, they were quite rare on their own without the Trump connection. Very rare with the VT Roadster, where that tops a single piece of carbon fiber that is removable and it clips onto the rear bonnet. VT also means all wheel drive, so that almost 500 horsepower V12 in the back really hooks up. Gated manual transmission inside, and of course the iconic Lambo doors, those scissor doors that pop up, showing that you've arrived. The VT stands for viscous traction, which is that all-wheel drive system. Uh, this was the roadster that was really the second generation of the Diablo. It was introduced back in 1995, and they built these through 1998. Look at all the cell phones on the auction block. It's as if the Batmobile was center stage. Haven't seen a crowd like this around a single car since the Batmobile sold at Barrett Jackson. Talking about that VT, the viscous traction system. You know, it's designed to really improve handling significantly. In fact, they say it'll do it by more than 40% in terms of grip. Well, we were wondering what the Trump connection would do with this Diablo, and I would say probably double at the current bid what a normal VT Roadster would bring. And this one was driven and enjoyed for several years by former President Donald Trump. A and just cost a million dollars. Bid. Now this car has had two owners since Trump owned it. And when he bought this, he was a businessman and a reality TV star. And there we go. One million dollars is the hammer price. Boy, that's a Barrett Jackson moment right there. And as that Lambo fires up and rolls off, the auction block is not vacant for long. Here's a 1948 Chevrolet Crew Cab. COE, which stands for Cab Over Engine, custom called Deco Liner. Yeah, according to the consigner, this one took more than 10 years to build. I mean, can you imagine that? More than 10,000 hours of work to build this thing. And been winning awards for some time. It actually started as a three ton delivery box truck. And really, you, this goes back to the golden age of automotive styling. And look how this has been done. When you go all the way back, there you see the deco liner on the, uh, the running boards. And back here, I mean, they've got this open section, but look how it kind of has this beautiful humpback look. The uh, two sets of axles in the back with massive brakes. Boy, this is quite a beast. The consigner just showed me a picture of how it started, and it was a mess of a delivery truck transformed into this beautiful work of art. It does still have the fifth wheel attachment up here, so you could hook this up and use it as a trailer, but not as a bumper pull. You can see the exhaust is mounted in the center there. Sort of a boat tail shape. Well, it's got a 502 cubic inch engine under the hood. They just started up, and I'm realizing, you know, that the exhaust is sure a long way from the engine. They've still got quite a rumble out that back. 
from what began as a humble three ton delivery box truck, it's been transformed into this stunner. And you know what? It actually works well. According to the consigner, they actually drove it from Canada down to California. Well, it does look very comfortable. You have a full cab inside, four passengers, air conditioning, and a new owner for $285,000. Next up is a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle Custom Roadster. Now, Roadster would indicate this is not a convertible top. It's top down all the time. A build from East Bay Muscle Cars. And we're now six hours into our live FYI and History Channel coverage of Super Saturday, where the most coveted vehicles of the week are crossing the block. The good news is we have another four hours of Super Saturday headed your way on the History Channel. Welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona, and the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auction. It is Super Saturday, and vehicles have been rocking the block all day long and delivering record-shattering results. I'm Mike Joy. Bob Varsha will have the con here shortly. Rick DeBrule, Tyler Hoover, April Rose, and I will help you understand some of these cars as they cross the block. We've already had a Mercedes at $3 million, a Bugatti and a Mercedes over $2 million, and another $7 million plus hammer prices here on Super Saturday. Here's a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle Custom Roadster. Yeah, and it's pretty interesting when you look at this. I mean, first off, the, we'll talk about the paint in a moment, but what's really important is this is not a convertible. This is a Roadster. The top has been eliminated, and this is what it's supposed to be. They're not, I don't even think there's a Carson top associated with it. Look at those seats in the back, custom done. You may not have a lot of leg room, but you're sitting in beautiful seats. Well, this one's had all of the chrome delete and all the badges deleted. No bow tie, no Chevelle anywhere. The beautiful bronze color, modern LED lights in the interior. Looks like something out of a video game as well. Well, you're never going to put the top up, so why bother to put it on? $450,000, that's the number that goes on the Summit Racing Sold sticker as these cars all go back out to the tent to be on display all weekend long. You can get a good look and see what they sold for. This is an Audi R8 GT in Mythos Black over Black. Well, I imagine a lot of you are like me, and the first time you saw an Audi R8 was in the Iron Man film. When it came out, it had a V8 engine, 4.2 liter, shared with a lot of Audis, but then the V10 came later, shared with the Lamborghini Gallardo. But now here we are, 2024, the Audi R8 is out of production. This was the last year, and this one, the GT, to commemorate it, brand new in the wrapper. Uh, let's see, we've got a sticker price right here on the uh, MSRP. $253,290. Just 41 miles on this car. It's number 264 of the final build out of 333 final editions. Take a look through the back, the glassed in engine. You know, I, I spent a day, uh, a week one time with an Audi R8. And, you know, I actually found it pretty frustrating because I couldn't find a road where I could drive it to its limit. It's one of those cars that is just so good. It hugs the road so well. By the day the time that the week was over, it was like I just couldn't find any place where I was capable of getting this car anywhere close to its performance limits. $265,000 is the hammer price for that Audi R8 GT. 
Let's check with April Rose. If you ever come out to Barrett Jackson, you can hang out in the staging lanes. This is where all the cars on the block roll through like this beautiful 1987 GNX. Now they only made 547 of them and it has super low miles. It was parked when it was new, 282 miles. That's why you see all the dirt still left on. They want to tell you this is a true survivor. Now you can see on the dash, this is number 332. And they were faster than a Ferrari F40 at the time. Now they started as a Grand National, sent off to get tricked out. That 3.8 six cylinder got a larger turbo, an intercooler. They got fender flares and those sweet mesh wheels all done in all black, all of them, no flashy colors. Nothing says, look at me, it's not a show off until you hear that turbo spool up and it's the most beautiful symphony you've ever heard, Bob. Has there ever been one of those, April, that you didn't like? I uh, haven't seen it. Here is lot 1413, a 2005 Ford GT with all four options. <laughs> That's the important thing. A whole whopping four options that were available in this car back when it was new and all four of those options together added about thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. So what were they? Well you got the polished BBS forged aluminum wheels the red painted brake calipers the upgraded Macintosh stereo system and of course those very expensive racing stripes. Well, and what you got before the options was an amazing car. Mid-engine 5.4 liter supercharged. That supercharger sits right behind your head, and you get to row your own gears with a six-speed manual. So this is an analog supercar right here. One of the, my favorite cars that I have ever driven. Yeah, not only does it work great, it looks great. It's, you know, it has that GT40 look from the late 60s, but the great thing is they've done a perfect job of making it just a little bit bigger. I always call it an 11 tenths car because if you've seen, we've had a couple of the GT40 Superformance cars go across the block. They're smaller. $410,000. We'll send that for GT to its new owner, plus 10% buyer's premium. Let's check in at the McGuire staging lanes. The sun is setting, but not the level of interest in the cars that keep coming to the block. Nearly 2,000 cars total in this year's Barrett Jackson Scottsdale winter sale. Here's a 1964 Lincoln Continental customized convertible. Well, this body style came out in 1961. Elwood Engel was responsible for it. If you've ever seen the 1959-1960 uh, Lincoln Continental, it is much, much wilder looking. And they decided it was so expensive to build, and frankly, that wasn't forward looking. They decided to come up with a completely different concept. That's what Elwood Engel did, and this was the car they came up with, and it turned out to be a huge hit, especially when you compare what Cadillac had in 1961. It was a completely different concept. Concept. And check out the number on this build. Well, you saw the whole crew get out of this car like it was an episode of Entourage. One of these Lincolns was a popular fixture in that show. You can see it looks like a supercharged Coyote under the hood, sitting on a custom chassis, nice and low, with the oversized wheels that look stock, though. Beautiful build. Well, that may well be a world record. Six hundred thousand dollars. Great collector John Stalupi and his uh, Cars and Dreams Museum down there in Palm Beach, Florida. Wow. Among the cars coming up are the, is this 1972 Chevrolet K5 Blazer with a 6.2 liter V8, just completed by Decked Out Customs in Oxnard, California. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Beautiful night outside for more than one reason. Thank you, ladies. I'm Bob Barsha. Thanks to Mike Joy for sitting in while I took a little bit of a breather. He now rejoins the stage rotation with Tyler Hoover and Rick DeBrule, and April Rose is out in the stage of things. We've been talking all week about Fantasy Bid, brought to you by Dodge. The winner at the end of all of the 2024 Barrett Jackson auctions will take home a brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet. So let's take a look at who's in the lead. Brody T. By a substantial mark over Johnny A, who led earlier. Ten of the Fantasy cars have now crossed the block. Two are left, so there's still time 
make hay in the scoring. Now on the block is lot 1417 and 1972 Ferrari 365 GTB4 Daytona Spider Scaglietti conversion. Yeah, so this started off as a coupe Daytona. Um, and it was converted into a spider, but it wasn't just converted by anybody. It was converted by Scalietti. Scalietti was the coachwork company that was based in Modena, just across the way from Ferrari, and was responsible for building some of the most famous Ferraris that came out of Italy during the, the you know, that era, the 250, the uh, Testarossa. So to have a conversion done, if you're going to have it done by anybody, well, Scalietti is the company you want to have do it. Technically, we call these cut spiders when they were born as coupe. Uh, Richard Strayman's company outside Los Angeles did a lot of these on the West Coast. But as Rick says, this is the way you do it right. So this has the pop up headlamps, but without the stainless steel band that was on the earliest cars, it does have the Borani wire wheels with the three eared knockoffs and of course a gated shifter for that five speed transmission. Red line, well, 7,000, of course. Yeah, you make a great point about the Scaglietti conversion. Basically, it's the factory taking the roof off a coupe once they realized that these spiders were enormously popular. You can find some that have been done by chop shops here and there. But uh, as my friend Dario Franchitti, who has a factory modified car, will tell you, there's a huge difference. $600,000 rolls it away. I love it in yellow. So the Italian import rolls away. And a Japanese import rolls in. It's lot 1417.1. It's a 2012 Lexus LFA. Beautiful in red with chromed wheels and a light, light beige interior. I don't recall we've ever had two LFAs in one Barrett Jackson auction. Well, I tell you what, we're seeing a lot of things that we haven't normally seen in Barrett Jackson. A lot of things are breaking the bank. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's that Brabus six wheel drive vehicle that just went across or two LFAs. And as we mentioned earlier, this was never designed to be a car that was going to make money for Lexus. It was just to bring a halo, it was just to bring style, and just for everybody to get the attention to know that Lexus can build performance cars. Five 152 horsepower V10, six speed sequential automatic gearbox. Only 23 of the 156 cars delivered to the U.S. market were done in absolutely red. Those cream leather seats are part of a $9,000 custom interior option. 9,000 RPM V10. So that engine was a combination of both Toyota together with Yamaha working to build an engine that was capable of being considered a supercar. And boy, were they ever able to achieve it. You know, when that thing gets a chance to rev up, it sounds awesome. I'm a little confused by the triple exhaust pipes. Perhaps this is like a Porsche Turbo where five cylinders feed each side and the other one is for the turbo wastegate. Or it just looks cool and different. Formula One cars only had one. $625,000. Back at you, buddy. Nice buy. And sold sticker goes on. But we're going to stay right here because something special this way comes. It's lot 1418. 58 Corvette custom convertible. First year for the quad headlights and a lot of Baroque styling touches. That very toothsome grill, the chrome headlight bezels, the washboard hood, and the stainless truck tusks over the trunk lid. 
We've seen quite a uh, parade of custom Corvettes crossing the block today, and boy, the work that goes into them. And, and you have to understand that just because you buy the pieces, you know, you can buy a, you know, an Art Morrison or a Roadster Shop chassis, just because you can buy a crate engine to stick into it, just because you can buy reproductions of these tusks that go on the back, putting all the pieces together is not as easy as it sounds. There's a lot of massaging that works to get the panels just right. And then to figure out, how do I make it different than somebody else's 1958 that's going to go across. All the work that goes into this, quite frankly, is off the charts in terms of man hours. Black with silver coves and lipstick red interior. Aftermarket gauges, steering wheel. $310,000 takes it. And with that, we go to April. Hey, Bob, out here in the staging lines. We're having a party out here, especially with this 2018 Ferrari 488 Challenge. Now, the challenge means that this is the real deal race car, baby. Now, I fell in love with these when I was working for the IMSA series, following them around, and they are just so, so sweet. Now, what makes them different from the non-racing 488 is the giant spoiler and center lock wheels. Also, you got the racing fuel tank inlet, and there's no glass on the side doors. Now, if you can look inside at all, it's really tough to get in and out of there. They got these huge racing seats with big bolsters and a roll bar are, but the steering wheel, it actually is removable, so it always helps with that. Now, the most important part, it's heart. A mid-engine twin-turbo 3.9 V8 getting you 670 ponies. Man, this is one sweet ride, Bob. It is that. A regular campaigner in the Ferrari Challenge, which is a single mark series. Been racing for decades around the world, more recently here in the United States called some of their races they are competitive now we're at two hundred thousand dollars bid on a 72 chevy k5 blazer custom suv a big bad rest of them out here with a 6.2 liter ls swap black over white two-tone a black and white hounds tooth upholstery two hundred thousand takes it away boy it seems like a million years ago the two hundred thousand was a cause for a claim of the huge crowd here at barrett jackson scottsdale now it's ho-hum Welcome back to Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auction. Here in the staging lanes, the sun may have set, but we still have hundreds of amazing cars to go, including this lot 1429.2. And with a blueprint engine cam, let's take a look under the hood, which has already up the incredible engine bay presentation on the SLR. 5.4 liters supercharged intercooled engine right here that was supplied by Mercedes, but tuned by McLaren to 617 horsepower. You can see it's mounted behind the front wheels, so it is mid-engine on this incredible car that was a cooperation between Mercedes and McLaren. Of course, they're known for their amazing doors, these dihedral butterfly doors, and amazing styling. This one looks brand new. Yes, it does. Sweet driving cars. Thank you, Tyler. Now on the block is lot 1421, 2018 Lamborghini Huracan Performante. April showed it to us earlier. Yeah, an interesting option, zero to 60 in under three seconds, top speed 202, and active aerodynamics, which adjusts the car's profile for increased downforce or reduced drag, depending upon driving conditions. Yeah, it's interesting. You take a car that's a Huracan, and then you say, ah, what else can I do with it? Add a little more performance to it. $200,000 takes it away. The party goes on. Now, here's one of our coming up cars we showed you earlier in the broadcast. Lot 1421.1 is a 1987 Buick Grand National GNX. They bought this car brand new because they watched a TV commercial where they said it was the fastest U.S. production car built. They brought it home, they stuck it in their garage, and they put it under a car cover, and it sat in that spot 
up until about a month and a half ago or so when they reached out to us about selling it here at Barrett Jackson. Truly an opportunity to buy an absolute garage barn find that has not been touched since it was parked in 1987. And that's wow. why we didn't have a detail. Still has the original uh, dealer plate on it. Tony Moore Buick, Lawrenceville, Georgia, north of Atlanta. So a one owner car and in the garage since May 2nd, 1988, 282 actual miles. Now, normally when a car gets up onto the block, it has been sh buffed and shined multiple times. In fact, there's a crew of, of people shining the cars just before they get up here. Not this one. They've left all the dust on it. Well, that's what their point. It's in the wrapper. Once again, if it's been parked all this time, not sure how old the dust is, but look at the seat wrappers. Look at the back seat cover. It is brand new. Well, let's not go quite that far because there's been some age deterioration, and I wouldn't call it patina. Up here at the front bumper, there is a, a rubber assembly that separates the bumper from the grill and headlight area uh, so that it can react to collision and you know, age has taken its time. Maybe uh, ultraviolet rays if, if there was a window in the garage. We don't know. All we know is that this car is all but factory fresh because it was put away new. And the point being, as we often say, they're only original ones. If you want to see how it rolled off of the line, this is exactly the car you want to take a look at. And the rubber in the back has had the same kind of deterioration and cracking as the piece in the front. Well, we're at two hundred thousand dollars, so I would imagine replacing those parts would be pretty easy and inexpensive. Honestly, this is not a car you're going to get in and drive on the highway because you may have some of those same issues in the engine as well. Oil seals that don't work as well as they used to rubber pieces before you would drive this. You would have to recondition it, but I have a feeling nobody's buying this to drive it. Let's call it a project car. Two hundred ten thousand dollars. Nicely done. Um, what do we have next? Uh, 1972 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom SUV. You know, there have been so many of these this week, in, in, and Broncos too, in this light metallic mint green. I'm beginning to really like it. I'm a sucker for these GM two-tones, uh, white down the body side, but this is a monochrome treatment. You want the two-tone, you better go under the hood for all of the engine dress-up equipment on this 6.2-liter V8 is the secondary color of off-white. This one built by Decked Out Customs, which is out in Oxnard, California, just north of Los Angeles. They bought a bunch of them. They've also had some of the cars that were in the Barrett Jackson Cup, one of the 47 that was uh, that was part of that show. Again, a recently completed build, so we're not going to expect to see any uh, evidence of dust and rocks on our chassis cam. Not sure we need the chassis cam. You could almost walk underneath this after uh, the lift that it's gotten. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, finish that beautiful man green on the oyster interior. Roll off to the to the Little shorty exhaust on this one that uh, ends under the body in front of the rear axle. $220,000 takes it. Now we're selling a car for a worthy cause. Well, JDRF is one of our favorite charities, and Ford Motor Company, we can't thank them enough for everything they do. Matt Simpson, general manager of Enthusiast Vehicles for Mo Ford Motor Company, tell us a little bit about the VIN 1 Dark Horse we have here. Matt? Yeah, we're really excited to bring VIN 1 all-new Mustang Dark Horse here to raise money for JDRF. We've been partnered with them since 98, raised over $7 million just here at Barrett Jackson. We're gonna make that number a little bigger tonight. Dark Horse, first all-new Mustang nameplate over two decades. Mustang's been in its, we're gonna celebrate our 60th birthday this year. Mustang's never left the market. We have no plans to. Dark Horse, this is VIN number one, blue ember metallic, all-new color, handling pack, appearance pack, Recaro's painted stripes. Notably, this is the most powerful five liter V8 we've ever put in a Mustang, 500 horsepower. Ford Motor Company still making V8s, no plan to stop. Great card here to raise some money. Thank you, Matt. 
Let's raise some money for a great charity. Thank Ford Motor Company for donating the VIN ones and not keeping them in their museum, but raising great money for great causes. Go, Joseph. Now, usually, when you buy VIN 1 at a charity auction at Barrett-Jackson, you have the right to order a car, and then you have to wait for it to be produced and delivered to your dealership. Not this. This car that is on the stage right here is VIN 001. The winning bidder writes his check directly to JDRF and gets to drive this car home. And I love the fact that they've come up with a dark horse name. By the way, this is the second dark horse we've had cross the block this week here at Barrett Jackson. Of course, this one's special because it's 001. And as I said, it's really the first new name. I mean, they're not calling this a, a boss or anything else, a Mach 1 that they've named that they've used before. They've come up with something that, that is, you know, reaching to a new audience, something different that we haven't had before. And they've done it not by massively boosting the horsepower, you know, taking from 480 up to 500. I love the simplicity of what they've done. They've made this attain obtainable. It's a special car that people can afford. Sure, they've done the Boss 302 twice. They've done the Mach 1 twice. Ford wanted younger buyers to have a Mustang of their own. And this is it. Auctioneer Joe Moss guiding a future talent with the gavel. $300,000 for a great cause. Research into juvenile diabetes. We've got a break coming up, and we'll be back with more Barrett Jackson now at the bottom of our seventh hour on the air of 10 on FYI and here on the History Channel. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Night has fallen overhead, but it's a balmy Arizona evening. And the action continues on the red hot Barrett Jackson auction block. It's been an amazing day. Millions of dollars in the cars sold. There's a beautiful Chevy Corvette custom convertible heading out the door. Next up will be a 1956 Ford Thunderbird custom topless roadster. And the name of this car is Freebird. Of course it is, because it's a freestyle version of a 56 T-Bird. Lower, a much more modern 5-liter V8 than it was born with. Disc brakes all the way around. Gleaming base coat, clear coat, gray metallic paint, and dark red interior. Yeah, the engine bay presentation with this Coyote is just beautiful. All the wiring tucked in, hidden underneath the wheel wells and the firewall. Lowered to the ground and nicely shaved with the door handles. Chrome removed in the right places. And it's a topless roadster, so look at those humps in the back. Yeah, the little headrest fairings here kind of look like the sport tonneau that was on the uh, third generation Thunderbird available as, as an option. Beautifully done. <laughs> Free bird, of course. Beautiful engine turned interior. You can see how they LED backlit the gauges in there. Looks like vintage air system stereo as well. Beautiful. 
The trunk is finished as nicely as the interior. Leather lined, top and bottom. And I think those wide wheels in the back would not have fit a stock body or chassis, so it's been tubbed a little bit as well. $350,000 takes it. Now, we can tell by the prices that these cars are bringing where they stand with the bidders, but how about the average fans out there? What are their favorite cars from this massive collection? April Rose went to find out. love coming to Barrett Jackson, but especially here in Scottsdale with over 2,000 cars crossing the block. This is the pinnacle of the auction world. And my favorite part is finding out what everyone's got their eye on. Well, I like the Italian cars like the Ferraris and Lamborghinis. I love the GT40. So far, I've really liked all of the Broncos, especially the vintage ones. My favorite was the Sea Ray. There's a 37 foot Sea Ray out there. Fantastic. I'm going to try to convince my wife to let us live on that. <laughs> I love that Packard, the purple Packard. I've got all the girls, and I'd, I'd load them up in there and we'd go get ice cream or something. So. Okay, so you're dad of the century, pretty much. Dad of the century in that car. What do you have your eye on? Demon 170. Okay, so you like power. A lot of power. And style. And horsepower. And going fast. And doing wheelies. <laughs> the color matter? Uh, it's red and it matters. It's freaking unbelievable. Hey guys. There is a 1972 Porsche outside with the deepest black you've ever seen. It is absolutely gorgeous. So this Maserati, I love the white exterior and then it has the butterfly doors. She is dangerous. My dream car since I was a kid was that Lexus LFA, and if I could afford it, that would be it. That super bird back behind me over there, just a giant fan of it. We should take a ride in it later, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1954 Ford Pressliner. That was our first car, the first date that I took her out in 61 years ago. It isn't 61 years ago. It's about 64 years ago. Oh, see, you're in the doghouse now. What do you have your eye on? All of them. <laughs> there really is something here for everyone. I could do this all day. Just the endless variety that you only see at Bear Jackson. No question about that. Thanks, April. And that old boy is in the doghouse. Here's lot 1425.1 and 1955 Chevy 210 Custom Coupe. So born as the mid-level sedan at Chevrolet, but now it has a new 485 horsepower LS3 engine, 4 l 80 automatic transmission, and the body and cab on this are completely new from uh, Real Deal Steel, reproducing these. Modern LS engine, modern art horse and chassis underneath, extra stopping power, and you can see that interior. They went full custom on it. It looks like a center console that wraps front to back in that thing. Now the 210 trim along the side is long gone. Beautiful interior, all but full length console. It sells for $100,000. And the Summit Racing sticker goes on. The sales price, 100 k written in. Off it goes, back to its parking place here in one of the showcases. And then on to its new home. Back to the block now. Here's a 66 Chevy 2 Nova Custom Coupe. There is no end to these 66 and 7 two-door hardtop Novas. This one also has an LS swap, root beer metallic with a cognac interior. Again, full-length console, modern gauge package. Very unlike the compact economy car this was born as. Yes, and it's named Novatron, like it's a transformer. You can see the ground effects and the lower. That's where all of the aerodynamics modifications have been done to make this thing look, well, 60 years newer. A lot of thought went into it, and I think it does look really good. Under the hood, ladies and gentlemen, a 
Huge Willwood disc brakes, front and rear. Much wider wheels and tires than it was born with. Aerodynamic enhancements, front and rear. Debadged, dechromed, decontented, but uh, delightful. Most certainly, to think this has started out probably as an inline six economy car that cost well under two grand, and now it has this center exit massive exhaust, fire breathing LS under the hood. Beautiful color. And $150,000. Hopefully, the consigner will think it is a beautiful sale price. Now don't forget Barrett-Jackson.com is your source for everything related to the world's greatest collector car auctions. So check it out. Barrett-Jackson.com. And pulling up center stage is lot 1426.1, a 67 Ford Mustang Eleanor Tribute Edition. Well, this one with the 428 big block and fuel injection in this one. Uh, no air cleaners, don't need them where we're going. Four-speed transmission. Why are there so many Eleanor tributes at Barrett Jackson? Because there are so many people that want to bid on them and buy them. Uh, Heim joints here for the suspension, adjustable camber plate, and bracing all added. Well, take the movie away, and it's just a beautiful design. This was reimagined by Chip Foose for the film, and the body modifications really do set this thing off. And this one is movie accurate. If you look inside, it does have the Go Baby Go shifter and the nitrous in the back window. So Nicolas Cage in the movie could open it up and jump across those that mile of wrecked cars in the climax of the movie. Pepper gray metallic, of course, with black stripes. And Denise Halicki has signed the paper, uh, the certificate of authenticity that it, this is an authorized Eleanor Tribute Edition. Boy, those 67 taillights, when they're upgraded to LED, they just light up the world. Holy smokes. And you can see the side pipe exit exhaust, which was integrated into the body with this chip foos design. That pepper gray paint. A little extra metallic maybe in this one, just to help it pop a little bit with the black stripes. Beautiful car. Three hundred thousand and counting. Some daytime running lights in the front, too. Some blue LEDs, you can see. He just turned the key to start it up. Looks like something out of a modern car there and the two fog lights in the center. It's just such a great design. And being a movie car. One bidder's done, and the hammer falls at $340,000. And a smooch for good measure. Wow, nicely done indeed. So, what's next? A 67 Corvette Custom Convertible. Just a second. Hold on just a second. 1427 is where we're at. 1427, the board is correct now. The board is correct. Let's start over. 1427 is what we're going to do. Thank you. Here's the 1967 Chevy Corvette Custom Convertible. It's powered by the LS3 engine, Borla ITB induction pair, six speed manual transmission. The board is correct. The right car is on the block. Here's 1427. You know, if you've been watching our coverage of Barrett Jackson all week long, hours and hours, and lots of cars crossing the block, you see a lot of 
a lot of commonalities. We've seen a lot of SUVs from Ford and Chevy, a lot of Corvette customs and so on. You may be thinking, well, aren't they all the same? No, they're not anywhere close to being the same. And if you are a savvy bidder, you're checking them all out to figure out which ones are in your budget. And if you don't get that one because you're out bid, there's going to be another one along fairly shortly. This uh, Corvette has a 427 cubic inch LS3 done by Blueprint Engines, which means the owner got a dyno sheet indicating horsepower and torque figures as they test all of their engines before they are shipped out. Got a Roadster Shop chassis, beautiful Elkhart Lake blue paint. And of course, you could get a 427 in 1967, highest horsepower 435. Obviously, this one's going to have a lot more than that. Modern chassis underneath and braking help this thing handle and stop as well. You see some slight body changes as well. Modern side view mirrors, unique touch. So here's the thing about that horsepower rating. A horsepower curve starts off and goes up and peaks and goes over. If you look at the horsepower curve for the 435 horse engine, it goes up and it stops. For insurance purposes, maybe. Conservative estimates, that engine put out 475 to 500 horsepower. Elsewise, why would you pay hundreds of dollars more for the 435 than the 425 just below it? Another six-figure sale here at Barrett-Jackson. Plenty more where that came from. We've got a couple of hours to go yet. Coming up, to my earlier point, a 1970 Ford Bronco custom SUV, five-liter V8 Ford, all sorts of goodies. Check it out. Welcome back under the big top. How about that view from the luxury boxes? The packed bitter floor, grandstands full of fans, luxury lounge across the back of the room, all a part of the Barrett Jackson collector car auctions. Now on the block is lot 1428, a 2006 Hummer. Now rolled away. But hold that thought. Here's lot 1428.1, a 1964 Jaguar E-Type Roadster. Well, Malcolm Sayer was the guy who designed this, but he doesn't like to call himself a stylist. He would call himself an aerodynamicist because that's where he came from. He came from the aviation world, and it was all about aerodynamics. And when he was designing this car, it was all about how sleek could you make it go through. Series 1, 1964. Of course, it has the covered headlights. It also, under this hood, as the 3.8 liter engine. Later they would move to the 4.2 liter engine, which we saw roll across the black earlier today. Those are Dayton wire wheels, rather than their uh, British Dunlop equivalents. I believe these are 72 spoke, and the Dunlops would have been 60s. Opalescent maroon, both the exterior and the maroon interior as well. Beautiful Series 1 car. Henry N. Manny was Roden Track's Formula One correspondent, and he wrote of the XKE or the E type when it first came out in 1961 and called that car the greatest crumpet collector known to man. You know, it's interesting when you look at the evolution of the, you know, the XK series, of course, this being the F type, then they went, you know, went through the XKJS, the XKJ, XKS, the XK8, the XKR. I don't think they really got back to the proper roots until they got to the F type, which when you think about it was the actual true evolution of the E type. Now the rear suspension on this car is quite unique for its time. The differential is mounted to the frame uh, with isolated rubber mounts and there are the disc brakes are inboard and then there are half shafts to carry the power out to the wheels through the uprights. That XKE suspension has found its way onto many, many street rods since it was introduced here. 170,000 takes it. And if you're wondering what Henry Manny meant by crumpet, she just wrote on the sold sticker. 
Here's lot 1429, a 2011 Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. Wow, what a beautiful supercar this is. The return of the Gullwing. And in its modern version, not only do the doors lift up Gullwing style, but for safety reasons, they had to incorporate a mechanism to blow the doors off the car literally in the event that it overturned. They had to do that in order to get federal acceptance for the Gullwing doors. But what a unique styling touch. Not so unique anymore since Tesla's done it with their Falcon Wing doors on their SUV. But yes, this is the way it should be. We're used to seeing the letters AMG on more than a few Mercedes that have crossed the block this week here at Barrett Jackson. But what is unique about this is this is the first car that AMG essentially designed from the ground up. They didn't just take another Mercedes, do a few modifications, slap on the AMG letters. This is an AMG designed and built product. They wanted to see what they could do, and this was the first time they did it all on their own. $192,000 for that Mercedes-Benz AMG. And next up is a car that April showed us earlier. 2018 Ferrari 488 Challenge. Well, there are Ferraris and then there are Ferraris. Some are a dual purpose road and track cars. This one is going to the racetrack uh, to race in IMSA. There's Dennis Collins, the consigner uh, of this one. Seven speed Formula One automatic transmission behind that turbocharged V8 with 670 horsepower. Yeah, because this was used in the Ferrari Challenge, and an important thing to notice is what is here on the car card, where it points out not street legal. This is purely built for the track. This is a race car. Ferrari started doing the concept of the Ferrari Challenge with the 348s, and then as time evolved and their cars evolved, they also began to evolve and move them along, and now we were at the point where with the... Uh, the 488, well, it was a much more sophisticated race car. Rick, I won't differ with you because it's probably not street legal a lot of places, but it does have a 17-digit VIN. There is probably a title that accompanies it. I bet you I could get plates for this in Florida and other states that are quite a bit liberal as to what they will and won't register. It'd be fun to try anyway. Well, and I think the point that Barrett Jackson makes when they write that on there is that most places you go, you're not going to be able to do it. You might be able to do it by twisting a little bit here and there, but they want to make sure that the people who are buying the cars here at Barrett Jackson know what they're buying, that this isn't just another cool looking Ferrari that I can go, you know, drive in, well, North Dakota. $152,000, and that gentleman has it. Now to April. Hey, Bob, I'm with this 1968 Shelby GT 350H, and it is a true survivor. It is so cool to see because not many are left that are as beautiful as this. Now, it also has a cool story. It was ordered by Hertz to be a rental, but never picked up. It's had four owners since, but one parked it from 84 to 2019, and that is how it survived, including this beautiful candy apple red paint. It's been completely gone through with everything repaired and rebuilt as needed, but still preserved its originality. Now it's got the 302 V8 automatic optioned with factory air and take a look inside. It's just as original with that saddle interior, original working AM radio, and get this, it even has the original headliner. How is that possible? I have no idea, Bob. 
It's a long story. Now on the block, a 2005 Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren. Well, the Silver Arrow Edition, and look at how this paint reflects the light. Crystal Lorite Silver. And only available on these last build-out editions, Crystal Lorite with the dark red interior, the 300 SL Silver Arrow red leather interior. Wonderful car. And the importance is it is both Mercedes and McLaren, back when Mercedes owned about 40% of McLaren. And so this was a joint project built in between 2003 and 2010. And if you look at the nose of this car, you'll notice oh, it doesn't look like the, uh, the other Mercedes that we've seen going across the block, the homage to the 300 SLs with that wide grill. What you have on this one is what we'll call the anteater grill. The anteater nose up here because this was supposed to emulate a Formula One car. Not gullwing doors, but rather butterfly doors. Uh, hinged from the A pillar at top and bottom. And there's that beautiful interior. Just an amazing performance car. And if you think this paint looks bright here, you should see it out in the Arizona sun. Just for the record, Mike, everything looks better with the Arizona sun. Unless, of course, it's August and it's beating down upon you. Closed in on $300,000. Well, you know, these are cars are actually selling pretty quickly here at Barrett Jackson these days. And for an auctioneer to figure out where in the corner of the skybox is one last bid, it's not easy. $302,000 at the hammer. Oh, what have I done? You bought your dream car. Okay, now here's a vehicle we showed you earlier, a 1974 Bronco Custom SUV. Well, it's called a Custom, but I like the way it stays true to its roots with a standard Bronco grill here. And we'll try to get the hood up. Oh, we're close. Just one more secondary latch. That's it. That's it. We've done it. Here's your five liter, modern five liter V8. Under hood, ready to go. 6R80 automatic transmission, Dana transfer case, aluminum nine inch Ford rear end. Three inch body lift, two and a half inch suspension lift. Ready to go anywhere you'd like. Yeah, we've seen a number of these that have crossed the block this week and really it just boils down to what combination do you want? because it could be built that way and we've seen everything come across you know with the Dana 20 uh, transfer case that this one has looking underneath the great thing with this lift is I can pretty much see everything the way it's been built and it is brand new it's essentially just rolling off the block for the first time. One hundred forty seven thousand. Brought a smile to the face of John Stalupi. We've got a break coming up, but as you can see, we have lots of cars still to come. So stick around. We've got hours of coverage remaining here on Super Saturday at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale inside this nine story. Each year, Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auctions gathers 2,000 of the world's finest collectible cars, sends them across the block this year at no reserve. On the block is a 1970 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom SUV. Well, this one's been treated to an LT1 small block, but it's a Chevy Connect and Cruise engine, 460 horsepower. Uh, it's an electronic fuel injection, computer controlled, but Chevrolet sells the whole thing as a package. Engine, transmission, a computer, all the electronics and the wiring. Uh, as they say, all you have to do is mount it, connect it, and go cruise. Great way to go hot rodding. 
So I love all the detail that's been done on this, and I love all the details that the consigner is giving us. Remember, each one of the vehicles has what's called a car, car card. And in, in the car card, this is a description, you talk about the fact they have special Altman latches right there. Altman bear claw latches. They've given us every single detail about that. I read a car card the other day that talked about the owner history that came with a 56 Bel Air, including what they found in the ashtray when the most recent buyer bought it. Gum wrappers. Now, did I need to know that? I don't think so. $250,000 took that blazer and down in the McGuire staging lanes. Here's Tyler. Well, if you're watching television in disbelief, the shock of how much these customs are bringing, well, you have to look at it much more closely and look at it as artwork, as fine craftsmanship as it is, like this 1950 Chevrolet 3100 custom pickup truck. And just look at the details here. The Torx bolts, the custom welded radiator, the LS3 engine that's been painted to match the car with the carbon fiber covers. And then you can see, of course, the perfect paint job. But the details continue when you go into the interior, which will work our way down here. That carbon fiber treatment continues on the inside here with the dashboard and the center console. Diamond stitch seats. And it can't just be pretty on the outside and all the places that you can see. It has to be pretty underneath. And they wanted to show it with this truck by making the wood panel bed go up. And you can see the air suspension system here. Two air compressors to fill up that tank to raise and lower the suspension. In its current form, it slams to the ground along with the fuel tank and the chassis that matches this orange color. Just flawless artwork. Well, keep an eye out for it. Thanks, Tyler. Now cruising up to center stage. Lot 1432.1 is a 1972 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom. If you didn't get yours earlier, here's another shot. Another beautiful GM two-tone. This one is teal and silver, wearing the colors of, let's say, a late 80s Blazer on this 72. And, well, they brought the whole family as the consigners and that young lad hop out of the car 6.2 liter chevy ls swap as we've seen many many times uh, power running boards coil over shock remote reservoir shocks awful lot going on here yeah this was done by z's radical rods another uh connect engine where they can uh, gm connect and cruise and of course, underneath, it's got all the things that you want. I mean, it's got the uh, NP205 transfer case, the Dana 60 axle assembly. You know, really, like I say, this, and look at, if you look underneath, look at the lighted suspension under there. And that is all absolutely brand new and fresh. So is the interior, kind of a cafe au lait treatment here. Brand new seats in a very nice dark tan or light brown leather, if you will. Uh, that is a bench seat, not buckets. That little centerpiece flips up. Uh, seating for three, if you wish, across. And a roll cage to help at least the front row and potentially some of the back row as well. So they've thought about all those little things. And of course, there you see underneath that uh, rear end. And then I, I love all the detail that they've got just in the, uh, the pinstriping that went around the Chevrolet lettering right there. Wow, $180,000 bid. The bidders appreciate the quality of this resto modification. Beadlock wheels, massive tires. It's what everybody wants these days. $185,000 takes that K5 Blazer custom. And she's pretty happy about that. Another break coming up, and we'll return for more great auction action from Scottsdale. We are back on the block at Barrett-Jackson Scottsdale. 
The bidding continues on this Corvette Custom Convertible from 1964, and the hammer drops at $160,000. And speaking of Corvettes, a newer model will be coming in shortly, a 2019 ZR1. Well, not just a ZR1, but it's a 3ZR. So it's a high performance and a high premium equipment group. It's also got the ZTK track performance packages. So, and in addition to that, it's also got the competition sports seat package. So after it's all said and done, you've added just about all the options you're gonna add to make this not just a better performer, but a more enjoyable car to drive as well. You know, I mean, this is the, end of the line for the front engine Corvette. But as you can see, you know, we've got this beautiful black style and the carbon fiber touches right there and this big carbon fiber wing on the back. Magnetic ride control sold new in Phoenix, less than 3,000 miles on the clock. And the great thing about being here at Bear Jackson is what kind of Corvette do you want? You know, do you want a uh, mid-engine? We've got those going across the block. You want the end of the front engine? We've got those going across the block. You want vintage? It's been redone? We've got plenty of those. It really boils down to what flavor Corvette you want to see crossing the block. And, you know, when this Corvette came out, it was pretty special. I mean, they really went through and built a brand new Corvette. I think I might have mentioned earlier that only two parts when they came out with the C7 Corvette were interchangeable between the C6 and the C7. It was literally a brand new car from the ground up. Sold. $138,000, and that is Dale Ledbetter, who's a regular visitor to Barrett Jackson, buying and selling cars. Away goes that Corvette. And into its place, a 65 Shelby Cobra FIA 289 Roadster. Well, the body looks like the later 427 Cobra, but this is when they widened it to accommodate the wider track that was allowed by the 289. You all know the name Ken Miles from Ford versus Ferrari, and he was a very famous racer and development racer for Shelby's Cobras. I once got two letters and a phone call from Ken Miles back when the Cobra was new, back 1964. To see the rest of the story, my son and I now have a YouTube channel called Joy Riding. Two words, and I'll tell you the whole story about my interaction with Ken Miles. Uh, here's him. I was 14 years old. He didn't know that. <laughs> you are such a tease. All right, we see a lot of reproductions rolling across the block. This is what's called a continuation car. It has a CSX number. In this case, it's 7000 series because it's a 289, not a 427. And I like the fact that they do the 289 continuation cars as well. It doesn't have to be a 427. All right, one uh, spotting cue for the 289 Competition Cobra is that this car was built to run for the FIA World Manufacturer Championship. And in order to do so, it had to accommodate a suitcase of a certain size in the trunk. That's what these bump outs are for, to make sure that suitcase would fit in there and the lid would close. $100,000 takes it up on the block. Now here's a vehicle Tyler previewed for us earlier in the staging lanes. It's a 1950 Chevy 3100 custom pickup. And we'll talk about this so much. So, so, we'll talk about that in just a second. But to your point, there's the great scene in Ford versus Ferrari when Ken Miles is banging away on the trunk because it wouldn't fit a suitcase. All right, back to the truck ahead of us right now, a 1950 Chevy 3100 pickup. And they have nicknamed this I'm not sure if it's oranges or orangus. I'm going to go with oranges because it's pretty orange from top to bottom. Comes out of MS Classic Cars in Seekonk, Massachusetts. Been featured in a couple of different trucks. 
custom orange chrome air paint, uh, which is quite stunning, was painted uh, right here in Peoria, Arizona. Diamond stitch seats, a lot of work out back, too. Well, I was going to say, forget the chassis cam. You can see everything you want to see up here. How about those Borla exhausts? How about that uh, suspension in the rear? All the way to the point you can see the drive shaft coming through. It's bringing big money, and I can see why. The detail on this is spectacular. And I love the way they've got the, the, the orangish tint to the wood to match the color of the truck. Creativity and craftsmanship ring the bell at Barrett Jackson. And this did indeed start life as a real 1950 Chevy. Imagine what it looked like in maybe the mid 50s, probably used and abused. Today it is off the charts. Spectacular closing in on $300,000. The crowd exhorting the bidders. Auctioneer Shane Ratliff about to have a come apart. Here we are, 305. Sold at $300,000. And they couldn't be happier. fun with it, sir. Now, our next vehicle on the block is another of our fantasy pit vehicles. It's a 66 Ford Bronco custom SUV. Well, this will be a little hard to pick because uh, it's a twofer. You know, here is this beautiful all-black Bronco with its five-liter Coyote 425-horse engine. Five-speed manual, Ford nine-inch rear, Dana axle, diamond stitch seats. Uh, comes with a trailer and a whole lot more, like full doors with roll-up side windows and the hardtop. All of this goes with the Bronco. You can have it alfresco. You can have it enclosed. All you have to do is swap a few parts out. Well, not only do you get the hardtop, you get the trailer with it. So you get the way to tow it all as you go. One thing that's different about this particular Bronco build that we haven't seen most of the day when we see a lot of these come over is this does not have an automatic. This is a five-speed manual transmission that they put into this connected up to that uh, modern generation five-liter Coyote engine. Big method alloy wheels with bead locks and a very creative presentation of everything that goes with this Bronco. $150,000 takes it. Excuse me, I gotta put you on hold for a minute. I'm buying a vehicle. Now here's a car that's coming up after a break, a 1971 Plymouth Cuda convertible. Factory powered by its matching numbers, 340 cubic inch engine, automatic transmission, and transaxle. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Things getting a little quieter over there in the showcase area. Occasional cars pulling out to take their place in the staging lanes, coming back with the sold stickers on them. All part of this massive tented complex that houses the entire collection of some 2,000 vehicles, all selling at no reserve this year in Scottsdale. On the block, lot 1438 is a 1958 Chevy Corvette custom convertible. Yeah, this one's just on a Paul Newman chassis with an LT1 engine under the hood, 465 horsepower, going through that limited slip Dana 44. And you might ask yourself, why do we see so many Corvettes here at Barrett Jackson? The bottom line is, this is what the buyers want. We have more than 180 cars, nearly 10% of the entire docket here at Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale or Corvettes. 
but we see them come across in about every form, and continually buyers like them and want them. That man wanted it to the tune of $185,000, or else whoever he's talking to did. There's our Summit Racing Sold sticker with the number on it, 185K. Now, here comes actually a very popular Ford, a 68 Shelby GT 350H. Well, yeah, this is the interesting story that uh, Tyler Hoover was telling us about just a little bit earlier, that this was actually ordered by Hertz to their specifications, but for some reason, it was never picked up. As a result, it never made it into the fleet. So as a result, it was then sold to the public. It's actually been listed in a particular book about Shelby, and this was actually owned by them. And of course, it's a 1968. Now, at this point, the construction of the Shelby GT350 had moved to Ford, moved away from Shelby American. And that happened for multiple reasons. Ford wanted to have more control over it, and Shelby was also taking the attitude that these cars were moving away from what they had initially planned. You know, he wanted those purists, those 1965, 66, which were pretty much just race cars at that moment in time. Now, don't get me wrong. Shelby was always all about making money, but at the same time, he also wanted a little more performance. And when you see where it goes in 69 and 70, you realize it gets further and further away from that original concept that Carroll Shelby envisioned. But if you're a fan of the GT500, 66, 67, boy, this is a great look, especially this front hood. It's just such a meaty looking thing. 1967, it's got two smaller uh, inlets back there. This one, the big solid hood. When they first came out with the one of the modern generations Mustangs, they tried to copy that, and I thought they did a great job. $165,000 takes that away. Or somebody would leave one of those for me to pick up. But there it is. Now to Tyler. Here's one of my favorite new Porsches being built today. It's a 2022 Porsche GT3 Touring. So it is a GT car, but very stealth looking on the outside. Even the color, the chalk gray paint, but it doesn't have all the crazy arrow of the GT3 race car, but all the performance. You see the carbon ceramic brakes right there with the black wheels and then those sport bucket seats on the inside. And this one is optioned perfectly. You can see it has the six-speed manual transmission. Such a kudos to Porsche for making their top-tier car, top car still having a manual. Now this one also lacks the GT3 big wing on the back since it's the Stealth Touring, but it still has the engine, the stock four-liter normally aspirated six-cylinder, which sounds insane. Isn't that awesome? It sure is. Now here's a 69 Mustang Boss 302. We're at 100 and a quarter, 130 and counting. Well, this is cool for multiple reasons. I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of the Boss 302, especially from this era. But what's really impressive about this is it's still wearing most of its original paint, still has most of its original drivetrain, along with that original Boss 302 engine. It's got the original carburetor, the original water pump, fuel pump intake. This has been stored very well. In fact, if you come up and take a look at it, you know, you look at the hood and it doesn't look quite the way you'd expect one of these. It's been beautifully redone. You look at the paint, you see a little fading between some of the panels, but that's okay because you look on up here, it only has 29,921 original miles on the odometer. By the way, uh, at the very back of the car, Mike uh, Joy will be happy to know that the the spoiler isn't at a complete up angle. It's kind of flat on this one, so it's almost coming close to generating some downforce. $130,000 takes it. Cool car. For my favorite color. Well, you've been hearing about it all week. Fantasy bid brought to you by Dodge. The winner at the end of all the 2024 Barrett Jackson auctions will take home a spanking new 2024 Dodge Hornet. 
So here's a look at who is in the lead right now. No matter how many cars we still have to cross the block, remember it's all of the Barrett Jackson auctions in 2024. So we've got a long way to go. You can still play and maybe pick up a nice prize. Just go to promo.barrettjacksonfantasybid.com. Now back to the block we go. Oh my word. What? Uh, 2009 AM General Humvee Custom Military 6x6 pickup. Never have I ever seen an IMSA Humvee. But I'll bet if this was running in the Rolex 24 hours of Daytona this weekend, everybody would get out of its way. Well, you know, they had a few incidents at the beginning of the race. The thing that would happen is, well, you'd get the, into the incident, but you'd survive it better than the, all the other cars. And you'd take out a few cars with you. I can tell you this, when this was sitting over in the showcase pavilion, every time I walked by it, it had a crowd of people. Everybody wanted to come and take a look at this thing because it is such a wild build. Now, this started off as a legitimate Humvee. It has a serial number instead of an actual um, VIN number, which the uh, Hummers are born with. But this Humvee started off in life as military. It's a long way from there. So look at all the coilover shocks and the rocker arm suspension. Of course, you got to have two sets because you have two rear axles. And yes, that's a supercharged Hemi engine sitting there. And we're at a jaw-dropping $390,000, 400 bid. So come back up front, because I'm not quite sure what these things are. Are, are these, uh, you know, front spoilers, or is it just a place to step on? Because it's got that, uh, you know, stop stuff right there. When uh, the guys from Danton Arts Customs and Frenchie Exports came to the shop, they just barely missed SEMA, just weren't quite through with the final details. Brought it down there, and I told them, I said, guys, this has to go to Barrett. It is so amazing, so thought processed out, and so different than anything you'll ever see. And it is an absolute monster on the road. It's got a, a, a Hellcat motor in the back. It is, it is just the, 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 the thought process that these guys put into it. I'll let uh, Frenchy experts tell you. Let's, let's let it roll. Four All right, go. Ahead. And now 450. Well, we keep saying there's something for everyone at Barrett Jackson, but I never thought there'd be this. Well, what I love about this, whether I want it or not, is I love all of the creativity that went into it. Somebody took something and said, all right, let's throw the paper away, start clean sheet. Yeah, it's technically a Hummer, but it's going to go crazy from there. I mean, you know, the mere concept that you've got this mid-engine, six-wheel drive beast of a car. Look at that, with the engine completely exposed. I'm just not sure where they came up with the idea. What were they thinking at the moment they went, yeah, I got an idea. Did you see the shifter? You should. First off, the bomber seats that are there, and look at the, <laughs> look at the shifter. It is a military helmet and more. And we're still going to the moon, it seems. All right, so here's the big question. At what speed do you have to be at to make this rear wing functional? Because I don't know that I want to go fast enough in this thing to make that rear wing functional. Because, you know, you really have to be going pretty fast. up this morning thinking we would see a $700,000 Humvee roll across the auction block. Today, next year, ever. $750,000. Are you kidding me? Good Lord. Wow. 
as it goes away, let's go to April. Hey, Bob, just as exciting, 2017 Viper ARC Extreme. Now, this is the last year for the Viper, and they threw everything at it. This is a street legal race car. I mean, check this front splitter, really cool. Of course, the side diffusers right here in carbon fiber. Details, vents all across. I love the racing stripes across offset with the red that continue all the way to this massive carbon fiber wing. Man, this thing is incredible. Now, the power comes from its naturally aspirated 8.4 V10, giving you 645 horsepower. It has over $55,000 in options, carbon fiber package, extreme aero package. Inside has tons of carbon fiber details. I mean, this car is so, so fast. It actually holds more track records than any other production car in the entire world. Bob? The unmistakable shape. And I mean the car. Here's lot 1440 and 1969 Chevelle Custom Coupe. Boy, gleaming in silver and built by New England Muscle Cars in Lakeville, Massachusetts. A Roadster Shop spec chassis, box coilovers, a GM Performance 6.2 liter LS3 uh, with a six speed automatic and a nine inch rear with 370 gears. When we say nine inch rear, that is the diameter of the ring gear and it's a Ford product. It's a banjo type rear, meaning the ratio, the carrier for those gears is very easy to change. You don't have to take the rear end all apart as you would with a Salisbury axle. So a nine inch became the standard in NASCAR racing, so much so that for 30 years, every brand of race car in the Cup Series used a Ford nine inch rear, but often duplicated. By the way, quick postscript on the uh, the Hummer that went across the Humvee. It couldn't get off the ramp because it was too low. They had to raise the suspension up to pull it off. There we go. Congratulations, Stephen. $157,000. Next car up is the last of our fantasy bid vehicles. Good luck to everyone playing. Remember, the, the game goes on even after we wrap up here in Scottsdale. We'll be in Palm Beach in April next. And the game will go on there. Okay, here's a 1970 Chevy C10 custom pickup called McDreamy. Well, another build from New England Muscle Cars. This is a 5.2 liter LSA engine, fully forged bottom end on that. That means forged crankshaft and rods. I love the color. It is Ferrari Grigio Ferro. And it's on a Roadster Shop Slam spec chassis uh, as well. Beautiful gray metallic with red leather and Alcantara. It's called the Patrick Dempsey of pickup trucks, McDreamy. Uh, I love the fact that they've raised the bed back there. Got these big wide uh, tire fenders back there. And another subtle thing that they've done here, when you look at the rear window, when you look at the front window, there is no accessory. The, the uh, chrome strips that go in there, it's just mounted flush, very similar to modern cars and what you'd find. So that's both back there and up here as well. So it's a nice, clean look. Again, creativity and craftsmanship ring the bell to the tune of $170,000. I wonder if Patrick Dempsey ever copyrighted that Dr. McDreamy. Well, never mind. And he's a Porsche guy after all. He used to be a lawyer, I think, that way. Now, here's a car we flashed before your eyes earlier in the broadcast. Lot 1441 is a 1971 Plymouth Cuda convertible. 1971, the Cuda got a different nose, shared the quad headlights with the Challenger. This is the 340 cubic inch engine, automatic transmission, Chrysler 8 and 3 quarter inch axle. And I love the color, curious yellow. If you went to the art cinemas back in the day, you know what I'm talking about. Curious yellow on top. Let's see what it looks like underneath. As it rolls across the chassis cam, we're going to see that 340 cubic inch V8 engine. Going all the way back to that Chrysler eight and three quarter inch rear axle. 
obviously done. Looks just as good on the bottom on the top. Okay, two things about this car make it unique and special for 1971. First is the color you were just talking about, curious yellow, which, interestingly enough, almost looks slightly green up here on the block. The other thing that's special about it is this billboard right here because it was very difficult to put that on, that 340 billboard. As a result, after a while, they decided we're not going to do that at the factory because, once again, when this was rolling through the factory, they only got about a minute or so to put that on. Well, that's not something you can do in just a minute. So finally they said, look, we're not going to do it anymore. So the combination of this color together with that billboard make it special. Brings a tidy $200,000 at the hammer. Very attractive, I think. We've got another break coming up. But stick around. So much more as we approach the end of our eighth hour of 10 here on FYI and the History Channel. We'll be back as we march to the end of the evening. 47 amazing vehicles gathered in Scottsdale this week to participate in the Barrett-Jackson Cup, presented by Castrol, which showcases the talent and craftsmanship of custom car and truck builders from across the country. And live on our air earlier today, we announced the winners. A 1961 Volvo PV44, known as Iron Maven, won the People's Choice Award. Led by Bogey Leitner, it was built by over 165 women from across the country. Very cool. And the ultimate best of show winner was a 1960 Buick Invicta that was meticulously built by Andy Leach at Cal Automotive Creations. Just a beautiful build. Congratulations to both winners. It was another great event that Barrett Jackson puts together here in Scottsdale. And we are back. And on the block is lot 1442.1 and 1962 Chevy Impala SS Custom Coupe. Yeah, body off, frame off, rotisserie, restoration. Looks great under the lights. $270,000. Now that's styling. Next up, a 2023 Jeep Gladiator custom pickup called Elephant. Well, I mean, you got to take that Hemi name and have a little more fun with it because it's a beast, right? A massive thing. We don't have a trunk, but we do have a big winch on the front. And uh, let's see, the, the elephant that came across yesterday, yeah, here it is. If we can come up to the side, you know, we're used to seeing some of the graphics that you get on some of the Chrysler products. But when we come over to the very side, let me just show this little graphic here. It's, you know, not a Hellcat, not a demon. It is a elephant, a little elephant that they built into it. Pretty subtle, I like that. The paint is pumpkin metallic, not pumpkin, punk M. <laughs> Obviously, they started with a Gladiator. They're proud of that, put that big name on the back. But the main thing is that they've got that massive horsepower engine up front. Over a thousand horsepower coming out of this in the way final version that they've created. And I love the massive torque that they've got. 950 foot pounds of torque. AMW provided the running gear for this one. $175,000. And they got there quickly. And I like the Formula One Alpha Tauri shirt. And there it goes. Barrett-Jackson.com. Remember, that's the place to go with all your questions about Barrett Jackson. Events, tickets, dockets, how to bid, how to just hang out. Gathering of the clan in the automotive business. Barrett Jackson. Here is lot 1443.1, a 2023 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon 170. 6.2 liter, high output engine, torque flight eight speed automatic. It has the uh, Hellcat red eye wide body package, premium group, Demon 170, power sunroof, 
and carbon fiber two-piece wheels. MSRP was $142,000. So why do they call it a 170? Well, technically, it can run on E85 fuel, which, well, technically, is only an 83% alcohol at its max. But if you think about alcohol in drinks, 85% oh. is 170 proof. It's a 170 proof car right there. That is so clever. Must be I didn't think of it. Some marketing guy at Chrysler did. Boy, the sticker price on this thing would have been about $150,000, but you'd have to find one to buy it. Well, $220,000 takes this one. 170 proof. <laughs> Isn't it a little sketchy that the automobile executives were going to alcohol to come up with a name? Oh, I don't know. That's... Plenty of names came out of alcohol over the years. Yeah, no kidding. Now, this is something really special. Looks like something I saw at the Ford season preview uh, in Charlotte. It's a Bronco R, actually a DR race truck. This is one of Ford CEO Jim Farley's pet projects uh, built by Larry Holt's Multimatic. That's the company uh, up in Canada that built all of the Ford GTs, both the road and race versions. And yes, you can buy this truck and take it off road racing right from here. In fact, that's what you're supposed to do with it because once again on the car car, they point out it is not street legal. But take a look at that suspension under there. Take a look at these uh, front struts and everything. The A-arms, man, they have gone to town in terms of the way they built them to be both strong and light at the same time. This is truly a race vehicle. A full roll cage, Recaro full containment racing seats and harness. And yeah, ready, ready to go racing. I would open this door, but I don't believe it opens. All kinds of electronics on the dash. I mean, this looks like the glass panel uh, that you would find in a small airplane. Mounts for the low rents navigation, off-road navigation system. You want to go run the Baja 1000? Here you go. Well, this is absolutely race ready. And you got to remember, Bronco made its name back in the early days, you know, with Bill Strop and uh, Parnelli Jones running the Baja 1000, the Baja 500. And look at this number, $390,000. Okay, $400,000 for a all but race ready Multimatic Ford Bronco DR. And that's where it leaves us. $400,000. I'm sure that new owner can picture himself flying off the dunes, bouncing down the roads of Baja. We got a break coming up as we come to the end of our eighth hour. With two more hours to go here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Lots of cars still to come across the block. Some good money. $300,000 is the hammer price on this Porsche that Tyler showed us earlier. An all but new Porsche GT3. I drive one of these. Carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber roof. This is the touring edition. You take the wing off and the car is worth more. I don't understand that. Mine has the big uh, swan neck wing. This is without. Uh, this is a highly prized car. The big ch question on these is do you order them with these seats, the lightweight carbon fiber bucket seats with these shark blue belts as you see here, or do you get them with the 18-way adjustable seats that some people call sofas? Make mine comfortable. Thank you very much. Right there with you, Mike. 
Now lot 1446 is a 63 Corvette split window coupe. We're at 75,000. Nope, we're at 125,000. <laughs> yeah, it's moving fast. And the reason being, this is a pretty special one. I mean, we've seen a number of customs rolling across the block today where they've taken original 1963s and you know done them to whatever specs they felt they wanted. And this one is an all numbers matching frame off restoration 327 cubic inches under the hood 340 horsepower you know when this was new back in 1963 the price for this split window would have been about 4200 4250 dollars as a base sticker price yeah well those days are long gone especially with this one we're at, right now sitting at 185 zooming in on two hundred thousand dollars And when you look at the car card, boy, they've got all kinds of information here, the way they're decoding it. Looking at the date coded here, the date, they've got every little ounce of information, all the kind of details you want with your, when you're trying to make the point that this is very original, this has all that information to back it up, which is why we're closing in on $300,000. $290,000 for that Corvette. And rolling to center stage is a 1966 Shelby GT350. I'm with longtime Shelby expert and multiple Shelby owner, Jim Wicks. Tell me about your history with this car. I bought this car in Joplin, Missouri. I chased it down in 1971. I ended up buying it for $900. My wife used it as her car, driving our son back and forth to school. And uh, it, we own the car in our family till 2009. Any regrets seeing what it'll bring today? Not a bit, not a bit. It's all good. How about that? Well, my regret is that I didn't buy it for $900. You know, the ability to find and, you know, place them for that kind of money. Although I know when we first started doing uh, the Barrett Jackson auction, you could see the Shelby's rolling across the block, selling regularly for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Yes. 2000, 2002. You're right, but remember how little we made back then? Two hundred twenty thousand dollar bid, because it didn't look like this in 1971. This uh, this is just gorgeous. Uh, Jim told me it was the second Shelby that he had bought and the one that he kept the second longest. He is a serial owner and was a big wheel in the uh, start of the Shelby American Owners Club. Yeah, the running joke. The clear plexiglass windows for the two plus two. And remember, no back seat. Well, this one, excuse me, this does have a back seat. They took the back seat out of these for the R models to go racing as a production sports car. If they'd left the back seat in, the SCCA would have said they had to race it as a sedan. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to beat the Corvettes in B production, and they did. Now, Jim Wicks is in the action here. He buys sometimes for his own account but he's on the phone for one of his customers uh, that includes, well, my wife's nephew is one, and another is a very prominent Ford dealer and collector in Texas. He represents quite a few folks, as he is absolutely an expert on these cars. And it looks like Jim's client is now the owner of that GT350. Great evening. He will sign off. Whoever's on the other end certainly will. Sold sticker goes on. And now in a bright shade of red, here's a 2019 Corvette ZR1. 
Latest, greatest, last, and best of the front engine Corvettes, and this is it in its most menacing form. The ZR1, 6.2 liter V8, eight speed automatic, factory 755 horsepower. This is Sebring orange metallic tint with the carbon fiber hood and roof, very similar to the Porsche GT3 that we saw across the block just a little bit ago. And in fact, uh, the two cars competed for sales, although the Porsche was the considerably rarer and more expensive of the two. Seven thousand eight hundred miles on the clock on this one, and the carbon option includes those beautiful uh, five-spoke, open-spoke carbon fiber wheels, as long as as well as all of the different uh, vent and the roof and the wing and everything else here in carbon fiber. Probably about the most expensive Corvette you could buy in the final year of the C7, 2019. $150,000. that qualify as a good buy? You can make that argument. I think so, Bob. Definitely a great car. Another break coming up as we continue in our ninth hour here on the History Channel. We're at Westworld of Scottsdale for the 2024 Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. We'll be right back. Welcome back under the big top as the auction continues here at Barrett, uh, Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. We're at 270,000 on a car that April Rose showed us, showed us earlier. It's a 2017 Dodge Viper ACR Extreme. Well, ACR stands for American Club Racer. This has the carbon fiber package, the aero package, the adjustable splitter, adjustable wing, all but ready to go racing, limited build, and uh, built in Dodge's one-of-one one program where you tailor the car to exactly what you want to go racing. Less than 800 miles on the clock. I think the sticker on this was like $155,000, and then they added $50,000 worth of options. Well, if it's the original owner and he bought it at sticker, he's about to double his money. Well done. They picked up a couple of cars here during their stay at Barrow Jackson Scottsdale. And next up will be lot 1444, a 1971 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom. Boy, they just keep coming and keep rolling across the block in these great GM two tones. 1971 base coat, clear coat paint, much better than it was born with. Uh, Summit white and this gorgeous bronze uh, with a brown leather and Alcantara interior. Beautiful. Yeah, that nice crate engine underneath there, 450 horsepower coming out of that one. Made it up to a three-speed automatic transmission. Got that NP205 two-speed transfer case. All day long, all last few days, we've seen the Blazers coming across. And Boy, they're just developing and creating their own market here. And then once again, it's this particular body style, both the C10 pickup trucks together with the Blazers from this generation. Everybody just loves them. Now, a lot of these cars and trucks are built with grade five bolts. Race cars are built with grade eight bolts. This truck is said to have been built with 100% stainless steel fasteners. So rust will never be an issue. You know what I love about this? This almost has a stock appearance to it. I can see this is a color combination that you would have gotten back in 1971, back during the Earth Tones era. You get back to the back tailgate, the uh, the little faux wood treatment. Uh, 
once again, it's exactly the way I would have expected to look. So they've taken this to an even higher degree than it would have originally looked when it was new back in 1971. Two-piece tailgate, the fiberglass roof is a turn and lift. Oh, it should have some struts here. And then the tailgate drops down. Seating for five. Wow, that's heavy. One hundred fifty thousand dollars to that gentleman. And with that, let's hear from Tyler. I'm with lot 1455.1, a 1996 Porsche 911 Carrera 4. And with the blueprint engine cam, let's take a look under the hood. You can see this is the last few years of the air-cooled Porsches. A lot of Porsche purists thinks the 911 died when it went to water cooling. I don't think so, but there's certainly something about these air-cooled Porsches. 270 horsepower out of the flat six-cylinder, and cooling is the name of the game with these. You can see there is the inlet for the fan here, spitting out the hot air away from the engine as well. This one has air conditioning. You can see the AC lines running over here along with the intake coming into the flat six. Uh, but this one, look at all the details here. This is the original belt from 1996. And that's because this Porsche only has a little over 600 miles on it from new. This is the Carrera 4, so it's all-wheel drive with a manual transmission. Apparently, it was bought new, driven for a few weeks, and then put away in a warehouse for over 25 years. Now being sold here at Barrett-Jackson, possibly the lowest mileage Carrera 4 993 in existence. That's an incredible story, Tyler. Wow. Now rolling off the stage to put that little bit of extra pressure on the bidding is a 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon. Another one with a big Hemi and the wide body package, 6.2 liter supercharged engine, eight speed automatic transmission. White knuckle is the color over black. Demon air grabber hood, 18 inch aluminum wheels and only 151 miles. So not all demons are created equal. If you got the wide body treatment like this one has with the fender flares that have been attached, you got an extra 10 horsepower, believe it or not. So you get a little more oomph because of course, you know, those fender flares just make you go faster. Sold at $122,000 to that gentleman here in the room. Disappointing an online bidder. So the demon will disappear. And we'll get another 69 Chevy C10 custom pickup. I very much like the way this one is done because this is how most of them came new. They didn't have chrome bumpers. They didn't have fully chrome grills, just the chrome headlight bezel, and everything else was done in kind of an off-white. Uh, it looks like they've dip-painted the whole engine compartment. However, in that nice, uh, tasteful, light metallic green to match the exterior. So we've seen an awful lot of these C10 pickup trucks go across the block today that have been raised, lifted, which have uh, much bigger tires. In this case, they've gone the exact opposite route, slammed it down to the ground, those big, huge hoops. And boy, look at the detail inside here, how nicely it's been done. I'm starting to love this color scheme, sage green and white two-tone with a tobacco interior. And about the only chrome on this truck are the door handles, the trim strips, and those huge wheels. And back to your point, I mean, if you were you know, buying a truck back then, this is pretty much what you would have bought. Why chrome the bam back bumper? It's just going to get banged up anyway. This goes back to, you know, the early days of the pickup trucks. We didn't have chrome grills. It was a truck. Why would you want to dress it up? You were going to use it. I love the fact that they've raised the bed because, of course, once you slam it down, you got to make extra room for those uh, wheel wells. The wheel wells, which normally would have sat significantly below the side rail, is now all the way. I can't even get my fingers in there. This one, I believe, has an air ride, airbag suspension, so it will lay frame.
Well, it's got the three C's, color, creativity, and craftsmanship. That's why we're at $130,000. Fold at one hundred thirty thousand dollars. He's a happy man. Why not? Coming up, lot fourteen fifty three point one is a twenty twenty three Aston Martin Vantage F one edition, four liter twin turbo V eight five hundred twenty eight horsepower, twenty one inch twenty spoke forged wheels, and much more. on the warm Arizona night. The party continues. Hope you're brought enough for everybody. Have fun. That's what Barrett Jackson is all about. Right now, this 67 Corvette Custom Coupe is being pushed away. It's currently at 210,220 now and counting. Well, this one was built by Burning River Resto Mods up in Berea, Ohio, and underneath that hood is a uh, Gen 5, 550 horsepower V8. It's got an automatic transmission, brand new wiring harness, everything from front to back, top to bottom, redone in this. And in this case, what they've done is they've kind of gone with a full blackout treatment. So it's black everywhere. There is no chrome. And even when you look, well, look at the stinger. The, the uh, contrasting stinger is just a matte finish on the black. 230,000. Warm handshake and a smooch. Have fun, y'all. Here's April. Hey, Bob, out in the staging lanes, hanging out with this Minister Beast 1963 Lincoln Continental, completely murdered out. It was not born like this. Everything has been blackened. No chrome to be seen at all. Now, the biggest change, it has a Chevy LS3 6.2 V8. Look at that, baby, all dressed up in there. you got to love it. And like all the iconic Lincolns from the 60s, it's got the suicide doors. Now, take a peek inside. Gorgeous diamond stitched brown leather custom gauges. Very cool bucket seats with that center console that goes all the way to the back and the ever important cup holders because you know you're always looking to play something like that. I don't know if Batman or Darth Vader is out there, but there will be a bidding war between them if they happen to be here, Bob. Well, that would be fun to see. We've already had Batman here in years past. And we're not selling any TIE fighters. Anyway, here's a 61 Chevy Corvette custom convertible. We're at $180,000. Same builder as the previous car. Willwood brakes all the way around. Art Morrison IRS chassis. 19 inch shot nitro wheels that replicate the original Halibrand IndyCar kidney bean wheels. One of the interesting things they've done with the uh, under testing of this is they've used lizard skin sound deadener, and I'm always intrigued when you do that in a roadster. Uh, you're still hearing a lot of noise no matter what you do. Sold at 200,000. And that gentleman greets us after every purchase. The I love you ride. Summit Racing sold sticker goes on. It displays for the whole world what was paid, at least at the hammer. Now with the block, block 1451 and 1968 Chevelle Custom Coupe. Once owned by comedian David Spade, this comes out of the collection of the Phoenix Suns' Bradley Beal. He bought it a couple of years ago. It's been in his private collection. He loves this car. It's just an absolute amazing opportunity to buy a great car. Bradley Beal, David Spade, great ownership. And I should point out, that's Phoenix ownership, because David Spade is originally from Phoenix before he went on to hit the big time with Saturday Night Live. And, of course, the Phoenix Suns player, Bradley Beal. So this is flying local colors right here. Very nice build, GM LS3 V8, 6.2 liters. Automatic transmission, American Racing uh, long tube headers. Magnaflow mufflers, Detroit Speed suspension, 
tubular front and rear with coilover shocks and forge line, forged aluminum wheels sitting there in front of those Bayer disc brakes. And just like with that Corvette that we saw roll across the block just a little while ago and that car that April Rose was pre previewing for us, we'll call it murdered out. Yeah, it's all black. The black bumpers, the two-piece contrasting stripe, which is barely contrasting, is just a matte finish. No chrome, no chrome on the wheels. And in this case, they've even got a black interior, just some red stitching to give it just a little bit of flavor in there. But, you know... Once again, this has been darkened out. It's got a menacing look all the way around. Well, April will be happy to know that Batman and Darth Vader can each have a murdered out car of their own. What they haven't done back here, for example, or up front, is they haven't taken the uh, the fenders and moved them in. They still have a little bit of a stance outside the way the factory fenders probably would have looked. But in terms of the uh, the, the coloring on them, yeah, it's absolutely different than it, what, what, the way it was born. Tell you what, doesn't look like it's got a lot of miles. I was just looking underneath. Doesn't look like it's been driven very far since it's built. So uh, it's pretty nice. Mike McCullough, who's the uh, director of consignments for Barrett Jackson, was talking about what a nice build this was. $240,000. Takes it to its new home. And those little girls cannot wait. Let mom drive. Now, we talked about the enormity of this Barrett-Jackson event with a record number of cars on the docket and so on and so forth. We'd like our audience here on the History Channel to hear from Rick DeBruel, who delved into some of the other numbers at Barrett-Jackson. We have a record number of cars here in Scottsdale this year, more than 2,000, every single one of them crossing the block at no reserve. And while that's a pretty amazing number, it's only the beginning. Let's start with the auction site. Inside the fence here at Westworld, we have 83 acres. That's enough room for Grand Central Station, Windsor Castle, the White House, the Taj Mahal with plenty of room to spare. Under roof, we have 1.2 million square feet. That's enough to fit 18 football fields. Look down, you'll find 80,000 square feet of Swiss tracks flooring and more than 95,000 feet of cable to keep everything running. There are 274 vendors from six different countries. But wait, let's talk about something that's really important, food. There are 45 different food vendors with 78 locations serving just about everything you can imagine. But let's get back to the cars. You got 726 Chevys, 326 Fords, 185 Corvettes, 123 Mustangs, 115 Camaros. We have 61 Broncos and 31 Blazers. You want customs? 813. And of course, Ferraris, 23 of them. And the numbers go on and on. Bottom line, Barrett Jackson is huge in every way possible. No question about that. Just trying to walk around this facility at full capacity is an adventure. This is lot 1451.1 in 1969 Chevy Corvette Coupe. Do you spend a lot of time on manufacturers' websites, you know, ordering your dream car, how you would build it if you could? In 1969, I think this is how I would have ordered a Corvette. 427, 430 horse V8 with 12 to 1 compression, four barrel Harley carburetor, Muncie four speed posit traction rear end, power disc brakes. Nice. And the car sells and makes that gentleman very happy. Another break coming up as we continue here in hour nine of our 10 hours of Barrett Jackson coverage on FYI and the History Channel. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Well, we did have rain the first two or three days here in Scottsdale in preparation for the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. But I have to say, the last four days have been absolutely beautiful. And I can't get over these drone shots above the Westworld facility. Just a fabulous event. 
1453 is a 2019 Lamborghini Urus. Doesn't everyone need a 641 horsepower SUV? Well, note the treatment of this one. The grill is gloss black. The SUV is matte black. Pretty interesting. Red and black interior with silver accents. But otherwise, this is just set to be stealth in matte black. You know, people forget that Lamborghini was pretty early to the SUV craze. Remember the LM002, which was essentially a military vehicle that they produced for the streets? Didn't sell an awful lot of them. But long before Porsche or anybody else was making an SUV, Lamborghini was living in that world for a time. Yeah, if you want some color in this one, you have to come inside for all of the bright red accents and red stitching. One hundred ninety-five thousand. That man has his Lambo Urus. Now the next car on the block is one that we showed you earlier on the way to break. It's lot 1453.1, a 2023 Aston Martin Vantage F1 edition. A matte representation of Aston Martin racing green with silver stripe over an onyx interior. Less than 500 miles from new. Four liter twin turbo V8, 528 horsepower, eight speed. Automatic transmission. Well, this was designed, of course, to celebrate Aston Martin's return to Formula One racing in 2021, a special edition. In addition to all the other goodies you got, most importantly, under the hood, you got a bump of 25 horsepower. So in addition to the suspension components, you got extra power under the hood. Carbon fiber wing and roof on this one. I like that matte green paint. Beautiful Aston Martin. Well, once again, Aston Martin builds one of the most beautiful coupes on the planet. I've always loved him since the uh, very first Vantage that, you know, back in the uh, mid-2005 era. Just an absolutely beautiful car. We see Vanquish's roll across the block, but this paint scheme with the Formula One look to it, and of course, this perfect coupe is such a great-looking car. And you know, one thing that's interesting, it's amazing how many people here at Barrett Jackson this week are walking around wearing Formula One clothing. You know, 10, 20 years ago, you didn't see that at all. These days, man, every time I turn around, somebody's got a McLaren shirt or a Mercedes or Ferrari. 170,000. That gentleman has a new Aston Martin. Well done, sir. Let's go to Tyler. Check out this incredible original Survivor right here. It's a 1962 Corvette, and it was with one family for over 60 years, just a little over 9,000 miles. So this last year, the first generation Corvette is close to new. You can see the original paint, which is so hard to keep on fiberglass to get it all crazed and cracked and such, but this one showing very little wear, just the perfect amount of patina, original chrome as well very old tires I'm not sure if they're original but they certainly are ancient and then you go inside beautiful red interior four speed manual transmission once again totally original 9,000 original miles now the last of the first last of the first generation Corvette they were doing away with a lot of the bling so less chrome no more two-tone but one thing they did introduce was the 327 first year of the 327 V8 once again look at this thing perfect amount of patina and it's racked up plenty of awards from NCRS top flights for being such an incredible survivor Yeah, it's fun to see those cars as they were. Let's see what it draws in a few short moments. Right now, we're looking at lot 1454, a 74 Bronco custom SUV. Another very fresh build with a five liter Coyote V8 and an interesting color from the Ferrari palette, Rosso Fiorano. No shortage of color choices in our uh, first generation Broncos that have been rolling across the block. We see two tones, single colors, bold colors, subtle colors, 
because everybody is either building a blazer or a bronco or a c10 pickup truck and it just boils down to what do you do differently than somebody else is doing it yeah you could paint an original factory color but why why not come up with something more exotic and that's exactly what they've got here big three and a half inch list just breaks in all four corners 100 $105,000 to an online bidder. And that Bronco is on its way to its new home. We'll be back with more when we return to Scottsdale. at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. We're looking at a 1996 Porsche 911 Carrera Ford that Tyler showed us earlier. If only cars could talk, I'd sure want to know why this was put away in a garage for 25 years and only has 614 miles. Porsche had two silvers at the time, polar silver like this with a tinge of blue and Arctic silver more of a gray. This has the turbo twist wheels, uh, the light gray interior, the Carrera all-wheel drive, and appears to be, Tyler, in beautiful shape. Oh, absolutely. I was looking at the engine bay closely earlier, and everything is completely original on this. And whoever put it away was definitely psychic, because these are definitely coveted by enthusiasts. The last few years of production of the 993, the air-cooled Porsches, and it looks fantastic. You know, all of the purists that wrung their hands when Porsche went to the liquid-cooled 996 version of the 911, maybe they didn't realize that the Porsche International Race Cars from the 956 and 962, the GT1, all of those had liquid-cooled cylinder heads. So the air-cooled Porsche was already a thing of the past when they made the switch in 99. As always, it's changed. No one likes change until they like it, and suddenly it's great. Well, the redesign didn't help with the 996. They had the runny egg headlights, and going away from the circular ones was a big faux pas for enthusiasts as well, which they fixed with the 997, the next generation. Yeah, but they had to do it to save Porsche. I mean, you know, they were running into big money problems. They needed to have a more efficient manufacturing system. So mixing both the Boxster and the Porsche parts were necessary, a necessary evil. Beautiful car, beautiful price, $185,000. You know, I think the owner's going to look back at this in 10 years and say, I got a really good deal. And the consigner is going to have a child who will come to driving age and say, you did what with that car? Okay, here comes a 2016 Shelby GT350 wide body prototype. You know, Bob, I think you're actually talking about me because my dad had a 930 turbo that he sold in 1986 with 8,000 miles, sold it right before I reached driving age, and I'm still mad at him to this day. My dad had a Rambler American he sold right before I got to driving age, and I'm really happy. This is why my son Scott gets to drive all of our cars, because when they go away, there'll be no regrets. Well, up on the block now, this GT350 wide body prototype. And it's interesting because it was originally purchased and titled by Shelby American back in January of 2016. It was then used as part of their development plan for their signature edition package. It got a hold of Shelby's S550 chassis wide body package. So once again, this was being used as a prototype by Shelby for what they were going to be doing on their customer line. Right, they developed this wide body package on this car. I'm not sure, did that ever make it into production or did they kind of veer off in a different direction? But this is fully documented as having been a Shelby development prototype car. Well, to me, it kind of resembles the GT500, which came out in 2020, which was wide, wide like this. But of course, the GT350 being more special to me because of that voodoo, that flat prank, flame crank V8, and they came with manual transmissions. 
full roll cage in there with uh, or not full roll cage, but a roll bar with back back bars. No back seat in there, so don't think about this as you know, something you can drive your kids around in. This is pretty special, though, as a prototype from Shelby with that wide body kit. They're calling it a GT350, but it's badged as a 1200R. And one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars takes that. Mustang. Now here comes a sixty-seven Mustang Custom Fastback, following the previous car. Well, earlier we talked about the GT three fifty R model, and this replicates that—the one that was born without a back seat, so they could race it in an NCCA competition and had this big lowered front apron uh, for downforce and increased airflow to that radiator. This has a lot of the Eleanor looks when that's not what they're going for. This is simply a custom creation that's got a lot of the Eleanor touches, a lot of the Shelby touches, all kinds of great stuff that they put into a really nice looking package. Well, it's really hard to find the words to describe the day that we've had so far, Super Saturday. It's been an incredible ride, and we still have more auction action from Barrett Jackson coming your way. Welcome to Super Saturday here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. And up on the block right now, we have a 1967 Ford Mustang Custom Fastback. Well, imagine a custom Shelby GT500. That's exactly what we've got here. It's got some of the GT500 styling touches, the scoops on the side. But you go to that big hood, nope, that's not the way it would have come. And the way the front end is done is more GT500E Eleanor style. Yeah, but when this was built, you probably had to be careful on whether you say it was an Eleanor build or not before the H.B. Uh, Halicki uh, widow had official license on it. There was a lawsuit with Shelby American, and that has recently been resolved where Eleanor's have sort of opened up. But you wanted to give them a body kit and a look. You didn't want to call it an Eleanor a year or two ago. Those are the voices of Tyler Hoover and Rick DeBrule working with Mike Joy. April Rose with us as well. I'm Bob Barsha. $137,000. That man has a Mustang. And speaking of April, let's check in with her now. Hey, Bob, I'm with this 1972 K5 Custom Blazer. You know, it's nice to see these because we're seeing so many Broncos, and this is really beautiful. Now, the consigner is calling the paint blue steel, and I promise you it does turn left. Of course, really cool with these Blazers. The back comes off. If you have three, at least three good friends, they'll help you with it. Now, the power comes from an 5.3 LM7 Vortec engine, four-speed transmission, and it's had a four-inch lift. And check down below, you see those classic Chevy rally wheels painted to match. Inside, take a look, it has all the sweet retro-style digital gauges, and I love these matching plaid seats. Just such a cool throwback touch. It's really fun to see what everyone's doing with these truck builds, Bob. Well, that's a sweet interior, no question about it, April. Meanwhile, back on the block, we're at $127,000 and counting on a 72 Chevy K5 Blazer, Blazer custom SUV. Tuxedo black and summit white and houndstooth interior. Am I the only one that's going to be counting Broncos and Blazers to go to sleep tonight? Well, in that case, I'm about to fall asleep because they've been cranking across the block all day long. Uh, this one's done by Jimmy Speed Shop out of Mesa, which is not very far from here in the suburb of the Phoenix area. They say they have $200,000 in receipts in what it took to build this. Well, it certainly shows. You can see they added the Cheyenne package trim as well with that wood going down the side or fa wood. Nice lift on it. 35 inch all terrains on the front. All the chrome fresh. That houndstooth interior is a very nice touch. Yeah. Big uh, LS engine, 525 horsepower coming out from underneath the hood. All going to the back and the front because this is a four wheel drive. Born a K, kept a K. Oh, 
Well, if there's $200,000 in receipts, we got a ways to go before we reach that point. One hundred fifty thousand takes that blazer. I've introduced enough of them. You think I'd be able to pronounce the name? Next up, lot fourteen fifty-eight, a nineteen fifty-eight Chevy Corvette custom convertible. Chevy had a color like this. Came along a little later, called fawn beige metallic. Uh, this is more of a champagne shade. On the 58, first year with four headlights and a lot of one-year styling touches, as we've discussed earlier. This one's been given uh, much larger wheels and tires than it was born with, and uh, some wide whites to go with it. Shot wheels, these are, in 19-inch diameter. No shortage of 58s in this particular auction. You know, we've, uh, let's see, this one still has the chrome tusks on the back. We sometimes jokingly call them suspenders, because if old people like Corvettes, well, then that's exactly what they've got in the suspenders back there. Modern suspension, Corvette C6 at one end and C7 at the other. I think I counted 14 1958 Corvettes in the auction this week. A total of 185 Corvettes in the auction. That's nearly 10% of the total number of cars that are crossing the block are wearing that Corvette badge. Well, chances are there was plenty of people that came hoping to buy the Jeff Hayes Corvette and got blown out. Plenty of options for them to uh, try something else. The Jeff Hayes Corvette, an amazing piece of machinery, crossed the block earlier today and sold for a cool one million dollars. You can go on Barrett-Jackson.com and look up lot number 1367. And I will never forget the smile on Mr. Hayes' face when that was hammered so Labor of love, great creativity, great craftsmanship, and a great reward. And I remember once again, going back to Las Vegas a number of years ago, when for the first time we started to see Corvette Resto Mods and Customs bring the kind of money that the original versions of were done to a high degree, and you talk to customizers, and they're like, well, it's so hard sometimes to get them back to the original stock, you know, perfect condition. It's so much easier to customize them, and now that is the market. Well, one of those iconic Barrett-Jackson moments was with a Jeff Hayes Corvette that was bought by a comedian, Kevin Hart, which I believe he bought his for in the $600,000 range, I believe, maybe a little bit more. Well, you got to understand, that day he had lost a number of cars, and he was just so frustrated that he kept losing cars, he decided he was in it to win it. He didn't care where it went. He was going to go all the way. It was pretty funny. He had all his buddies there, and it was one of those days. It was like, this is the car I'm getting. I don't care. And if we weren't thinking about the Jeff Hayes Horvath selling for a million dollars, we'd be pretty impressed with this $305,000, $1,000 and climbing on this beautiful 58. It's certainly a nice build. Yeah, we're almost blasé about $300,000 here, but I mean, we've been seeing custom Corvettes rock the block at three to five all day long. Because once again, this is Super Saturday. And again, it's the three C's, color, creativity and craftsmanship. They all come together right here for the jaw-dropping price. $312,000 in the final analysis, and that goes on the Summit Racing Sold sticker for all the world to see. Next up will be a 1969 Ford Bronco custom SUV. Well, this one, I'm not quite sure why, but they nicknamed it Butch, you know? And all right, that's going to be the name of what we're going to go with. It, of course, has that Gen 3 5-liter Coyote crate engine under the hood. The Coyote name, by the way, comes to Ford via A.J. Foyt. A.J. Foyt, the great IndyCar racer who won four Indianapolis 500s. The last two of them, 64 and 74, he won in, uh, I should say two of them, he won in a Coyote car. He was running a Ford engine on a Coyote chassis, and as a result, they said, well, let's use that name. It's kind of cool, so that's why they call it the Coyote engine. 
Well, having a Coyote in a classic Bronco is certainly a winning formula, along with a three and a half inch lift, 33, 35 inch tires. Seems kind of formulaic, but then everything else on every single Bronco is usually so different. You can see this one, they decided to make the bumpers white on it to match the two tone white lower section with the red pinstriping and black trim with the natural tan interior. Looks fantastic. And once again, you know, there seems to be a formula that works. And, and once again, it's great to say, oh, I want to try something different. But the bottom line is this is what the buyers want. They want a Coyote engine. They want a Dana 44 in the back. They want 21 inch, 21 inch wheels or 36 inch tires, as the case may be. They want this particular look, this Gen 1 body. So, you know, it, the bottom line is, well, we may sit there and go, well, why is everybody doing that? Because guess what? This is exactly what all the buyers want. And there's buyers to go around. So you know why this one is nicknamed Butch? The next one is Sundance. You can't make this up. That's going way over my head. Is that our horses? Butch, Butch Cassidy, Cassidy and, and the, the Sundance, Sundance Kid. Kid. Are you oh, kidding no. me, oh, Tyler? Oh, no. I'm so embarrassed. I hate Holy. these young people. Where's your babysitter? Getting late here in Phoenix. Oh, was that a movie? Was that a TV show? Clint Eastwood? Paul Newman and Robert Redford and Catherine Ross. I'll, I'll put that on the list. Great nope. movie to watch. Most importantly, the very last scene when they jump over the cliff. The very last scene is when the uh, gunfire breaks out from the uh, army around the top of the village. Anyway. Um, there he goes. Go to Barrett-Jackson.com and you'll find out what that last car sold for because I was so stunned by what Tyler had to say, I just totally missed it. Remember the song Raindrops Are Falling On My Head from B.J. Thomas? Didn't it win an Oscar that year? Uh, may have. My wife, my wife fell asleep every time she watched the movie in that scene. As soon as that song comes on, he puts her on the bicycle, they pedal around, she falls asleep. Well, I'm going to come over here and lick my wounds and do a chassis cam here on this uh, Bronco SUV. Sundance. Sundance. Yep, you can see this one's matching. It looks like with that Coyote engine, beautiful powder coated or well painted undercarriage there. Beefy drive shaft going to the off road shocks. Brand new fuel tank and exhaust. Beautiful build. I'm sorry I looked ahead in the program, but you know, in school, I always, the books, I'd always read the last chapter first and then figure out how it all came together. All right, as much as I like Butch with that black and white concept, I really love this Brittany blue on this particular one, Sundance. It's beautifully done inside and out, and I just love this color with that white roll bar, chrome trim. It's a great looking truck. And you can see the differentiation with this one having chrome bumpers as well, not a two-tone paint, but then they went with the white roll bar, and it looks like the matching interior. They have something in common, same interior choice. You know, one of the great things about restoring one of these is you can almost do it on a bench. In other words, it's not like some cars where you've got to have everything down on the ground. You're crawling underneath it. You can literally pull the body off its bench height, put it on the bench, do all the work, bring it over and put it back onto the chassis. So it's actually from I don't want to say it's easy to restore, but in terms of the way you're doing it, well, it's easier to move it back and forth. That Paul Newman, he makes some good food. That Newman zone, the soup cans, right? Yeah, that's that guy. That's that guy, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. It's starting to sound familiar, too. Yeah, he also was a halfway decent race car driver, but that's another story. Boy, even the carpet in this is really, really nice. And look how it's edged in the same same color. Uh, very thick, padded. This is a high-quality build right here. And once again, I love this Brittany blue. It is just a great standout color. That just goes so well with the white roll cage and of course that leather that tobacco leather interior and now we're at one hundred and forty two thousand dollars on this thing. And we've seen the full range of prices too with these as they've go to, gone across and you know, some of them redone that pulled in the 80s and some well they've been in the 300 so it's a full range of what people want and like in their Bronco. One hundred forty two thousand dollars. Congratulations to the new owner. Now coming up, 
1970 Dodge Challenger Custom Coupe. 6.1 liter Hemi V8 crate engine, upgraded with new headers and a lot more. Well, as you can see, the aisles over in the salon area here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale have been a major thoroughfare all weekend. Hundreds of thousands of car people in attendance. I think they all had a gander at those fabulous cars. Back to the stage now for a 2020 Ferrari Portofino convertible. These are wonderful cars. 3.9 liter V8, 519 horsepower, seven speed automatic, and the folding hard top. So it's a hard top convertible. This one pretty highly optioned with 9,900 miles. This is a Ferrari you could drive every day. And I would, except the depreciation scale of these is exactly related to the number on the odometer. Every thousand miles you add, you can knock a whole lot off the value you wholesale or retail but boy when you do get behind the wheel this is a treat I sometimes joke you don't have to be rich to buy a Ferrari you have to be rich to buy a Ferrari and then drive it because as you're losing that depreciation it's not subtle it's not simple it's a big drop maybe that's why ours only has 1800 miles on it <laughs> oh you trailer queen well, these were built to be sort of the value Ferrari. Of course, the California was the first generation of this, and a lot of people were kind of mad, saying, you're going to make a mass-produced, mass-market Ferrari? Really? That's not a Ferrari. Well, and this is not an evolution of the California. This is an, a different car, and believe me, it drives entirely differently. California, I believe it's exactly what you were calling it. I think the Portofino is just a whole... Come visit. We'll take you for a drive. There was actually, in all seriousness, a bit of a morale crisis at Ferrari when Luca de Montezemolo, who was the golden boy of Ferrari administration for many years, decided Ferrari needed to take advantage of its popularity by selling more cars. Ferraristas were aghast. We're going to sell thousands of Ferraris, or what happens to their desirability and rarity? Looking at the prices we've seen rolling across the block here, I don't think it's done very much to hurt them at all, to be honest with you. No, we're at about wholesale right now. Uh, once you fold down the hard top, there's not a lot of luggage space left right there. 202,000. Get it? I think that woman looked at well, Macaya with I assume is her husband as though, okay, you got it. Are you happy now? I think the answer is yes. Now, in addition to the car sales, they sell automobilia here at Barrett Jackson. And wait till you hear these numbers. 1940s mobile oil double-sided porcelain rotating Pegasus service station sign hammered away at $92,000. Or how about a huge 1960s Mopar single-sided neon porcelain dealership sign? $100,000. And rarest of the rare, an NOS 1960s Cougar Oil of Alabama double-sided porcelain service station sign? $135,000. Yikes. Well, back to the block. For something cheap, like a classic collectible car. 150, one, uh, 160,000 now bid on a 63 Lincoln Continental Custom. Well, we saw one of these cross the block today, and I think moved more than north of $300,000. So the era of the entourage suicide door Lincoln Continental is firmly in place. This one, of course, all murdered out, black on top, black on the bottom, black grill. And if we just saw the, the body just jump up here. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. The dashboard in this Lincoln is lifted from a 1959 or 60 Chevrolet. Now we see that in a lot of customs, but I've never seen it in a Lincoln. Well, it's interesting that they have the instrumentation to match the drivetrain because it is an American LS3 under the hood from several decades newer, so I guess they thought it out a little bit. Same dashboard that's in my 60 El Camino. Wow. Yeah, the consigner says it pulls out of it on 1959 Impala, so that's exactly why it looks the same. 
And what a beautiful interior it is. You can see it was a four seat with that center console going all the way across. Four cup holders for everybody in your entourage to hop in and cruise. You know, just a few years ago, we saw an awful lot of uh, this era, Lincoln Continentals coming across the block, restored to a very nice degree. But they weren't bringing the kind of money that we're seeing now between the uh, customs, like this one and the one that crossed the block earlier today. 172,000 sends it to its new home, and we're going to April. Hey, Bob, right now I'm standing with this really stunning 1965 Impala SS. I mean, I just love the way they designed the back end with the three round tail lights back here. Of course, the Chevy bow tie to top it off right in the middle. Now, these are super long, so come take a journey with me. I absolutely love these door panels with the SS detailing and all this beautiful red leather. And these are roll-up windows. All you new kids out there aren't familiar with this actually has the window go up. Now inside, you have the tack in the middle, clock down there. I mean, these are just very, very cool bucket seats with the stainless trim all around. Now up front, check out all that power. GM Performance Supercharge 6.2 LT4, 650 horsepower. Willwood disc brakes all around to stop this puppy. I mean, this is a really, really sweet custom that, hey, I would love the keys and drive along the Arizona desert any day in. I'm with you there, April. Now center stage. It's a 62 Corvette 327 300 convertible. We're at $135,000. Well, this is pretty cool. And the reason being is it is an unrestored 1962. And unrestored, but looks great. I mean, sometimes we see them unrestored. And yeah, there's a lot of signs of cracking and this type of problem or another problem. According to the consigner, it's been in the, owned by one family for 60 years. And they say it has less than 10 thousand original miles and they got plenty of paperwork and black california plates final year for the c1 so no contrasting coves let's have a look under hood nicely maintained but not polished or restored upgraded 27 v8 9600 original miles as tyler said when he introduced it to us a survivor and actually, I have a 62 Corvette at home, so I was drooling over this thing. Mine is red, 327, not a fuely, very similar to this one. So not a survivor, though. It's been repainted, not numbers matching engine. It makes me wonder, though, should I get one of those fancy chassis and an LS engine and, and do it up? 150,000. Nice late auction Saturday buy. We've got a break coming up. And we'll be back. Just about ready to enter our final half hour. Live coverage here at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Back at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, looking through the showcase. Sold stickers on most of the windshields. There's still one more day of the auction tomorrow. But the bulk of the best cars have been sold. Well, it's that moment of truth. We've been talking all week about Fantasy Bid, brought to you by Dodge. So let's take a look at who's in the lead after the 12 cars of Scottsdale. Connor H over Ben S, followed by Kenneth C, David F, and Lyle M. And look how close it is up top. So congratulations to Connor H, but be careful. Keep up the great work. Continue to play this year. Remember, the winner at the end of all of the 2024 Barrett Jackson auctions will take home a brand new 2024 Dodge Hornet. Good luck to all. To the block, where the hammer falls at $137,000 on this 72 GMC Jimmy Custom SUV. And away it goes. Next up, lot 1464, 
It's a 1972 Chevrolet C30 custom pickup. Now this one's really cool, actually. We've seen a sea of LS3s, lifted sock chassis. Well, this one, they took a regular cab long bed pickup truck and mounted it on a 2013 2500 chassis, and they retained the diesel engine, Duramax diesel under the hood. Wow, and the number quickly jumps to six figures. Uh, backed it up just a bit, but we're going to get there, I think. Yeah, but it's a nice creative way of doing something a little bit different. I mean, once again, we've seen so many, you know, C10s, K10s crossing the block that have, you know, been done to a really beautiful standard. But I like the fact that somebody went in a different direction because it's not simple. I mean, it, you can't just pull the body off and just slap it back on. To put this body on this modern truck is a pretty complicated thing to achieve. Yeah, and certainly a risk to do something different because a lot of people will take the long beds and then make them into short beds even if they didn't start life that way because that's more desirable. But modern trucks with their crew cabs are so long, if you want it to fit, you need to do a long bed. I personally love the way it looks. It's not the first time we've seen this happen where they put a modern truck on an old, uh, pardon me, hey, modern chassis under an older body, but it's been executed very well. I love that. I can see through the suspension, the frame, the way they've done it. You know, and once again, I don't know the dimensions. I don't know how hard it was, but I, I know in talking to builders in the past, it's always more difficult than you think. After five days on our feet here, I'm wishing I could do the same. Well, the Duramax diesel is just loved in the diesel community. And it's getting harder and harder to be a diesel fan as emissions restrictions pop up and the uh, diesel exhaust fluid you have to add. If it goes empty, it uh, disables the truck. This is one of the last years of sort of the old school diesels before they're getting too choked up to where I feel like gasoline engines make a lot more sense than new, a new diesel. And it's not a case of they simply, you know, plop this onto a new chassis or a newer chassis. You know, there's also all kinds of things they did. They got an upgraded ECU to race torque. They're getting 900 foot pounds. They got that Allison six speed transmission and a manual four by four case. $135,000. And suddenly the winning bidder has a host of friends. Well done, y'all. And now here's another vehicle April Rose showed us earlier. Lot 1465 is a 1965 Chevrolet Impala SS Custom Convertible. And it's another LS swap. This one, uh, super, rather an LT, one supercharged General Motors V8 engine nestled nicely there under hood. I've never seen so many 19-inch shot wheels as I have this week at Barrett Jackson. But this really beautiful cranberry over red 65 convertible was built right close by in Glendale, Arizona, and it is a fresh build. Yeah, by a company called Costello Customs. I will tell you, the 1965 Impala is one of my favorite body shapes of all time. I love the fastback. I love the convertible. Beautiful lines from front to back. It's just a great look. And you look at what happens in the Chevy lines over the next few years. This was leading the way. And what a drastic change it was over 1964 with those angles. Here you've got the beautiful curves coming out the backside. This 1965 body, my favorite. Well, well, the fender peak starting right behind the door. That rear fender peak line is shared with the Corvette Stingray. And uh, you're in good company, Rick. Ed Welburn, the former global director of design for General Motors, says this is his favorite GM design ever as well. Well, beautiful design, but the car is probably quite a handful with that LT4. And this one, a manual transmission as well. But nobody ever imagined a 65 Impala would have this kind of horsepower. This thing is really lowered. I'm only seeing about four inches of ground clearance from the rocker panel to the floor here. 
Impala SS. This we're going to put in the true resto mod category because from the outside it looks, well, with the exception of the wheels, looks dead stock. It's when you look underneath, especially in that engine compartment with that LT engine, boy, it, and that way it's been done inside to a very high degree. So a lot of custom work that went into this, but when it drives by, you're, you know, you're not going to get crazy thinking they've done all this work until you look under the hood. $127,000. Wow. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm already getting nostalgic about Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2024. Congratulations to the new owners. And here is a 67 Ford Mustang Eleanor replica. Well, a little bit of freelancing has been done here. Yes, the the body is very similar to the Eleanor. However, the wheel treatment uh, is not. These are rotunda forged wheels. Looking uh, looking pretty racy here. Five O Coyote underneath, and of course, it's not pepper gray either. I was gonna say, let's call this Eleanor-ish. Well, I actually looked up the color earlier because it was something like white glacier. It looked like a white diamond tricoat, the Cadillac color back in the day, or design you mystic white because I love Mercedes pearl whites, but it's actually a Kia color. When I Googled it up, it came from Kia. Snow white pearl is the color name. That's what it was, snow white pearl. I Googled it and it was a Kia color. Well, once again, classic hot rod style. Go find something from something else that uh, either you've got available or that you happen to like and stick it on this. But for what it's worth, it's nice wing one that's not pepper gray. Yeah, certainly quite a bit different in the grill and the hood treatment. The Eleanor did not look like that with the extra louvers and sort of the ram air intake on the 428. Uh, and everything sort of molded together. If I said rotunda wheels, I misspoke. These are Rohana wheels. And uh, this car has history in recent history in Texas. Judging by the uh, inspection sticker on the windshield. The Shelby style sequential tail lights on the back side. It's a great build. And once again, I, I think I love these white cars that are rolling across. You know, every now and then we'll see something beautifully done in white. We had a white Kudika roll across the block last night. I think it stands out, and I stands out especially with this body styles being very really different. Could you put a, could a couple of blue stripes on there? Yeah, I think I'd love that. I was just thinking. Yep, that would look terrific. Big uh, Monza style fuel filler caps on both C pillars. Wow. And you can see the bumper's been deleted. It's almost like they've molded it out to with the body to with the fiberglass to make it look like a bumper same with the rear window trim no chrome around it's put in like a modern car and one hundred thirty one thousand dollars sends that bright white Eleanor replica to its new home another break coming up as we get into the waning minutes of our five days and thirty nine hours of coverage world's greatest collector car auction, Baron Jackson from Scottsdale. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. Just a few cars remaining on the docket for Super Saturday. Here's a 1971 Chevy Blazer Custom SUV. Boy, what a day it's been. I mean, we've had 10 hours of live coverage, and then they went on the on the auction block hours before we even went on the air. And I tell you, there have been cars crossing the block, amazingly well done, and bringing absolutely amazing prices. Some of the things I saw across the block today, I never thought I'd see ever. And some of the prices, I think we set quite a few records here today. No shortage of great looking blazers like this one that just sold for $72,000. Sold sticker goes on, away it goes. 
Next up is something kind of intriguing. We've had a lot of cars with Hollywood connections. And here's another one. Lot 1472 is a 1972 Di Tommaso Pantera Fast Five movie car. Yes, even after over 10 hours of cars crossing the block, we still have famous movie cars coming up. And here it is. This one was used in the fake, or Fast Five movie. It was actually used as part of a train heist. This thing was riding on a train. They were able to break into it, bust the thing out. They had a ramp truck ready for the thing to jump on. Jordana Brewster, or Mia Toretto is the, the name of the character, was able to back it off and escape in it, and they stole the car. Yeah, but then they drive off through the desert, and it's like it's an off-road situation. I remember thinking, that, that Pantera is never going to pull that off. Well, it doesn't seem any worse for wear because, I mean, just look at it. Beautiful custom De Tomaso Pantera, legendary mid-engine Ford powered or Ford powered motor in the back. Beautiful Italian styling around. Yeah, really, it's a perfect mix of uh, Italian styling, Italian work, and American. And once again, we talked about this earlier today. You know, it's a Lincoln Mercury product. Got the 351 Cleveland engine underneath the hood, which is on the backside because it's a mid-engine, but it was designed by Ghia, an Italian company who is employing an American named Tom Charta, who actually did the design. So it's perfectly blended all across. Don't be so literal about what it did in the movie. I figured it out. It had a stunt double. Well, I know we sold one of the Fast and Furious Supras a few years ago the, from the original movie, and there were several cars, and it was actually an automatic to make it easier to drive for the film, but it was one of the few show cars actually used for the close-ups. Uh, yesterday, we had a Christine replica go across the block, and I think they had like 18 or something of those because they kept crushing them because they had to kill the car. That one just sold. $77,000 takes it, and I still insist Christine is one of the best car movies ever. Now let's go to Mike Joy. I'm with Craig Jackson and Steve Davis, and fellows, I can't tell you how many times this week I've said, never have I ever. I mean, an IMSA Hummer, <laughs> just some of the wild machines that have crossed the block even today, and the wild numbers these cars have drawn. It was an unbelievable day. It's been an unbelievable week. You know, yesterday we did not do a recap. We had Sammy Hagar playing on the bandstand right here while the auction's going off. We kicked off with Foreigner. Every day the cars got better. The Cup cars, which we kicked off the broadcast with today, it's been an unbelievable day. Today, the Gullwing, third time in our history we have set a new high water mark for a Gullwing, broke our own record that was set back in 2012. It's been unbelievable. Across the board, having a resto mod break a million dollars. Everywhere, I thought it was super strong. There's a couple cars here, I'm telling people you're, you're missing out, but they weren't off by very far. Strong market. What was your thoughts, Steve? Well, incredible. I mean, it's just that simple. Where did you ever in your wildest imagination think you're seeing, uh, you know, long bed Chevy pickups bringing 300 grand with incredible restoration, resto modded pickups? I keep going back there because it is really kind of the foundation of, 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 of what's, what's going on in the marketplace right now. Every resto mod, every custom, every uh, original type car, if you'll notice, the resto mod the Corvettes did well, and then we had some NCRS stuff. That, that did extremely well as, as, as a compliment to those. They didn't conflict, but they actually enhanced each other. Every car was a story, it was exciting, it was unbelievable, it was a Barrett Jack's experience. Now I know you have cars to sell here tomorrow, but uh, let's look ahead to Palm Beach. Well, we have this GT here, so Steve, you want to tell them a little bit about Yeah, the these? Allen Mann Heritage yeah. Edition, uh, just again, just an incredible piece of Ford history. Uh, this will be a snapshot of what you can expect in Palm Beach. We are fortunate to get this uh, consigned early. And as you've seen here today, GTs are still strong. They're still incredible. This will be the uh, long lead bad boy for Palm Beach. We're looking for an eclectic docket, something for everybody as always. We're going to start early. We already got a lot of stuff in the pipeline, but it's going to be a wild ride. Instead of the desert, we're going to be at the beach. All right, now, before we go, some, on to something completely different, a car that's not going to cross the auction block here in Scottsdale, but I know is 
very near and dear to your heart and this car is going to raise a lot of money for a great cause. Next it week. is so next week at Steven Tyler's Grammy party we are going to auction this off ever since Steven Tyler sold his venom here for charity we have been conducting with Joseph Mass his auction the night of the Grammys. We will be selling this car. Phantom Works has completely gone through this entire car. It's a killer resto mod. The QR code will show you how you can register to bid. You know, Steven Tyler's fund is, is for kids of abuse and sexual abuse, and we want to help him achieve a great number on this. So here's another opportunity. If you can make it, make it to the Grammys. If not, go to the QR code, and it'll teach you how to register to bid. So this 65 Corvette from Phantom Works, Steven Tyler's car will be sold at his Grammy Awards viewing party to benefit Janie's Fund Sunday, February 4th at the Palladium Hollywood. Congratulations with that, oh. and we'll see you in Palm Beach. It's going to be another barn burner. See you there. All right, thanks very much, guys. While you were talking, another K5 Custom went for $175,000. We're at 75 grand right now on this 05 Ferrari 360 Spider. I'll tell you what kind of an amazing day it's been. We're just a couple of cars away, a few cars away from the end of the auction. We've got a Ferrari, we've got a Challenger. I mean, these are amazing cars that are crossing the block at the very end. Well, we've seen a lot of custom Blazers and Broncos with a Ferrari Silver on it, a Grigio Silverstone. This one's Argento Nürburgring. 82,000 takes that Ferrari. We've got one more break coming. In our five day coverage of Barrett Jackson Scottsdale, so stay right there. We'll be back. Welcome back to Barrett Jackson. Down there in the salon, all of those beauties have now found new homes. On an absolutely amazing day filled with seven figure sales, let's take a look now at our top sellers on Super Saturday. In third place, my personal favorite, a 1937 Mercedes-Benz 540K Special Roadster, a rare right-hand drive model, $2.2 million at the hammer. How about a 2018 Bugatti Chiron for a, a difference? This one, $2.7 million. And then split the difference, a 1956 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Gullwing, probably the most popular classic or collectible car of all time, $3.1 million. Absolutely fantastic results. But of course, it's Barrett Jackson. That's the kind of thing we expect. Final car of the block, 2013 Ford Shelby GT500 pre-production coupe. Well, you know, 20 years ago when I came to my first Barrett Jackson in person, two gold wings sold, one for a little over $300,000, the other one about the same. So a factor of 10 in the price is 20 years later. Glad you didn't buy them. I love this. The last car we're going to see tonight is a 2013 Shelby GT500 pre-production coupe, essentially a Mustang. And I love the fact that as this car crosses the block, the GT3, the GT4s are racing through the night over at Daytona. Mustang back in the racing world. Love what the factory's doing. $65,000 sends that Mustang to its new home. Now, there'll be one more vehicle after that, but as Rick said, we're just about done. So we want to thank you all for tuning in as we wrap up five wonderful days here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's really hard to imagine having a week that captured the essence of the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auctions more than the week we just had. It was simply magic. A special thanks to our world class television crew that makes all of this look so easy. Believe me, it isn't. So, for Mike Joy, Rick DeBruel, Tyler Hoover, April Rose, and our entire team, I'm Bob Barsha. For the final time, thank you so much for riding with us this week. Barrett Jackson Scottsdale never disappoints. We'll see you next time. So long from Scottsdale.